Go further. Explore the trails less traveled and reach your destination quicker with King's new Mercedes Sprinter 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with wide range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sprinter kit today. We've been doing a lot of driving off-road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? The ultimate adventure tool, with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. Sonata. For those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine.
tread victoriously with Maxis. Welcome to the heart of the Southwest, the land of vibrant sunsets, cacti, and heat that can knock you right off your feet. And what better way to experience the heat of the Southwest than with ass kicking hot sauce? Authentically made with the finest peppers and spices, our hot sauce packs a punch that'll take your taste buds on a wild ride. So whether you're a fan of spicy food or just looking to add some heat to your life, give our hot sauce a try. Ass kicking hot sauce, the perfect way to heat things up. Have an ass kicking day. off-road is tough. We wouldn't have it any other way. If AMSOIL products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to AMSOIL protection today and get fast free shipping from AMSOIL.com.
Good morning and welcome to King Shock San Felipe 250. I'm Brandon Johnson and I will be your host covering all the exhilarating off road action happening down in San Felipe. With me today is pro ATV UTV five times score champion and multiple Baja 1000 racer Wes Miller. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for having me. And to my left, also providing us with expert commentary is another score champion, Heidi Steele. Hello. Welcome, Heidi. Thank you. All right, guys, the 2024 season is upon us. It's already starting, and we've already got an incredible bike uh, challenge, extraordinary, incredible thing that's happening right now, guys. Um, let's talk about where we're at with the bikes. Yeah, so I've been monitoring the race from the start, and you've got... Oh, here's the start. Yep. Yeah, you've got a... Uh, kind of a, a four-way battle right now. There's three mm -hmm. teams, the 9X, the 7X, 13X, and 1X. They are really close. They're coming into Borrego right now. Uh, and what we're looking at right now is earlier, obviously, this morning. Correct, correct. Right. Yeah, this is the start on the Malacone. You got the quads right there. But uh, this battle for the lead with the bikes, you've got the 1X of Juan Carlos, the 7X of Justin Morgan, mm -hmm. Uh, the 13X of go. Adrian go. Ortiz, as well as the 9X of Austin Eddy. Uh, Austin Eddy and Adrian Ortiz, they started towards the front. Okay. So they're, e Eddie's still our physical leader. Right. But the one, or the, 1X and 7X, they've really worked through the pack. They really have. And, and just real quick, right now we're at uh, checkpoint one. You can see we got Salvatierra out at first. But here's the, like, the bigger story is when you and I first arrived here, um, the Justin Morgan and Karen Naren team, 7X, they were in 11th. And we had Salvatierra in 12th. These guys jumped all the way up. I mean, they are hammers down already out. They are battling like crazy. Yeah, you know, and, and I think in a race like the San Felipe 250, it's, it's only 250 miles, which mm -hmm. Sounds like a lot to people, but compared to a Baja 1000, that's a sprint race. Yeah. So you've got to make moves fast. And I, I think you, where you could really make a lot of time was in that first, like 100, or not 100, first 50 miles or yeah. so. Basically from the start to the high, to El Chinero Highway 3 crossing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of lines in there. So if you did your homework and you had some really good lines, you could make some time. And, and I, I think, think that's what happened with the, the 1X and 7X. For sure. Here's a shot earlier this morning here. You can just see how just whoop after whoop after whoop. Yeah, you got to eat your Wheaties for this race. <laughs> you sure do. You sure do. Heidi, how are you feeling about everything? Um, awesome. Nervous for these guys. Yeah. What we're watching here is incredibly tough. So whether mm -hmm. you're on a motorcycle or whether you're in one of the vehicles later in the race, once you get to kilometer eight, it's going to be a whoop section for about 40 miles. Right. Um, so the trick is going to be how can you go fast enough to stay ahead mm -hmm. and secure that number one position, but not too fast to break your vehicle or yep. abuse or your, your body or bike. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, he just came into the speed zone right there, right next to Highway 5. So he's around race mile 32 or something like that, I believe. Um, what, one of the things that I find interesting is with the bikes and quads, I feel like you're trying to save yourself more because mm -hmm. it's not so much the bikes are going to break. They're, they're, they're pretty stout. So mm -hmm. it's finding lines that save your body and versus like in a, a, a truck or buggy car, it's not so hard on your body as it is you're trying to save the vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. a, a little bit of mm -hmm. a, a difference there in how you're approaching the race. Okay. Yeah. Interesting perspective because you've been in <clears throat> both. Yeah, I, and, yeah, and I'm a strong proponent of. I feel like that uh, all the car and truck drivers should have to like earn their stripes and do one of these races on a bike <laughs> or a quad, <laughs> yeah. just so that they can really appreciate how hard it is and oh. how hard you train and what it feels like after a race like this. Yeah, you know? yeah. so because um, it would really give everyone a different perspective. It sure would. All right, well, while the bikes are battling, we are going to go to the start line to see the live honor guard and salute the flag ceremonies right now. Here we are. We've got a lot of notable guests in attendance this morning. SCORE International President Roger Norman is down there. SCORE International Vice President Elise Norman is down there. State Undersecretary of Tourism Jose Quinones. Quinones. 
Ruben Ruiz, president of the San Felipe Municipal Council is down there. And of course, our Grand Marshal, Mark Post. Not sure if we've got audio down there, but so far so good as far as weather goes. There has been talk of possible little rain coming through, but it looks like uh, we can see a little bit of blue skies out there and people are walking around. Excited, yeah, getting yeah. things going. You know, yeah. what, Heidi, what's it like? You know, it's a, it's a fresh season, right? It's, a, it's a, new, a new start, so to speak. What are these drivers' competitors? Are they doing anything different in the off season? Walk us through what that's like. Well, that's a really good question. I think going into the San Felipe 250, everyone is going in knowing that they have a fresh start, mm -hmm. that they can go for a championship. So if they didn't have such a great, a great season last year, this is their restart. Mm -hmm. um, the San Felipe race is exciting because it is shorter, but it's still 285.69 sure. tough miles. So, um, you know, I think they're just gearing up for the entire season. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they're just excited about it. You know, it's yeah. been a while since they raced. A lot of the drivers that we were talking to earlier during their pre-runs and their qualifying, etc., they were all talking about how that course is just getting chewed up, chewed up, chewed yeah. up. And it's it's a very, because, because it's a short distance, it's a compressed kind of experience of everybody just digging in there. And to your point, you know, there's moments where they are pinned down, hammered down, they're chewing up, they're going, they're blasting. Yeah. Um, so who knows what this particular race will hold for us, but no doubt it is going to be <laughs> very exciting. Well, and one thing that's exciting about San Felipe is it is a course where you can pick your lines and you don't get to do that very often. Um, they, you still have the VCPs, you have to go yep. through the virtual checkpoints, but at the same time, there's a lot of open lines on certain aspects of the course. And mm -hmm. so if you really do your homework and some of these guys have been doing it for a couple weeks now, yep. um, you do have an advantage. Well, speaking of homework, not only do you got to do your homework for the uh, the 250, but you sure as heck have better do it. Have have better do it. You better do it for the Baja 1000. So let's go back to the 2023 Baja 1000 and take a recap look at that. Be at Goodrich Tires. Score Baja 1000 presented by KNN attracted some of the finest drivers and teams in the off-road racing world. The grueling race covered 1,311 race miles and stood as the season finale of the four race score World Desert Championship. In the trophy truck class, a desert racing super team of Las Vegas's Bryce Menzies, Mexico's Gustavo Tavo Vidosola Jr. and San Diego's Andy McMillan captured the Baja 1000 trophy truck crown. The three veterans split the driving duties over the 1,300 miles and the number seven truck took the final three races of the season. Menzies and his talented teammates finished the race in 22 and a half hours, less than two minutes ahead of their closest rivals. Another dream team of San Diego's Luke McMillan, seeking his fourth straight Baja 1000 win in Las Vegas's Rob McCachron, who had joined Luke for each of the last three thousands. Landing on the podium in third place was Mike Walzer, who enlisted the efforts of up and coming drivers Christopher Paul Forty and Ray Griffin. Bolivian superstar Juan Carlos Salvatierra and his five-rider team overcame a pair of pre-race injuries to earn the score overall victory among motorcycles on the number one X bike. Salvatierra was one of the injured riders, but he was able to start the race in La Paz and ride a short distance before handing off the bike. Mexico's veteran Gustavo Vidosola Sr. finished a second straight undefeated season in SCORE Trophy Truck Legends class, and with it secured another season class point championship for the 1L truck. He won all four races for the second year in a row, with support from legendary Hall of Famer racer Ricky Johnson, who shared the driving for the first half of each race. Fresh from winning his first NASCAR Infinity race in October on his hometown track at Las Vegas Motor Speedway, Terrible Hurts Motorsports young gun Riley Hurts blasted his way to victory over a race-high 36 starters in the trophy truck spec class. Hurts says driver of record drove the middle section, while his champion father, Troy Hurts, returned to the race for the first time in six years. Caden McCachron capped his first season with the new four-vehicle Polaris factory team by winning the pro UTV Open class, as well as being the fastest of 54 UTVs in four different classes in this year's Score Baja 1000. And in class one, Kyle Quinn led a Wilson Motorsport team to victory. Quinn was the primary driver for the number 100 Wilson Motorsports Chevy-powered Jimco open-wheel desert race car, outracing a field of 11 starters. 
now. The stage is set for more heart-pounding action and unforgettable moments in the thrilling world of off-road racing as we start the 2024 season of the SCORE World Desert Championship, kicking off with the King Shocks 37 SCORE San Felipe 250. Baja 1000, never a dull moment. Definitely. Well, that was then, but this is now. And in 2024, we got a new thing with regards to qualifying. Every driver, every race has got to have a qualifier now, guys. Why, why is getting a good qualifying position so epically important? Well, there's the conditions out there. So mm -hmm. when you get out in the race truck or race buggy or whatever you're racing, um, you're going to be, if you're not starting first, you're going to be behind a lot of dust. Right. And so the trick to racing is being able to you know, get out of that dust, but not fall back. You want to keep pushing forward mm -hmm. so you get ahead of your competitors. Yeah. And it's tricky to do, especially, you know, at the beginning of this race, it's going to be really difficult in the whip section. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's at a race like this where it's, it's kind of a sprint race and you've got such a stacked field. Right. Clean air is everything. So, you know, getting that number one qualifying position. So yeah. like for Impudia, mm -hmm. having clean air. He doesn't have to worry about dust. It's everything. And, yeah, you know, it, if you can imagine for people at home, if you've driven in fog mm -hmm. and you can't see, that's basically how the dust is. Right. It's really hard to see through it and it's hard to push through. So if you have a guy that's going a little slower than you, mm -hmm. he's holding you off of your pace. Mm -hmm. So like you start <clears> panicking <throat> as a driver because you're like, oh man, this is slowing me up. And then, you know, the guys behind you, if you got fast guys behind you, are catching you. Yeah. So there's always like these battles going on in your head. So I, to me, I think for Impudia, having clean air, mm -hmm. it's going to be a big deal today. Yeah. Um, San Felipe, there are a lot of lines, so there are some places. Yeah, I think, again, from start to El Chinero, there's places you can set out. But mm -hmm. after that, it gets kind of one line. Gotcha. So I think you got to make your passes. Whoever gets to El Chinero yep. first, it's going to be hard to get around them from there. Well, that's a great point, Wes. Um, and obviously qualifying is everything but sometimes people actually don't qualify and we caught up with rob mack <laughs> yeah. as he actually missed it so let's get his perspective on that tomorrow you uh you're starting from the back just because you like to challenge yourself tell me about tomorrow what's it, it yeah yeah i slept in and missed qualifying um <laughs> uh no we we had a little issue um with uh with transmission pressure really and we it really drew threw us for a loop and uh we kind of think there might have been a oil line delaminating um and it appears that's what happened but it uh basically took two days of trying to figure that out changing parts and um but now uh last night uh thursday night i went and ran it for about 20 miles and it seems really good so uh yeah unfortunate thing is i think i just saw about uh, an hour ago we're starting 36th <laughs> and um you know the leaders the first trucks off the road will be you know 40 miles into this race before i leave but um, you know, we got a work cut out for us. Um, you know, I'm starting to put my big boy pants on and I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try to get through the traffic and, you know, hopefully some uh, good things happen with some people falling out or getting flat tires so I can gain some track position early. I think from Borrego, which is mile 200 to the finish, I don't want to say the race is going to be over, but it's really fast from there. I'm hoping, uh, you know, a lot of the other competitors, they don't think about that. They pace themselves at the beginning and when they get to 200, um, you know, if they're not close on time to the leaders, I think they're they're going to be out of it. So I'm hoping they make all the ground I can by mile 200 and hopefully be in contention. It's going to be a tall task, but we're going to go for it. If there's anybody that can make up time, it's Rob Mack. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. He's in a, a new truck, and, yep. but it's an all-wheel drive. Yeah. So you know, what he does in the Jimco all-wheel drive is going to be really interesting. Starting in the back, I think mm -hmm. he's like 38th or so. He's back there. He's in so, the 30s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's got his work cut out for him. I spoke with him last night about just kind of strategy. And you know, he's kind of the same thing. Like I think he was going to make a big push in the beginning to try to get as many passes out of the way as he can. Mm -hmm. in, in the beginning of the race, sometimes you can get two, three guys at a time because mm -hmm. they'll get stacked up behind each other. And if you get a good line off to one side or the sure. other, you can make a lot of passes. Sure. Sounds good. Heidi, thoughts on that? Well, you know, Rob has been racing probably since about 1990, 1985 or something. <laughs> I mean, he, if you're going to come oh, from the back, he's got the experience and talent to do it. Um, and it's exciting. Like you said, he's got a new truck. Um, 
it's going to be a really exciting race to watch him. And some of these drivers, they know who's behind them. Like, they yeah. know Rob, <laughs> he's coming for them. Well, that's what I was just going to say is I, sometimes I like to rear start because you can sneak up on the guys in the front. Right. So you're going to have, you know, Bryce and Pudia, McMillan, Polvarde. They're going to all be battling in the front, mm -hmm. and they're going to be f battling physically. Yeah. So you kind of lose focus of, like, oh, where's Rob? Right. You know, and yeah. then if Rob works through the pack, he might finish fifth physical but win this unadjusted. There you go. So it'll be interesting. All so. right. Well, Absolutely. speaking of the pack, let's pull up the graphics here and take a look at our trophy trucks. What we got here. All right. Starting positions in first, Alan Pudia, followed by Bryce Menzies. Third, Toby Price. Fourth, Luke McMillan. Fifth place, Christopher Polvardi, followed by Tavo Vidosola in sixth, Kevin Thompson seventh, Mike Walser in eighth, Justin Lofton in ninth, followed and then wrapping it up in tenth, Gabriel Torres. So a very, very strong top ten. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We are getting very close. We got on your watch there. We're about ten minutes away or so, I think, about getting these yeah. trucks off the line. So it's going, to be, it's going to be a great, great competition today. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and the way the start works is they leave in one minute intervals. Mm -hmm. So, and then you're you're racing against the clock. Mm -hmm. You're also racing on the track, but at the end of it, it's your adjusted time is what what you're scored on. So, for people yeah. at home that aren't familiar with this type of racing, yep. it, it's not just like a land rush start. Sure. So, you're going one minute intervals. It's your adjusted time, but you're also racing on the physical course. Well, just a little bit ago, obviously you saw the video of Rob Mack. We had the veteran, as Heidi alluded to, who was racing in the <laughs> 80s. But now let's go to someone a little bit younger. Starting in fifth place, Chris Pulvati. We caught up with him yesterday. Let's uh, see his take on the San Felipe 250. It was good. I was happy with the results. Um, for me, that was like the first time I'd ever driven the all-wheel drive like that. And it's just a whole nother beast. Um, I made a couple small mistakes, which I was a little bummed about because it definitely cost us probably like two, three seconds minimum, um, like uh, with which is the one. But, you know, that there was a couple. But uh, overall, I mean, I'm pretty stoked. I mean, top five, first time qualifying and all wheel drive. Uh, I'm happy, you know, that's right in the mix with the big boys. So it's kind of scary. It's uh, definitely freaky lining up with all those guys at qualifying. Always great to check in with Chris. You know, he's he's just been he's such a fantastic competitor and he's proven himself time and time again. So this is going to be really, really interesting. I think he knows what's at stake. And he's right in the he's fifth place. He's right in this this hub right now. He's gonna have well, to fight and battle the whole time. And he's in a brand new truck too. New yeah, truck? So yep. New all wheel drive. And he's got the talent and I, he's really come a long way with experience, yeah. you know, and they've got a solid program. So, I mean, he's going to be right there in this battle. You know, I think you've got, I'm going to say 10 trucks that mm -hmm. could possibly win this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe, maybe even more if a dark horse came in there. You but, never know. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's going to be really interesting to watch this. For sure. Yeah. You guys have been talking about uh, a little bit of the course from your perspective. We've been talking about lines. Let's take a deeper dive and let's take the actual graphic of the course. We'll roll that right now. You guys can see what's going on for San Felipe 250 now. Our drivers will begin by heading north to the Zoo Road Crossing up to the El Chinero area. Just after race mile 83, we have the BF Goodrich Pit 1 where drivers will stop for some fuel. From there, they push north until they hit an extended long loop through Laguna Saldana, where they circle back round to race south to the Arroyo Grande and through Arroyo Arrejal. The course has one physical checkpoint at race mile 201 as racers cross Highway 3. Racers will pick up speed as they continue south across the Diablo Dry Lake Bed. As they turn east towards Morelia Junction, racers will stop off at race mile 238 for the BF Goodrich Pit 2 to refuel and prepare for the final stretch of the race. Finally, after heading east through the infamous Chanate Wash, the drivers will head north for the final sprint to the finish line on the El Maricón. 
Well, this map doesn't show you all that's happening up down there, or that's happening down there, Wes. Why don't you talk about the lines? Yeah, so one of the things that is different, I think, about San Felipe is how many lines there are. We've been racing mm -hmm. down there for a really long time, and the, you'll have one race line that gets really whooped out, and then guys will start branching out to one way or another. Mm -hmm. So we actually did a piece down there where I went on the course, mm -hmm. we'll show you guys what it was like. Sounds good. Let's take a look. What happens with with these lines is, so if you're in, like, say, a trophy truck and you have the horsepower and the suspension, generally they're just trying to find the straightest way to go from point to point because the the hoops and the, you know, like bumps, whatever, it really doesn't matter. Those trucks just soak it up. So you want to have the shortest distance from point A to point B. In the slower classes, you're going to look for the smoother line. It, it's What's funny is like when I started racing the UTVs, like on a quad, I was looking for this the smoothest line. Um, in a UTV, I started off that way, but as the suspension has gotten better, what has happened now is like my current race car, when I was running that, I started running a lot more of the trophy truck lines because the suspension worked so good in that car, especially when we went to the King Shocks, that that thing, I could carry speed and get up on top of the whoops, and it would soak it up. So it was actually faster to stay in some of the, the straighter lines, even though they were rougher. But San Felipe definitely has the most lines of anywhere that I've, I've raced through the entire Baja Peninsula. Great piece on lines there, and you really get an awesome perspective from that GoPro that you had on your helmet of how active and punishing that course yeah. can be. And you weren't even yeah. going full throttle in that, you know? Yeah, we were just kind of cruising along there. So that area is in this key portion of the race I was talking about. That mm -hmm. is in right near the speed zone around like race mile 30, 35. And you can see, you, you probably have a half mile wide of there's literally lines everywhere. Mm -hmm. So that's where when we talk about pre-running and the importance of pre-running, when you come down here, you want to go and look for the fastest, smoothest route through mm -hmm. these different sections. And what happens though, I, I, I've been talking to drivers all week. And when guys came down, say two weeks ago, and first started pre-running, the course was really smooth and everyone's like, oh my God, this is gonna be the fastest San Felipe 250 ever. Mm -hmm. So easy, da da da. When I talked to guys last night before the race, I'm like, okay, so how are things looking out there? Um, everyone was like, oh man, the course is tore up. It's getting <laughs> worse and worse. The bumps are getting bigger. The silt beds are getting really deep. So, you know, there's a, a couple spots I think are gonna be making break points in this race. Mm. Uh, I think. Start to El Chinero, you got to make your passes, and then right around race mile like 125, 126, which is at the top of the course, the no northernmost point, mm -hmm. uh, they come off Laguna Salada, and it's really silty there. Mm -hmm. and so everything I'm hearing is the original race line got so gnarly during pre-running that they actually moved the VCP, and they were routing people different oh, wow. ways. Yeah. But then what happens, is everybody starts going wider and wider and wider. And now this silt bed goes from this big to just this huge, you know, couple hundred yard wide <laughs> area. And then right. just every line turns bad. <laughs> and again, like, so Rob Mack, he and Caden were up there and they were trying to figure out their strategy. Yeah. And they were saying the bushes are so thick that a, a, a lot of times to stay out of the silt, you'll try to just weave your way around it. Yeah. But the bushes and the, the sand mounds are so big and thick yeah. that he's worried you might get stuck in bushes there. So yeah. I believe we have a drone there. You guys are gonna wanna watch this because it's gonna get interesting. People talk about bottlenecks. San Felipe, you generally, unless like there's a wash bottleneck where you have narrow walls, you don't have bottlenecks. But I think we may have what I call a graveyard, which is where cars are just stuck everywhere. Right. And I, I think when the your, your all-wheel drives are going to get through there okay, mm -hmm. but like your two-wheel drive trophy specs. Uh-oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they're going to have a hard time. Yeah. Uh, we'll you know, possibly your class 10s. Although at the 1,000, I thought the class 10s are going to have a hard time in the silt at Laredo, mm -hmm. and they cruise right through it. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it seems to me the guys that have a hard time are the, the trophy specs. Sure. 
and there's we so many see. of those trucks. The other thing that happens too is if it's dusty and a guy's stuck in a line and you come into it and you can't get out of the ruts because they're so deep, right. then there's nowhere you can go. And, and then everybody just stacks up. Right, so right. You, you can probably yeah. talk about this, Heidi. Like, yeah. Well, you thought? don't want to be in the situation that you're describing. We got a quick, sorry, Heidi, real quick. We just want the trophy trucks are just about to start off the line here. So speaking of getting stacked up, here they come. Uh, but Heidi, <laughs> continue with what you were saying. Yeah. So. Um, Wes is right, they moved the VCP, VCP 49, and they did it just three days ago. Mm -hmm. So depending on how in tune the racers are to this also, some racers still might not realize that and they might take the sure. deeper line. Not, really that, not realizing that they can get a lot of creativity in that right. area now. Mm -hmm. So it, it will be interesting. I hope that they don't stack up like that. In the world of creativity, we were watching yesterday, 2014, when Tavo took a different line <laughs> and yeah. did something that is really kind of out of the uh, Guinness Book of World Records. And he got out of that silt and that dust that you're talking about. Next thing you know, he just hit a bush and he was literally like that. You were like, yeah, yeah that was more <laughs> of an instance of being in dust yeah. versus like a silt bed. Sure. Which, which it's a, another thing as a racer that you deal with here, because if you're in dust, the, the problem is, is to make a pass, you got to close through that dust. Mm -hmm. And generally you got to, there's, a point where you have to, I call it just pushing through the dust because mm -hmm. you can't really see and you're taking major chances. Mm -hmm. And then once you're right on them, then you can kind of see because you just read their roof. But there's that in between point that you're really rolling the dice mm -hmm. every time you make a pass. And mm -hmm. like yeah. in that instance with Tavo, yeah. he kind of darted out to try to get clean air and there was a bush right there. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's where there, there can be bushes, rocks, oh. ruts. Well, you never know. You never know. All right. Well, we got the first truck coming up for race start in San Felipe. Here we go. Alan Impudia gets the green flag. And the clean air. And the clean air. And our first four-wheel vehicle is on course. All right. Next up, we've got Bryce Menzies in the number one, the Defending okay. champion there out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Riding with Owen Anderson in his Ford with Red Bull, Amsoil, Toyo Tires, KMC Wheels, Fox, Polaris Razor, and Ba Designs. He's got that good-looking wrap and has that number one plate, as you mentioned, Dave, last year's 2023 score trophy truck champion. So that's the topography of the mountains here is it's what that uh, wrap is. Super cool. Topography map. Definitely different. And he had a couple of bad years, but this last year he came back swinging and yep. he said, I'm going to do a repeat, not here for second place, even though he <laughs> qualified there, but qualifying as we know, that's not the race. This is the race and Bryce Menzies leaving the line. Up next at a Gold Coast, Australia, driving for Quadlock, BF Goodrich Tires, Can Am, Laurence. PWR Motec Fox SDG suspension. Driver record is Paul Wheel teaming up with Toby Price. And uh, they had a great qualifying position too. Third off the line. They won last year's qualifying and had some major issues with the truck, but they, they got this truck dialed in, that Mason all wheel drive. Oh, and it sounds angry, Rat. Oh, yeah, def definitely ready to do work right now. That quad lock truck and you know, the Australians, every time they show up, they definitely, uh, they put in a great effort if they don't break or something happens. And, you know, it's all the expectations, round number one. This is what it's all about, go, going for those valuable points throughout the year. And, and a win here in San Felipe is huge as well. And what a beautiful shot right there. You see the tides out. And Point eight alcohol. That's some serious. Uh, talk about Red Bull vodka. They just won up that game. Going for another championship. <laughs> well, I know there'll be some celebrations if they come in on top for that one for sure. As he leaves the line right there, Luke McMillan up next. Luke McMillan, one of the only three drivers that has uh, three championships in a row. Steal it. 
VP Racing Fuels, Vision Wheels, Rigid Lights, K&N, Fox Shocks, and FK Rod Ends, keeping that suspension hooked together. Number 94, Christopher Pavorty. Of course, he's got that brand new Mason all-wheel drive there. That's his first year by himself with his own trophy truck and all-wheel drive. And for first time in the trophy truck, he's been racing a uh, spec down here the last couple of years with some some great performances. But yeah, stepping up into the big boy league right here. Well, they're all big boys, but yeah, this didn't he is... team up with Walser? And you think he drove a little bit in the '89 last year before yeah. he got his truck delivered? Yeah, he was driving with Walser, and they uh, they were on the podium a couple times last year. But Christopher Pavorty, as you've known him through short course, grew up coming up through the ranks, but now he's top tier, getting it done as he leaves the line. Okay, up next we got Tavo Vadosla, the number 21, out of Mexicali, Baja California, racing with uh, Jave Valzuela, Tony Vasquena, and it looks like Nicholas Alberto Ambriz Suarez in the Vadosla racing machine, Mexicana Logistics, Branix, Interprotection, Toyo Tires, Mastercraft, Freightliner, Ba Designs, King Shocks, Borla, Method, How, Ibach, and Telcel. A legendary family down here, second generation driver also. Absolutely. Great to see him back down here. And uh, his dad, Gus, uh, teaming up with Ricky Johnson. Obviously, we'll see him coming up here shortly, but. Uh, two championships in a row going for three. But right now, Tavo's on course as he leaves the line. Coming up next at a new new Brothels, Texas. Driving another Mason Motorsports all-wheel drive. Driving for King Shocks, BF Goodrich Tires, KMC Wheels, Baja Designs, Joe Gibbs Racing Engine keeping that power to the ground, Miller Sign Corp, Heat Wave Visual, Traco, PCI, One Life Trauma, VP, and Specialized Power, number 70, Kevin Thompson. How cool is to see Mark Post down there waving the green flag? Yeah, great to have, have Mark Post, uh, a legend. Uh, Riviera was 2007 uh, score trophy truck champion. So he, he's dropping the green flag for these drivers this morning. And, and an honor to have him be our grand marshal here for the King Shock San Felipe 250. Does he got what five or six San Felipe 250 wins, I believe? Six, six, six. San Felipe wins, yep. yep. But Kevin Thompson, he's going for a win here today as he leaves the line. Up next, speaking about Mike Walser earlier, we talked about in the '89. He comes to us from Comfort, Texas, running with Brian Hansen and Rod Walser in his Ford. Toyo tires underneath them with VP Racing Fuel in the tank, Bob Designs, and Fox Shocks. Mike Walser is such a great guy, and you know, he's been coming out here the last couple of years. And as I mentioned, he was on the podium twice last year, I think. Uh, trying to get on that and just the number one spot top of the box has eluded him but i'll tell you what we have 38 score trophy trucks here today 44 of the trophy truck specs packed field of fast drivers it's uh it's not very easy to win this class but uh this is somebody that can get it done as mike leaves the line and up next Up next, number 41, driving for Yokohama Tires, Fox, Multicam, Method Race Wheels, FK Rod Ends, Danzio Performance, Torco Race Fuel, Justice Brothers, All Beef, and Justin Lofton Foundation. In another Mason Motorsports all-wheel drive, number 41, Justin Lofton. Digging the wrap. He's normally uh, been orange the last couple of years. It's always cool to see all the new liveries and, you know, all the new sponsor changes, new trucks. So many new trucks out here this year. Absolutely amazing how uh, how many trophy truck and spec drivers we have out here. Justin Lofton is definitely uh, another one of the guys that can be on the top of the box at any race. Well, up next, he'll be driving the 97 out of San Luis Botasi, Mexico. Gabriel Torres. He's got Ruben Torres, Eric Avalos, Enrique Avalos, 
in a Nissan powered machine. Nissan Nismo Mexico. Be of Goodrich Tires, Mason Motorsports, Sparco USA, and James Lynn Motorsports. Man, that goes back a lot of years to us seeing Nissan. Nissan had a very good history here in score in the past. Oh, yeah, back in the day, Simon and Simon. But this is a brand new truck. They're coming out of Class 10. First, first season, first race here in their score trophy truck number 97. Yeah, looking forward to, to seeing a good finish out of these guys. It, it's a little bit different, though, going from yeah. a 10 car to a trophy truck. They said, hey, we're still trying to feel it out. They got some shakedown miles, but uh, not a lot of miles on this brand new Mason truck. And we mentioned, uh, I know, Carl Renazander rode for Nissan down here in years. In fact, I think he was part of one of the wins with uh, Mark Post back in the day. Yes, he was. And up next, they have won the last eight races in a row, two championships, holding on to that number one L prep plate. He's teaming up with Ricky Johnson as his second driver, driving for Mexlog, Toyo Tires, Method Race Wheels, Baja Designs, King Shocks, how an impact safety, a legend down here, and that's why he's in the legend class, Mr. Gustavo Gus Bildosola Sr. Such a great team, and uh, their their chief mechanic, uh, Lechero, he got uh, mechanic of the year at our awards ceremony here just a couple of months ago from 2023. So, and that's what it takes. It takes a lot more than just fast drivers, which Ricky and Gus are both fast drivers. But uh, to have a good good mechanic, that's what it's all about, keeping that truck together. Gus leaving the line. Very well said, Rat. Up next, we got the 38 coming to us from St. George, Utah. That's Eric Husted riding, riding with uh, Colton Husted in their Chevrolet-powered ELA Motorsports, Triton Engineering. Dugan's Racing Engines, Weddell Industries, Vision X, 74 Weld, Gearworks, and King Shocks. Of course, this is the King Shocks San Felipe 250. Yeah, and you know, Houston, it's kind of cool. If you see that truck, you're like, what happened? Did he leave it parked <laughs> out in front of the high school overnight? It's all tagged up. He let everybody, yeah. all the fans, everybody signed it as they came through contingency yesterday. So kind of cool, you know, giving yeah. back, let, letting them... Uh, be a part of it. A little uh, positive vibe going through when you it's, got all those all those names on it's the kind side. Kind of like Bachito when he does Dennis uh, has yeah. in his uh, class eleven usually. Yeah, but he just let everybody sign it. I know that's cool. He didn't let me sign it. He, he didn't get. Oh, me I didn't the, get to sign it either. I didn't get the paint pen, but there he goes. Hey, quick, Eric let's go Houston. catch him. <laughs> we'll we'll write on the dust later. Up next, he's back in his brand new score trophy truck. It's an Alumacraft build, driving for Fox Shocks, BF Goodrich Tires, Baja Designs Lighting, CBR Performance Products, Alumacraft Race Cars, and Tisco. He's out of Brawley, California, number 35. He's going to be solo in this one as well. Brock Dickerson, and we almost didn't recognize him. He's got that. Uh, uh, the, he's the got stash. that Caballero stash. <laughs> That's I, right. We're coming back, and I can't grow a mustache. Yeah, so, either can I. Uh, but uh, but I'm sure there's nothing but smiles in there. This is uh, the calm before the storm. As soon as they drop that green flag, these guys turn into different animals. You know, it's yeah. the expectations. But good to see Brock back down here. Just to, you know, at his young age, he has so many years of racing short course and desert. Started down here in 2017, winning that Class 10 championship his first year. Well, up next, we've got the number 51, Jack Oligas. Of course, driver record is Pop, Steve Oligas, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. He's got Dustin North, Mark Newhan, and Jack Oligas, of course, uh, do a little co dogging in their Ford, Fox Shocks, BF Goodrich Tires, KMC Wheels, VP Fuels, Dugan's Racing Engines, Geyser Brothers, right? RDE transmissions, KC highlights, high performance, and Pro Eagle, and of course, uh, Las Vegas Ford out there. Yeah, and a shout out to Steve if he's watching at home. You know, just uh, prayers going out to him. He hurt his back. I, I, I guess he's doing pretty good, but uh, he's not going to be racing. Jack's going to be doing all the driving duties. So we just hope he gets well. He's down here with us actually, so um, he's he's doing all right. But he'll be back for the 500 coming up. Kind of the same scenario we're hearing about Travis Williams too. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of the back yeah. issues. Yeah, Sam Baldy. Uh, they hit a big G out pre-running as well. Robert Llewellyn hurt his back. Hopefully he's going to feel better, so shout out to him too. But 
next off the line, we have another legend, number 37L, driving for the Norseman Racing. Baja Designs, BF Goodrich Tires, KMC Wheels and Fox, and another Mason truck, number 37L, Rolf Helen, out of Morris, Illinois. Uh, Illinois is trucking, baby. Helen, what a great guy. He's, he's always on point, always does good, and uh, has a great team behind him as well. D lots of great finishes, but once again, that top of the spot has just eluded Rolf. Yeah, I know uh, Lee Perfect's been doing a lot of the prep on that. They said he tore it down to a bare frame and rebuilt it after the 1,000, and uh, she's like a new machine. Up next, the number 23 out of El Cajon, California. It's Dan McMillan. And look at this. We've got So here's our first in car with Rolf Helen. And what's going to be exciting about the San Felipe 250 is we've got cameras in so many different vehicles, way more than we ever had before. So shout out to our crew in production. There's going to be so many uh, amazing opportunities for us to give you guys a front row seat, not only in, inside these vehicles, but all over the track. Think, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the grass. They were talking to him, and I interviewed him, and they said the grass didn't make it down. And I think uh, they got another driver on there that they mentioned possibly there. They got a fill-in driver, the boys. Justin Smith's going to be in that truck, and Frank Randall, aka Bean, so, Mr. So, Bean. Yeah, so they they got some good drivers, and not sure why he didn't make it. I, you know, maybe they got snowed in. <laughs> <laughs> kind of crazy, yeah. They're probably wishing they were down here. Then, oh, there we go. That that graph truck off the line. Oh. Up next, love seeing this one here. O R W on the side, 65 L. Greg Adler out of Manhattan Beach, California, right with Thomas Fitcher, Brian Seed, Berlamita, Jimmy Weitzel, Dylan Cochran. You know, Dylan maintains these uh, machines in that Ford off-road warehouse, Raceline wheels, BF Goodrich tires, Odyssey batteries, Liqui Molly, and MagnaFlow. Nothing flows like a MagnaFlow. Absolutely, and Greg Adler, you know, he does so many great things. Uh, opening their 10th store with off-road warehouse. Which I know, is, in Arizona, which, I think. Which in Arizona, yeah. yeah, so super cool. You know, moving into that brand and really taking it to the next level. So, that's where you, that's the go-to spot for any parts, accessories you need for your race car, your personal pre-runner, or just street truck. And Greg Adler's doing work on course. Up next, out of San Clemente, California, the General of the Desert Assassins himself, driving for Monster Energy, BF Goodrich Tires. FIDAC, Fox, Baja HQ, Raceline Wheels, Ibox Springs, VP Race Fuels, Baja Designs, Sparco, and Prime Fabrication, number 16, Cameron Steele. You know, Cameron's got the Baja HQ in there in San Juan Capistrano, and uh, another place you buy the parts at ORW, you take them over to Baja HQ and have them install on your race car, your daily driver. It's pretty cool. Yeah, great they, shop. They do some great builds down there, and you know, Cameron. You know, his his life is Baja. Now he's, he just a uh, few years ago started up Baja HQ, and it's really taken off. Pe people know that you got to have the right guys working on your vehicle, and Cameron spends so much time down here. He knows off-road vehicles. He knows Baja. And Cam is uh, on course and going to chase the boys down. 
All right, up next we got the 78, Tracy Poole out of Bozeman, Montana, riding with uh, Ryan Hunsinger in a Geyser Brothers built machine. I believe he's out of Missouri. Bozeman. All right, pool. Great looking trucks. Got a got a different look. All blacked out this year. As he gets the countdown to go out into the des, and what a great course. We talk about this course being a little faster than previous years. The whoops are there. The silts there. Everything. Lots of rocks, but lots of super fast sections, which is pretty cool. So our next driver up. Number 82 out of Beaumont, California, Sam Baldy. As I mentioned earlier, uh, they had hit a G out, and uh, him and Robert Llewellyn couldn't get in, so they, they have uh, Jake Johnson, and I believe Michael Baldy might be driving as well. Driving for Top Line Industrial, Baja Designs, VP Race Fuels, BF Goodrich Tires, Dugan's Racing Engines, and Titan Fuel Tanks and rocking those king shocks you gotta have king shocks and bf goodrich tires if you come down here any racer knows you gotta have the the right equipment that is tried and true and really works down here because lots of lots of things could give you a flat tire you know you get a cheap tire you, you get what you pay for yeah, that's right the secret sauce as we call it and that, i believe that is jake in the truck leaving the line all right Good buddy of mine on the 85 there out of Banning, California. It's Mikey Lawrence. Running with Gustavo Galamas and the One Nine Industries. Sponsored by Lawrence Equipment, Haas Factory Outlet, Ocamal, Tortillas, King Shocks, Mother's Bar, BF Goodrich Tires, Chuckers Racing, Patton Racing Engines, Rancho, Rancho Drive Chain Engineering, Frunios Welders, and One Nine Industries. What a great guy, though. All right, folks, here we see our leader as of right now at Race Mile 20, Alan Impudia, blasting through. You can see all that dust in the background, too. Oh, feed's going a little bit off. But, you know, uh, Wes, we were just talking off camera here a bit how this is just going to be an incredible competition between you got. Impudia, you got Menzies, you, well actually Impudia, you got Toby, you got Menzies, and you got even Tavo a little bit back. But look, we've already seen Chris Pulvardi go from fifth up to fourth. And to make that kind of a leap this early on is telling us that he is in this to win it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you've got some heavy hitters up there. Right. So you know, I've been watching the tracker. It kind of looked like Impudia was gapping out Bryce a little. Right now, it looks like he may have closed it up. It, it's a little tough to tell because mm -hmm. it's how quickly they're updating and yeah. when they're updating. But, you know, with Impudia, Menzies, to Toby Price, he, he throws it down. You yep. know, if he can get a clean run, he hasn't had a clean run in, in a trophy truck yet. Mm -hmm. If he gets a clean race, I mean, he can be right there. Pulvardi's <laughs> is throwing it down. Luke. Um, Luke, Tavo. Man, I, it, oh, here we go. Here's Bryce. Battle. Now Bryce is coming through race mile 20. And, and this is the area here. There's a lot of lines and there's like one VCP that you've got to converge back into. And I uh -huh. think that's kind of where they're at right there. Yeah. Uh, I was curious to see where people went because mm. the main course is really whooped out and there's some nice lines off to the right, mm -hmm. but it looks like there most of these guys are just going right down the center, which that's where, when you've got the horsepower and the suspension, yeah, you can just go down the middle of the course and it's like hitting shortest point, point A to point B. There you go. Yeah, and what's interesting about the top 12 positions is these guys are all driving all wheel drive vehicles. Mm -hmm. So they're all all wheel drive trophy trucks mostly Masons, yep. um, so not equal to equal footing, but mm -hmm. we're gonna, you know, s see them really fight this out. Was there any strategy uh, from a two wheel drive perspective from, from Hubby? Did he have anything uh, to say before he left? Yeah, you know, um, this is just me speaking, this wasn't him, but I, I think like the qualifying course, it was mostly designed for an all wheel drive. Mm -hmm. 
the two wheel drives really get better results in the whoops and right. in more of the tough technical sections. If you have an all wheel drive, I mean, they are just flying. Yeah. So the flatter it is, the better. We just saw Toby Price blasting through race mile 20 there. The, the all wheel drives, I think in, in a qualifying course where they have that advantage is they're so quick in and out of the corners. Mm -hmm. So in a shorter course like that, the all wheel drive has a lot of advantage mm -hmm. versus like if it's more wide open and whoops, the mm -hmm. two wheel drives can hang with them. Sure. So um, yeah. when, when you were talking with Cameron and, and your experience, do you take different lines if you're in all wheel drive versus a two wheel drive? I think Cameron has always tried to be as creative as possible about his lines. He's mm -hmm. uh, he does his homework every race on his pre running. Um, he's down there on a dirt bike often during the year. And so he has an advantage of really kind of knowing what the course is like mm -hmm. and, and where you can take a, you know, more creative line that's sure. still within the rule book. Sure, sure, sure. I, I think for me, most of your lines are going to be the same other than like say 126 in the silt. Yeah. If you're in the all wheel drive, it, again, when I talked to Rob Mack last night and a couple other guys, they were saying they're just going to go down the middle because mm -hmm. they just felt like it was going to be faster. Yeah, you're in the silt, but mm -hmm. with all wheel drive, you can get through it. Two wheel drive, you, know, you, you might want to try to pick your way around yeah. just to not risk getting stuck. Absolutely. Now we just saw Luke McMillan coming through race mile 20. And from all these drone shots that we're seeing, we got a fantastic, uh, fantastic turnout today. I mean, we've got people all over the place. Everyone's excited for the new season to begin again. We got drone shots. We got cameras in field. We got in-car cameras. We got heli shots. Um, the coverage of this and the opportunity really to bring the viewer and the fans deeper, deeper into this experience uh, is getting more exciting every single race that we do. So I'm, I'm loving it just sitting here. Oh yeah, for sure. The technology keeps getting better and making it easier for us to get coverage. Yeah. One thing I do want to say is for everybody that's watching this, if you're out on the course, mm -hmm. you got your phone, tag score international yep. in videos, and then it may end up on our social media for sure. feeds here. A hundred percent. I mean, everybody's been doing that. They did such a great job last season. Um, we've already been peppered with other videos already. So please keep get, you know, send them in, tag us. We'd yeah. love to see your perspective as well. And make sure it's at, at Score International for your IG. So here we're still down at uh, start of this race here with more like trucks. Ch Chad Broughton. Is that who? Chuck number two. two. Number two, yep. Three, two, one. Really great family. And, uh, and you there know, he goes. Pistol, but this one's for you, Pistola. Good stuff. Yeah, it'll be exciting to see. You know, um, I'm not sure if uh, there's an opportunity to even access uh, Wes's computer on the on the main map, but at this time, on the right of it, we, you know, we can see all of the trucks entering the course, but on the left, we already see the bikes, and they, they are still out there. They're still battling. From what I'm seeing, and my screen just refreshed about 30 seconds ago, we still got uh, Salvatierra up front, and then behind that, Austin Eddy, Team the Ortiz in uh, the 13X bike, and uh, in fourth, Fernando Beltran, and then um, Solace in fifth. So again, they just keep leapfrogging each other earlier every 60 seconds that was changing. So yeah, we're just waiting for this it's to just, refresh. Yeah, you're waiting to refresh <laughs> Murphy's Law. Um, yeah, right it. when they cut to me, I was uh, <laughs> trying to refresh. But, but so, it's a, a cool perspective to see trucks on one side, bikes on the other, all at the same level. time. Safety so what I was seeing in the dirt bikes that I think race. is kind of a breaking story here yeah. is the 7X of Justin Morgan. Yes. He was right in the battle for physical and adjusted. Mm -hmm. And from what it looks like to me, he's been sitting, we thought I'm going to say, maybe, in a yeah? Yeah, it's right on the highway just past Borrego. I'm going to say that's probably his pit stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say they have some sort of problem because he hasn't moved in a while. Okay, we'll so, see. Uh, that's, if that's what happened, that's unfortunate because they were doing really well. Yeah. yeah. And I just got a text update. I guess Luke was missing a spare in his rack. So he might have got a flat at Zoo Road or right no before kidding. Zoo Road. So we got to So you think that could have been one of the issues why Paul Vardy was that's able to probably push how past. he got by. Yep, got that it. makes perfect sense. Here's some in-car with Tim Herbst. Let's see if we can pull the audio up and uh, hear a little bit of this takeoff here from the start line. So this is Tim's first race. He's going to drive the entire race, mm -hmm. not first race. He's going to drive the entire race, the entire by, race himself. by himself. Yeah. yeah.
We often give many perspectives from inside a Herbst truck, but we'll be peppering in other drivers throughout this, this yeah, and, race. <laughs> you know, and the Herbs have a, qu quite a history down here. Well, they and, and, you know, that's a, a multi-generation family that's been very competitive in mm -hmm. score for quite a long time. So if people are watching this and they're wondering why they're going so slow, this is what is called a speed zone. And so they're regulated to going 37 miles an hour through You can here. see it, upper right hand corner there. Yeah, yeah, so in the upper right, in the red, that's a Stella tracker that actually records the data of where you go on the course. <clears throat> so they can see how fast you went through the speed zones as well as if you hit all of your virtual checkpoints. Is that challenging to maintain a very specific 36 miles an hour? <laughs> S speed zones make me insane. I, I like, bet, it's right? It's the most stressful thing because you're trying to go exactly that mile per hour mm -hmm. and it's really hard to do in these vehicles and especially if you're going up and down hills and through corners to try to go exactly 37 miles an hour yeah. is really difficult. I bet. What's nice for the trophy trucks is they usually buy that feature. Okay that holds them to that yeah. speed limit. All right, yeah. well, they're not holding 37 miles per hour any longer. Here we go, Tim Herbst, off and racing. Here we go. the perspective of inside the Herbst truck, behind the Herbst truck, above the Herbst truck. We had a heli in the background. <laughs> yeah, it's some awesome we got it all footage. Covered. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be a cool race to watch it with this Starstream technology actually mm -hmm. in the vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you at home who are watching this, I think there's about 30 different vehicles that are going to have the technology. So yep. this has really come a long way. Well, for the Baja watch. 1000, I think we had three. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're somewhere approximately 34 cameras uh, in car. So that's, that's a big leap. Yeah, the, the Starlink, um, just all the technology that's come into this. I was thinking this morning of when back, you know, say 25 years ago, when I was first starting to do this, or 30 years ago, you had a stub can and you would put just a, a little ticket at each checkpoint, and that's how they knew that you went on the course. Other than that, it was just a free-for-all. Mm. Now you've got a tracker. When you got pre-running, you've got satellite overlays of the race course. You've got a Starlink on your vehicle. So, I mean, you could be watching Netflix if you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it, it's just, it's changed so much. And it used to be, when we would race San Felipe, generally, 
the dirt bikes and the quads were the ones making lines. Mm -hmm. Every now and then I'd run into like Robbie Gordon or Cameron or somebody out on a line somewhere and I'd be like, stay off this. Like, I don't want you making tracks on it. Yeah. <laughs> and, no and, you, and you would never burn in the entrance to it. Mm -hmm. But now with all the satellite and everyone pre-running so much, all of the good lines end up getting kind of burned in and they become the course anyways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Looks like we got more footage back from race. And, and, and this is a great example right here of lines. Look at this, one, two, three, four. And, <laughs> and, and that's something for people that are spectators, you need to be aware that there's a lot of lines right there because you can see those guys, you, you could yeah. have a truck on either side of you. And Good then point. that can create a pretty sketchy situation. That was Ricky Johnson we're just looking at. Yeah. Yeah, it's great, great point, Wes. I mean, look at all those options. Yeah, and you could see that the guy on the left on that footage back there, he was staying out to the left so yes. that he could stay out of the dust yep. and keep his pace. Yeah, and it's lingering, yeah. so it's not very windy out there. Right. Yeah, three right here. I always like this. staying to the right. Ooh. It's a little smoother, but I think with the trucks with horsepower, yeah, yeah, you got someone looking to make a pass right there. There we go. Going to switch that line up real quick. Get back. <laughs> take out a tree. Yeah, so the boom, truck that's boom, in the boom, dust, boom, if boom. he went out to the right right there, Whew. there's a smooth line, and he could probably make a pass. But you got so many spectators, that'd be sketchy. And Look I'm not sure. I think they're coming into a VCP in this area oh, as man. well. Oh, man. You can see people running out of the way. You can hear the truck. You just can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when you're the driver, that is an uncomfortable feeling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you feel uneasy because you don't want, the last thing you want to do is to hit a spectator. Right. Yeah, and you got another truck right behind him too. Sure. So, look at that. This is where this is a <laughs> situation where they start getting stacked up. Yeah. And if you can get a, a line with clean air, you sometimes you can make a pass and get mm -hmm. around a lot of guys. Wow. People going out on or the girls. forest. Dust city. Look at that. Oof. Wow! 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 All right. Some more drone action from a couple miles in. Looking good. Does that look like Mikey Lawrence? Oh, here we go. Here we little come. in car with Rob Mack. Love the truck. Home cool collected, per usual. Watch Rob racing from the back, basically. Um, it's really great that we have this footage, actually. Actually, see what he's going through. Yeah. Know? Get up there. Let's see, what do we got here? Looks like we got 37. 37 truck. Helen, I think, in the 37L. Yeah, it's Rolf. Yeah. And then he's got uh, Ricky Johnson. As well. Not the super cross, or motocross Ricky Johnson. Mm -hmm. The other yeah. Ricky Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I might know three Rick Johnsons. Yeah. Oh, all right, here we go. Race mile 47, we got Alan and Pudia here. You know, last San Felipe, Allen averaged almost 62 miles per hour. That was his average uh, speed, and that is cooking. So a lot of these guys were telling us, uh, all the competitors were saying, it's going to be between 58 and 62 miles per hour, average speed. Yeah. So, so this is interesting right here. I was kind of curious what he was going to do. I believe this is, they just crossed Highway 3, and uh, they're in like the El Chinero area. And the race course, the main line is off to the left, but then there's this uh, pole line road. And it's a little smoother, but it's sketchy because you're going in between those power lines yes. and, and the poles. And he's obviously going at a pretty high rate of speed right there. He's cooking. Yeah, yeah, Cameron was guessing the average speed would be 64 miles per 64. hour. 64. Let's see if, how close he is at the wow. end here. That would be very fast. That would I be mean, the fastest. That's the fastest. Race ever. <laughs> yeah. Right? Look yeah. at that. 
You are out there. You're out there, man. Yeah, so he's gonna start coming back into an area here where there's a hill in between the course and the line that he's on, and then they converge, mm -hmm. and then you'll uh, start heading into the mountains from here. Okay. They'll start making a left and heading west. Wow, look at that. Never one to let up. Even from way up in a helicopter, we can hear that engine just screaming. Yeah. So I really like this line in a UTV or a smaller car. Oh, wow. I think it's go. got to be sketchy in a trophy truck because if you did clip one of those poles, yeah. that's going to be a race ender. Here we go. So we got some perspectives from inside and outside the Hertz vehicle. We got Rob Mack in your lower left and then Chris Polvardi down on your lower right. If you can see that little ant zipping through the desert, <laughs> that's Chris. Chris has got to be feeling good right now. New truck in fourth. We'll see if we refresh the uh, leaderboard here just to make sure, but so far so good. No hiccups, so, so aside I, from maybe a flat so tire. So I'm fluke. showing on the tracker right now that Toby has passed Bryce and is actually closing on, on Empodia. Empodia. Right. Yep. T Toby pushes hard. He does. You know, so yeah. like I said, if he has a clean race, then he, he can pull this thing off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's just a matter of time, mm. you know, he's... Being patient. Yeah, being patient. He's had a few situations of, what, un bad yeah, luck? Yeah, he's had some bad luck for they sure. they burned a truck down. <laughs> yeah, there was yeah. that. So, yeah. Um, but, he, I mean, he's been fastest qualifier before. Mm -hmm. He's always yep. right there. He's got yep. the speed. Obviously, a very talented racer mm -hmm. on a, a dirt bike. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been to races down in Australia. There, there's a Fink race there that he's super famous for winning. And so he's got the speed. He just needs a clean race in a truck. Yeah, so from what I'm seeing on my screen, we've got Impudia followed by Price, followed by Menzies, and then Polvardi. Those are our top four right now. We've got the 10 truck coming through. Here's Alan. So this is where they Great. start to head to the west. Got you. And that's where you could see he stayed all the way close to Highway 5, mm -hmm. which I think is the preferred line. Mm -hmm. The actual marked race course is a little off to the left there. Mm -hmm. But you're coming in, you got to hit that BCP, and then you head west. Hook left, yep. So I think that northern loop is about a 23-mile section, right? Here's Cameron. You yep. might recognize that truck. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see the truck more than him sometimes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we can amend that. <laughs> After all these years of competing and racing and, and just understanding what drivers go through, Heidi, do you ever get the butterflies, though, still seeing your hubby out there and knowing what he's got up against? And, yeah. You know, what's it like being, being married to something? Yeah, you know, like it's, it's funny, coming here today, you would think that I'd have butterflies doing a broadcast or something like that. Mm. I didn't have them until I heard the sounds of the trophy trucks, and yeah. I saw them at the start line, and then I was like, oh, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they never go away. Mm -hmm. and, and I remember what it was like, you know, being I was going to say, truck. is it, oh, man, I'm nervous for Cameron, is it, oh, man, I wish I was in the truck driving? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> yeah. There's Bryce. Yeah, so this, the Northern Loop, after, so when you cross Highway 3 in El Chinero area, and then mm -hmm. you come back around to Borrego, it's about 150 miles. Mm. So it, it's, it's, it's a long, long loop. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. This is abnormally northern slanted race. Mm -hmm. For the most part, San Francisco, they usually are to the south and go through a lot of washes. Um, they're not, they're only, they're only going through Chinate, so most of the race on this is going to be to the north which is pretty fast paced. Mm -hmm. I think that may end up with us having the fastest San Felipe 250 ever for average speed. Let's see here. I think it's the Laguna Salada Lake that that's 23-ish miles. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, they're doing like 23 miles of just lake bed. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's at so, a really fast speed. So yeah, I was gonna say, so in those moments, the pedal is all the way down. They are just blasting.
In the speaking most with uh, Polvardi yesterday, he said that there's a section on Laguna Salada where he timed it. He thinks he's going to be wide open, going yeah. about 135 miles an hour for 17 minutes. For 17 minutes. Wow. And Rob Max said even yeah. 140 at one point. We were talking to him yesterday. Y- yeah, he so, so there's two lake beds in yeah. this. You've got Laguna Salada, which is uh, has a little bit, it's a, a softer surface. It, it's still fast, mm-hmm. but Diablo, Diablo is you're heading you can... downhill, coming south, and it's really hard packed, so almost cement. Mm. And R- Rob was saying he thinks like some of the big block um, V8s and like say the, the Herbst trucks with the Joe Gibbs motors, that or, or some of the lighter class ones will be mm-hmm. hitting over 150 miles an hour there. Jeez. Wow. Here's race mile 20. Some more live race action. Nice little turnout down there. Looks like we got Mikey Lawrence coming through, making his own line. Going straight down the middle. So on the refresh now, it's showing Bryce back ahead of Toby, but it looks like Toby's right on him. Yeah, it's going to be going back and forth. If there's ever a, a strong moment for an overtake, where's that going to happen? Where do you think that that's where you want to do it? You got the shot. I think you needed to do it. Already, at the top of the yeah, race. Yeah, you need to be doing it in... This is the start right here. I mean, here, look at the, but, but the, I mean, look how chewed up that st- that drone footage was right yeah. there. Just so you need to be making passes right here. Okay. Because there's lines. Race mile twenty mark. You you need to uh, be strategic. Once you get to El Chinero, after that, it becomes a lot more one line, mm-hmm. and that's I, I think that you know right now you've got Impudia, Menzies, and Price really close together. It's going to be extremely difficult to make a pass because they're so evenly matched mm-hmm. and it, there's not a lot of lines. A- another thing I was curious is how, what the weather was going to play out today because okay. in the studio of San Diego, it's supposed to rain here in a little bit. So I thought they might get some wind okay. down there at least. And it looks to me like there's not a lot of wind. The dust is hanging. Mm-hmm. And that's going to play a big part in this because... Mm-hmm. If you can't see, you can't make the pass. Yep. And when it's one line and you can't get out of line and get out of the dust, you're pretty much stuck behind it. That's, that's gonna be but but what, what you can do, though, is pressure the guy ahead of you and try to push him mm-hmm. and push him into a mistake. Yep. Absolutely. So we may see something like that. Because if you get a flat and you're running this close, then that, that, that could make or break the race for you. Well, as the trucks battle on, let's see if we can pull up a moto update. And we'll check in and... Get you guys up to speed with what's happening there. All right, so our Pro Moto Unlimited. We got Carlos Salvatierra still out in first, followed by Morgan on the 7X bike. Then Ortiz in third, Holt in fourth, Salas in fifth, Beltran in sixth, uh, Kenemir, uh, 21X bike, followed by Hopkins in eighth, 92X bike, Robinson, 24X bike in ninth, and finally in tenth, rounding it out, Samuel in the 99X bike. So now let's push to a little social action, and then we'll uh, take a break in just a bit. So here we go. We got uh, the 1X bike here, Salvatierra team, getting some fuel, getting some, getting hydrated and then getting back out there. You see how quick that happens. That's approximately 10 seconds at the most and off they go. As you can see, 200 miles left to go. So one thing that I'm hearing is that the 1X may have missed a VCP on a bad line. That may play into the result of this race. Mm -hmm. That's gonna be something we need to keep an eye on Right. On what happens there. So what we're, a real quick, Wes, what we're seeing here is this is a battery change. This is one of the first electric bikes that we've seen competing here. So this is pretty wild. This is talk about 2024 and all the updates that we were talking about. Not only are drivers making adjustments, um, you know, to their strategies and such, but they're literally changing the game. We're moving away from fuel and we're going electric. Yeah, what's interesting about this is they're going to be... Sorry, Heidi. Go ahead. 
as we go from uh, as we uh, change batteries, we're going to just take a quick break and we'll go to commercial. We'll be back with more San Felipe 250 right after this. We've been doing a lot of driving off road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? Go further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. Victoriously with Maxis. Welcome to the heart of the Southwest, the land of vibrant sunsets, cacti, and heat that can knock you right off your feet. And what better way to experience the heat of the Southwest than with ass kicking hot sauce? Authentically made with the finest peppers and spices, our hot sauce packs a punch that'll take your taste buds on a wild ride. So, whether you're a fan of spicy food or just looking to add some heat to your life, give our hot sauce a try. Ass kicking hot sauce, the perfect way to heat things up. Have an ass kicking day. Hey, if you're looking for some good dirt in the off-road industry, what's happening in the racing, all the different classes, check out Score Journal. They are always covering all the different aspects of the current events and, and giving tech tips. Make sure you read the Score Journal. Uh, it's the best magazine out there and it keeps you up to date with all Baja races. Hey, Score Journal is the best way to get your news, get your information, catch up on all the off-road uh, gossip. I want to remind you guys, take a look and give a read to the SCORE Journal, the best place to pick up any news that's going on down here in Baja.
our first ride along with the uh, Trophy Truck Spec Class. We got Justin Davis and Stephen Beal there. Perspectives inside the truck and looking backwards. See them choosing different lines here. Ripping through the course. Just see these guys bouncing around in there, ping-ponging all over the place. And these are trucks with incredible shocks and they're still moving around, you know? Yeah, yeah, and, and this is kind of right off the start, just heading out of town over to the dump. Um, you can kind of see like some, some uh, piles of trash on the side of the course here a little bit. And then they're gonna turn and then go into the big whoops by uh, heading towards Sioux Road. Constantly adjusting. See that steering wheel going left, right, left, right, left, right. Stay on track. Back in this. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, welcome back to San Felipe 250. We uh, are taking a look. We just got a chance to see the, the spec trucks. As we look down here at our uh, live tracker, we see um, we still apparently, uh, from what we can tell here, it looks to us that Chris Pulvardi may have pulled off. We're not sure if he's having an issue. You know, we're, you're at the mercy of uh, our tracker right now, but uh, hopefully nothing too extreme is happening. Can, are you able to pull it back, Wes, on your yeah. screen there? You see Alan up front. Yeah, so... What I'm seeing on the tracker right now is you've got the 10 of Alan and Pudia. He's been leading from the get-go. Mm -hmm. uh, Toby Price was on Bryce pretty hard for most of the race. Looked like he had made up some ground and was just kind of hanging right outside of his dust. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're showing him ahead of Bryce. So uh, I don't know if maybe Bryce had a problem, but according to the tracker right now, you've got Impudia and Toby Price right here mm -hmm. that are starting to gap out the field. Sure. And if, if this happens, both those guys run a really heavy pace. Yeah. And if one of them doesn't have a problem, I don't see someone catching them. So many aggressive drivers right out in front of the pack here, you know, they could be pushing their vehicles just a little bit too hard. We don't know. Well, and another thing here is we're showing Pulvarde uh, is not been moving from his position either. For so a while, depending yeah. on What's going on with the tracker on Pulvardi and Menzies? Those guys may have issues. Hopefully, he is not out this early. Yeah, and I noticed yeah. Bryce's yeah. tracker wasn't updating very quickly, mm -hmm. so we should take a look at it in a few minutes and Yeah, we can see. get adjusted time and see what's happening. That'll help us out a lot. Yeah, I was, I'm trying to see if I can get some feedbacks from some guys out on the course too. Yep. Um, you know, as they come into the BFG pit up near La Ventana, mm -hmm. um, we might be able to get an update from some of those guys sure. as well. Because sure. that's right where they're at right now. There's not a lot of spectators. There's yeah. no cell service in there. Yep. So we're kind of depending <clears throat> on our trackers. As they come out of those mountains and come into La Ventana, sure. then we'll have a better idea, I think, of what's going on. But uh, right now, I mean, it looks like, like I said, clean air is king. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Alan's got it right now. Toby is far enough back that he should have clean air as well, but if he starts closing up, yeah. um, I feel like if I, if I was Toby, I would try to get into his dust, pressure him, but not do anything crazy trying to make a pass. Yep. Just keep that just pressure. Let know, just let him know you're there. Yep, keep that pressure on him and you know try to force him into getting a flat or making a mistake. <laughs> a quick nerf here and there. and I wouldn't even get that close <laughs> to him, but uh, I would just keep that pressure. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, with where he started, if he's in his dust, he's going to have him on adjusted time anyways. Right, right. Yeah. More drone footage. Yeah, it's interesting flashing back to the start line because yeah. we've got trophy trucks that are in the lead at race mile 61, 62-ish, and then we have sure. vehicles that are just, just starting leaving. the race. Right. With a lot more behind them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah There's going to be people starting for quite a while still. Mm-hmm. And his kids designed Still that got rap, a busy kind of race cool. start happening. Sorry, 
You know, we're able to see that for the most part we got some blue skies down there, but we've got a lot of cloud coverage, and that cloud coverage can really interfere sometimes with our communication with these tracking systems and, and even just being able to, you know, bring you guys the footage. But we are doing the absolute best that we can and hope you're enjoying it thus far. McMillan coming through. And now, let's see what we got here. Which truck do we see? 30, 32 or 37 truck. Yep. And speaking yeah, of McMillan's, so, yeah. watching the trackers, it, it looked to me like Luke has had some sort of an issue too because he's fallen back. There's quite a few guys that started behind him that, according to the tracker, mm -hmm. are now physically ahead. Okay. So I'm going to. Uh, Heidi was saying that apparently he had one tire missing out of the uh, spare tire hoop. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, I, but with how far back he is, I'm going to say it was more than just a flat tire. Sure. Yeah, I just got a text too from Brian from Fox, and he said that Polvardi had a flat and he's uh -huh. not going yet. So still, so that's what oh, wow. set Polvardi back. Well, and sometimes when you get a flat, uh, I mean, if you're driving really hard, you can cr shatter a wheel or something and mm -hmm. damage your brakes, damage a hub. I mean, it, it, or or when he got the flat. You know, was it because he hit something so hard he damaged suspension right. components? You know, there, there's a lot that can happen. Yeah. Like, it right may not have just been a nail flat in the tire. Flat doesn't mean just a flat. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Correct, yeah. correct. A lot of times you get a flat, like, there's a reason that the bigger that happened. bigger overarching problem with that. Oh, we shall see. More will be revealed there. We hope uh, he'll be able to get that repaired and back on our course. So it looks like um, number 10, Alan, he's yep. out front. 46 is behind him, and then we have Bryce and Tavo. So okay. That's the, yeah. four, that's the lineup of the four. You know, and we, going back to even, we were talking about Tavo earlier, obviously San Felipe was really his race, 2013, 2014, 2015, came in first, you know, we'll see, you know, it's still early. Uh, Tavo is, uh, is just as hungry as every other single competitor out there, and he wants to win this. Yeah, I mean, he's got a lot of experience. Yeah. Yeah, if you look at the guys that are running up front, Bryce, obviously, a ton of experience down here. Yeah. Uh, and Pudia you know, right grew there. up down here, <laughs> or yeah. grew up down there. Tavo grew up, you know, his family's been racing down mm -hmm. there. So the, the one that, like, stands out to me is Toby Price. He's from Australia. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, how much does he really know about Baja? And it's really impressive that he is down here running this pace. Yeah. And, and again, I, the way it's looking to me, I, I, I think, you know, maybe Bryce is trying to play the long game here. Uh, yeah, there he goes, Cameron. But, you know, I, I think Bryce is very seasoned. You know, he, he wants to win races, but also championships. So he may be letting uh, Impudia and, and Price, mm -hmm. they're probably pushing a pace that may be a little bit faster than Bryce thinks is necessary. In your, well, that's in your comfort <laughs> yeah. zone of what yeah. the truck can handle. Sure. You know, because you can overdrive one of these yeah. and either crash, tear up the truck, break something. Yeah. So, so there, there's that balance that you got to ride throughout the whole race. No you doubt. can go about 100 to 10 miles per hour through those whoops, mm -hmm. but is your truck going to make it to the finish sure. line? And so that's that balance that Wes is talking about. Heidi, you were talking to me earlier about sort of comfort level of speed. We're talking about average speeds. It's a, fa it's a, it's a very fast, fast pace. Uh, talk to us about your experience when we, you were in the triple digits and letting it rip. Yeah, so 10 years ago racing trophy trucks, um, I was probably on that Diablo dry lake bed in 2013 mm -hmm. at about 122 miles per hour. <laughs> and I can tell you that that <laughs> felt incredibly fast. Um, and it probably was about, you know, eight miles off the fastest pace, but wow. I wasn't going to go any faster because that's where my comfort was. These guys now, we've heard them, they're telling us that they're going 140 miles per hour yeah. on the dry lake bed. Yeah. So with this technology, the change in the vehicles, I mean, they are flying. 122 miles an hour is fast. <laughs> it felt really fast. <laughs> I'm sure it did. I'm sure it did. <laughs> Well, yeah. and, you know, in talking with uh, some of the guys yesterday, most of the Mason trucks, they're running big block V8s, mm -hmm. you know, and they are, you know, capable of 140, 150 mile an hour. And then... But how long can they, can, can they sustain something at that? Like, Paul Vardy's talking yeah, about 17 I mean, minutes at that 
Revolution 7000 yeah, RPMs? I think the like, motor can handle it. It's more other, oh. like your drivetrain components is what I would be concerned. Yeah. Here's a, is, a, 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 good, a good little chase happening right here. It's interesting to be this tight this about a mile into the race. This is at race mile two right here. <laughs> yeah. Right out the gate. Look at this. Yeah. I'm trying to get a closer look at He's who we're actually so, looking at. But. So for people that don't know desert racing, we have trackers in the car. When you're behind somebody like that, you can get pushed to pass. And that sends a signal to the car in front of you, letting him know, hey, I'm behind you. I want to pass. Sometimes those don't work. Some guys don't pay attention. So then the next step is you have a siren. Okay. So you'll get right on their rear bumper on the siren. And then the next step after that <laughs> is you nerf them. Yes, exactly. And you know, I call it uh, properly motivating people to get out of the way. That's hilarious. <laughs> so yeah, you that, can't blame it on can't blame it on technology at that point. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's kind of your driver etiquette. To, yeah, I, I feel like if someone catches you, they're going faster. You just let them go by, and you know, if you can pick up the pace and get them back. But as uh, it's driver courtesy mm -hmm. to, to to do that, and you know, if you don't. You, you may end up with a rear bumper that's bashed in pretty, pretty good. <laughs> Surprise. So I heard uh, Polvardi got going again. Okay. He wasn't down for a long time. Mm. It's difficult to tell how he's doing on the tracker, but if he didn't lose that much time, we should be able to see. Mm -hmm. I, I'm what hearing that, that his tracker him. might not be tracking. Okay. So mm. I'm not sure exactly where he's at, but, but it. it, it t Price now, according to what I'm seeing, is closed a little on Impudia. Yep, he's closer. It, it looks to me like t Toby's probably the fastest We're truck out on the track right now. Got some 10 class here. Class 10s. Jason Shipman. Going. And again, everybody, those that are watching, those that are down on the course, any kind of social media stuff that you guys are capturing, uh, please send it to at Score International. We would love California to see your perspective and hear from you. And uh, and here's some social clips while we're at it. Speak of the devil. There we go. Your opportunity to, uh, here's a great shot of Ampudia here. Your opportunity to get featured on live broadcast. Tag at Score International. So this is a really cool section of the course because you're right next to Highway 5. And that, that's, you're literally like 100 yards off the course. So you can drive right along next to the trucks. Cool. It's a great opportunity for filming. Whoa. Oh. Silk sandwich. There it is. Another shot of that. I don't know if you'll get any protein out of that, but you'll get some minerals. <laughs> it's like a Vegemite sandwich. Is that what it is? Oh. I told me Price will like that. Like that yeah. he'll, he'll be down for that. Like He's had enough some, of that. Looks like we have some Aussie fans. Yep. Yeah, speaking of Toby. Sp <laughs> wow, we are manifesting today, are they we not? They came a long way they to sure come did. watch this race. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe a distant relative. All right. So there are a few really awesome examples of uh, how your footage helps us out and gives us uh, another in-depth experience, a much more uh, immersive experience of the San Felipe 250. So things are moving along really good here. Um, who else we got down at race start here? Let's see if I can get a number. Yeah, it's, right, so you got all Midland, the 10 Texas. cars going, and then, and then the uh, pro UTVs are going to start. 10, there you go. 22. So uh, obviously I come from the pro UTV yes, you class, do. and there's a lot of heavy hitters in that. And Yeah, talk, the, to, us, talk to us about who you're looking at. This, well, this so race. the factory Polaris team, you know, they've put a lot of time, money invested into this. Last year, they had a great season. They took the championship. They're debuting the new Gen 2 car, which is a Pro R Razor. They'll have four drivers in that. So it's going to be interesting to see how the new Gen 2 cars work. But, you know, the, the other side of that is Can-Am now has sent some of their top drivers. So you got Phil Blurton and Vito Renuio are in the new Maverick R. So it's going to be really cool to see the battle between that and you know, kind of the Achilles heel for the UTVs has always been the uh, belt, mm. you know, or we call it a rubber band <laughs> on it, because uh -huh. that really dictated you're driving the car off of belt temp a lot. Okay. The Pro R, not so much, but now that new Maverick R actually has a sequential transmission. Okay. 
and it'll be I'm curious to see how <clears> that all plays out especially with all the lake bed oh on real here. quick it's a nice That's little a good oh, little wow. pass there yeah good job Cameron I think Nope, someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's 285 truck, but <laughs> for a moment there. For a moment there, I saw <laughs> the green. Exciting. I think this is back on race mile 20. Uh, back uh, to what you were saying, Wes. Yeah, so just the the battle between Polaris and Can-Am. Yeah. You've got the two factory teams. You know, the the factory Polaris effort, what they've put into that program is amazing. Yeah. And, I mean, that's like the first legit factory program we've had down here, I think, since probably the Toyota program, you know, with Ivan yeah. Stewart. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Craig had a Craig Scanlon, the owner of that team, had a great season last year. Mm -hmm. He's one of the four racing today. It will be fun to watch them for sure. Yeah, I think you've got Craig, Brock Hager, Caden uh, McCachran, who's Rob's son, and then uh, Max Eddy. Got you, Max Eddy. And, and Max has a history of dirt bike racing. Um, yeah. He's from the Barstow area. Uh, right. All right, so I don't want to interrupt you guys. You but can. We've got breaking news right now, and this sounds crazy to me, but Menzies apparently is broken. Oh. What? So yeah. That's... So I, I just got news right now. Um, I, I <laughs> oh haven't seen gosh. his tractor moving. You got to be kidding me. Wow. But if that's the case, and Menzies is out, man, that's a, a big. That's going to oh, have a big impact massive. on the results of this race, you know, yes. and then that's going to take him out of a championship. It is. In a four-race series. You've got to all, you got to finish. Four-race series, you've got to finish. Yeah. Now, he's got, depending on what it is, they may have the resources to fix that truck and True. still get a finish. But yeah. Well, we were watching um, his, his pre one videos earlier and how he was using one of his other trucks while yep. he was pre-running, which is ironic, and now he's got a, a fresh truck and it broke down. Yeah, and then the other thing I'm hearing is that Polvarde had a flat, he pulled over, they got fixed, and they're up and going, but apparently they're not tracking now. Cause I'm, so, yeah. so I'm not sure where But he's in the race. At. He's Correct. In. Okay. So I, I'm going to talk to the BFG pits uh, and try to figure out when they come through La Ventana, mm -hmm. like what's really – because then we got boots on the ground, yeah. and you know, we're not just speculating off trackers. But you know, right now it looks like we got Ampudia and Price – Battling one battling two for the <laughs> overall trophy truck win, and then are you able to discern Wes approximately where Bryce is as far as maybe race mile? How far you know? How if, if distance wise, I mean, from what we're seeing here, we're showing race mile one thirty six. One thirty six, and if he's broken right there, it's not an easy place to uh -uh. get to him. No, no it's not. No, it's not. Yeah, it's going to be tough to get access there. You'll have to come in. There's an access road like through here, through, in through the mountains, and then come Ugh. down to him. Th that and would be he's really in a bad time spot. consuming. Brutal. Yeah. I guess they have a helicopter, but. Yeah. What are you going to heli in another mason I don't truck? I think yep. you're supposed to drop parts <laughs> off with a helicopter. I, no. I don't think so either. Yeah. Maybe he has the parts on the truck. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Parts Ferry could bring him. Yeah. Parts Ferry. But you sure. were speculating that you were saying that he was going a little bit slower and Toby was pushing. It, and it, so maybe there was something going on with his yeah, truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's generally Bryce is running a top pace and it just seemed like Toby closed on him and was right with him. So, yeah, yeah I, I, that's a good point. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, from what I can see on my thing, uh, Alan and Pudia and Toby are way out in front. And then with Luke so, McMillan in third. So here we have the pro UTVs going off. Um, looks like that's uh, Wayne Matlock's at 1871. He's right about to go. 1870 is, I think, Mike Walsh. Got a Herbst truck down here on camera making its way through. It's, Yes, yeah, so 1870 was oh. Brandon Walsh that we were seeing. Oh, we got a tire it, change. He's got a flat uh, left rear. There we go. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Let's time this, see how long this takes. So, so they have a jack built into the truck right there. That's nuts. So that's kind of nice. You don't have to use a floor jack to actually kinda lift nice. it up. That's, <laughs> that's incredible. really nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Really cool. I was being conservative. You there. are. You are. <laughs> All good. I don't want to bust your chops. Yeah, that's got to save a lot of time. That was extremely fast. Do you see that? Yeah. That's. I mean, that was. That was thirty seconds at the most. That was stupid fast. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The jack really is still fast. down a little bit. Okay, it's is almost it? all the way. It's all the way back up. Now. Yeah. So you know, we're starting to see how Baja is starting to take these vehicles out. 
one way or another. And it looked like that was right at the Highway 3 crossing, um, at basically El Chinero area. Yeah. Didn't affect them though. Except the truck coming through. It'll be interesting to watch Brock Dickerson today. Mm. So yeah, because that's a new truck too. He has a brand new truck. He has a two-wheel drive, mm -hmm. um, but he has a, a six-speed. And mm. so it's a Mason truck, two-wheel drive, six-speed. Uh, it will be interesting to see how the technology in that truck compares mm -hmm. to the all-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, and he's an incredible driver, so um, he's already moved from like 12th to 8th on course. Okay. So it'll be fun to watch him and yeah. see how his day pans out. I'm not sure how he's doing on corrected time, but um, moving up four we shall spots see. It's probably pretty good. All righty. Well, we were just watching the Latrell truck, and now we got more herps coming through. There it is. Tim Herbst kicking up dust, making his way through. Yeah, so there's a lot of trophy truck mm. racers that have multi-generational family experience. Mm -hmm. Herbst team is one of them, <coughs> and Pudias, Bill is. Mm -hmm. You know, they're all they all come up from a lineage of families that raced. Um, How much of an advantage do you think that plays into? you know, having that kind of experience. And it's something that we've talked about a lot, for, you know, age versus experience or yeah. uh, the family generational experience or just talent, just raw talent. I think, I think it plays into uh, effect a couple different ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if you've ever been an off-road racer or ever been part of an off-road race team, you're always talking stories mm -hmm. about the races that you did and the experience. And so, you know, hearing firsthand about your dad's experience yeah. or um, whoever it was in your family, your uncle for that matter, sure. um, or grandpa, uh, you know, you you remember those stories and so they factor in when you're making decisions out on the race course. Uh, <laughs> but there's probably something to do with the DNA too. Sure. And just that pure talent. Yeah. Well, and if you grew up going to the races and, and yeah. doing this and being around it, I, I think you're just more acclimated. Sure. And yeah, you you're just, steeped in the you culture. You have the time, and you understand desert racing. Mm -hmm. I guess you know. So yeah. I mean, that, that's yeah. a, a big advantage, I think, to come from a family like that. Sure. Reading the terrain. So there's one of the Gen Two uh, factory razors. I think that's. I believe that's Max Eddy in the blue one there. Mm -hmm. They've got their cars color coded. So. Um, and then uh, Cognito, J Justin Lambert, is is right behind him. And he, he's another, yeah, I, I'd say there's probably six to eight guys that have a shot at winning the Pro UTV mm -hmm. class. Justin you know, and, Lambert. And it's, there, there's a lot of different classes down here. Obviously, trophy trucks are the premier class. But the Pro UTV class has become a, a top tier class as well. Mm -hmm. you know, and they went from, people called them golf carts when they first started, and they don't call them golf carts anymore. No, no. <laughs> they uh, usually a class 10 in the top Pro UTV, they're neck and neck. Uh, that's Caden McCachron. So he won the Baja 1000. And you know, the, uh, obviously, he comes from the McCachron lineage, so he's got a, a pretty good tutor to teach him. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. What do they call that in Karate Kid? <laughs> Sensei? Sensei. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I think be um, most people wouldn't mind having Rob McCachron as their off-road <laughs> sensei. <laughs> right. Off-road sensei. Hey, something cool like here it. is the car right behind Rodriguez is a guy you might know, Roger Norman. Oh. <laughs> so he's in a yeah. new line chassis Razor that they converted to a single seater in, it's got king shocks. So this, normally it's like one shock per corner. Yeah. But in this class, you're allowed to run external bypasses. Only a couple teams do. And Roger's one of them. So he's got king shocks on there uh -huh. with a coilover shock and then an external bypass. Wow. And I, I think that's going to be a big advantage. And on the front, he's running a single shock, but an external bump stop. 
Right. So that little blue shock there, the arm comes up into that, and that gives you posi position sensitive dampening. Amazing. What's cute about that is there I, we watched, go, Roger. I watched his wife. National president. Go up to take a picture with him, and then she got to drop the drink, green flag for him. So, <laughs> amazing. Isn't that cute? His little in car. Yeah, so I think we're in with him right there, right? Scoring our national president. You can see in the lower right hand corner now, you're getting an idea of the speed, throttle brake, yeah, he's hands, etc. He's, he's in his speed zone, speed right, zone right now, but he's going to let it rip in just a minute once he gets outside of this. One thing that's pretty cool on his is, is the picture in picture and then the telemetry there. Yeah. We haven't had that on the other first cars. First time? Yep. First time we got a telemetry going. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So in Love this, to go he, solo. <laughs> he's probably con controlling his speed just by throttle yeah. versus how Heidi was saying the trophy trucks, they've got speed limiters yes. in the truck. So yeah. in that case, you actually just hold the throttle, full throttle, and the electronics of the car regulates the throttle body and keeps you at you know, under mm -hmm. 37 miles mm -hmm. an hour. Yeah. Uh, old school way is you use your right foot to control <laughs> the pedal. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. A little harder, or at least you got Pay right. a little more attention. We're going to do a little ride along here as we get inside Roger Norman's vehicle. And so before that cut out, you could really see the difference oh, of I'll the beating was. that he was taking <laughs> versus the trophy trucks yeah. going through there. Yeah, the oh, trophy yeah. truck camera was just like, looked like butter. You know, just smooth. <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, what bumps? What are you talking yeah. about? And then Roger you know, was just all over the place. Popping all over and, the and place. And that was in a very... A very well suspended, with all the nice shocks working you just got UTV. done talking about. Exactly. You know. You know so, but yeah. but your your that car, I, I think they end up putting a stock motor back in mm. your like say 224, 25 horsepower. Okay. Versus probably over a thousand in a lot of the trophy trucks. Awesome. So here's some more in car. Yeah. So you got Vito Renuio. That's one of the Can Am drivers that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. That is in the Maverick R. So. Both Vito and then Phil Blurton. Phil is a, a very accomplished UTV racer. Those guys are going to be in the, the Maverick R's. I want to see how do those stack up against the factory Polaris team, as well as some of the other factory supported drivers like, say, Brandon Sims, mm -hmm. uh, Wayne Matlock, Kristen Matlock, Justin Lambert, uh, Mike Caffro. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, a, there's a slew of people that can compete here. But I, I just think with almost 40 miles of dry lake bed that the the sequential transmission may be an advantage there. Okay. And do you think that that with regards to these new vehicles, that is the biggest advantage that we're going to see in this new season? Or, or what is the greatest advantage in the new vehicles? I mean, the greatest advantage I see in the UTV class is just the time and money and effort that Polaris has put into their program. Uh -huh. it, it's <laughs> tough to stack up against that when they do so much testing, R&D, I was talking to the team manager, uh, Ryan Thomas, and he was saying that they've got over a thousand miles per guy pre-running down here. So a lot of people used to come down and they would just pre-run the course like once. If you're doing a thousand miles on a, in a 250 mile race, that means you probably ran it four times, yeah. Yeah. which is a lot. Yeah. You know, you've got the course pretty dialed there. All so right, this now. This is cool. Yeah. Four camera shot, we got the herps. Thor and EJ going, we got Rolf, 37L truck. Except Rolf is not moving, but, so that's not good. <laughs> well, there is a pause there. Yeah. Uh, oh, there he's back in it. Okay. But uh, again, additional perspectives from the front and the back. See these guys ripping through the course. Hey, hey, hey. Throwing up some shakas, saying what up. <laughs> seeing all the crowds and you really get an idea of how close these spectators get and how incredibly precise our drivers have got to be to avoid that. Love the support, but at the same time, we need everybody to be safe. So I got an update on Polvarde. What do you got? That he is running ahead of Luke McMillan. Mm -hmm. So that's going to put him physical... I believe fifth. So he's back to fifth. He was fourth, and fourth then that third maybe. Yeah, I'm, having, I'm trying to see. 
Did Toby? My tracking is one. Okay, well, so I'm I'm showing that Impudia is ahead of, or that Price is ahead of Impudia now. So we may have a physical pass for the lead here. I'm gonna refresh just. To I mean, update it's close. This. It's yeah, yeah. No, you might I'm be showing right. I'm showing Price is ahead and pulling away. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. I gotta refresh. <laughs> but yeah, you're right. So price I, is in the yeah, lead. I, again, we're at the mercy of the trackers and when they update. But it, it, it's kind of what I was saying. I felt like price was really pushing the pace, yeah. and uh, he may be the guy to beat today. Yeah, it could be. Wow. More in car with Roger Norman, our score president. So he's going 75 miles an hour yeah. right there. Almost 80 now. Yeah. I don't believe his tachometer though. You don't believe it. I don't either. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's got a few more RPMs, RPMs to go. <laughs> That's all right. I think it's really cool that he owns the series and he gets to see this firsthand. Yeah. So. Agreed. Uh, and we are very, very grateful to, to him and, and allowing us to broadcast uh, out of his his sports hangar, if you will. An incredible location, and um, you know he's he's all in it. He's supporting us. He's racing in it. Um, so our hats off to our president. He's uh, not only the owner; he's also a client. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. One right? way to put it. One way to put it. Yeah. Looks like we're back. Oh, nope. Here we are. Where are we now here? Let's see if we can get an idea of who we're taking a look at. This is race mile 47 right now. Let's see if we can zero in on this red truck. Yeah. You see how close they are to the highway right there? You yeah, this is north of El Chinero. There's oh, here a we go. Uh, perspective. Uh oh. What do we got here? Got a battle. This, this will be interesting. Oh, look at those rocks. Yeah, that's an easy way to get a flat. Yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah. Okay, so I think if I'm seeing this correctly. It looks like, uh, yeah, the um, that that red truck really had to brake, get out of the way, and yeah. That ten yeah, he's he's through. off pace right yeah. now. Yeah. Like, <coughs> Oh, hopefully he didn't flat. Yeah, it looked it like looked he was like, slowing down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he saw the rocks. Let's see what we got here. 289 truck coming through. Oh, oh, there goes the Wilsons. Oh, for a Whoa. pass. <laughs> and or clouded. Yeah, who knows? Staying out front at least. So I'm going to say these are Look our this. lead ones here that we are battling, go. Oh, although. Oh. It's a battle. Well, so he made yeah. the pass, but now he's giving it back. Let's see what happens here. There are specific points when, depending upon where these lines are. Okay, he's, will he's bring back you, on it now. Yeah, they'll either bring you together or pull you apart. I'm going to say Wilson was oh, a little confused on his line right there because yeah, it looked look like he that. checked up on his speed. Yeah, this is another area where there's a lot of different lines here. The general, <laughs> the normal course was off to the left. I think Wilson was on a line there to the right. Yeah. And do you think that's strategy or that's just how it played out? I think that's strategy. And if you saw, there was another truck that was on the actual race line. Right. So I think Wilson maybe saw that uh -huh. and saw that he could go out to the right and get clean air. He can see that dust in the distance. So he's like, I'm going to hang right. Yes. Yeah, so this is in the hills right here. You've got some alternate lines. You can either go up over that mountain, but it's a blind rise. And you got to kind of check when you come up over that because you can't see where you're going mm -hmm. or you go down in this wash mm -hmm. to the right. And you can see these guys are battling right there. Mm -hmm. Ideally, you want to be that first truck out so you're not getting a face full of dust and silt. Yeah, that's one of the Herps that's trucks. That's a Herps truck. I don't know, if, is that Tim that's uh, mm, behind him right be there? Might be truck 19, let's see. I think that, I think that is. Okay. <clears throat> this All is right. that section where you're going through washes here, and it's just going to be hard for him to make a pass. Hmm. Some more drone footage. You can see these guys are moving. Back to. 
looks like 19. <clears throat> Some great aerial footage right now from the helis. I refreshed my tracker and I could see a lot more trucks on the course. Yep. Something else I'm watching is Rob Mack. Yep. Oh, here we I'm go. Speaking him. of, there he is. Okay, well, so I'm going to say he's already passed at least 10 to 15 trucks. Wow. wow. <laughs> so I, I, I think he's like in the 20 to 20, 20 to 25th physical out there. And, you know, he started 30, How many in the trucks? mid to late 30s. How many trucks do you think he's passed? At least 10. So that's a pretty egregious considering where he started from. What do you think, what is he doing different? Is it just he, he, experience? Is it just he, he cojones? Hold, he holds the skinny pedal down a little longer the whole than everybody time. else. That's what he's doing. Yeah. But no, it, it's it's experience. He's got good lines. He knows his he way knows around down here, yeah. and he, it's just racecraft. Yeah. I don't think there's anybody down here. I'd say maybe Rob Mack and Rossler have the best racecraft of anyone down here, just because the experience that they have for sure. Yeah, there's got well, Cameron is there. You know, there's a lot of top guys, but sure. If I'm putting like my Mount Rushmore for for sure, Rossler and Rob Mack are on it. Yeah. Well, had he qualified, he would have been at least top ten. For sure. And probably top five. So now he's starting back with a lot of slower vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he's just gonna he's just dusting them. Yeah, exactly. And he knows how to make passes and, and, and work his way through. Mm -hmm. So and. and a, a cool thing here is, you know, this is his first time in this truck, and he, I don't think he's ever raced in all-wheel drive. Ha, has he, Heidi? Uh, you know, I'm not sure about, about that. I, I don't think he has. That's I think he's always question. been in a two-wheel drive. So, mm. you know, he's he's been bringing uh, a knife to the gunfight. Now now he's got yeah. a gun. That's yeah, right. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that Jimco all-wheel drive doesn't have a ton of races under its belt. So, you know, I, I think he's still getting it dialed into how he likes the car set up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously Rob's got a lot of experience. So um, I think we're gonna see him get better and better in that truck as the year goes on. Yeah, the more seat time you have in your truck, the more you get to yeah, know it. of course. Each truck handles a little bit differently, so. <clears throat> You can see how more and more spectators are showing up. Spaces are limited. Okay, really... according to my tracker, I got Impudia leading price still. And they're a little on bit of a gap. They're on Laguna Salada. They've gone through the Saldana area mm -hmm. and they're probably race mile 115, 110, 115-ish. But they've really pulled ahead as far as the TT class goes. I mean, I don't yeah. see anybody else that even close to third right now. If if everything is playing out as we're seeing it here. And Bryce is out. It, it, it's, I, I think what's happening is what I said. You got Impudia and Price push an incredible pace and they're just, it's checkers or wreckers for those guys. Checkers and, or wreckers. If one of them or both of them don't break, no one's catching them. Gotcha. Yeah. I would agree. All righty. Yeah, they're about 10 miles ahead, physical miles. Mm -hmm. we got some more. You see how they're just digging into these grooves, these ruts. Some of those pop-ups, dust. Some in-car with Stephen Beal. 241 car blasting through and there's that section west you were talking about earlier with the power the power lines the poles i should say yeah you gotta yeah, have it, heads it, it, up it gets on that sketchy it's the faster line because the, the race course off to the left is really whooped out yeah i just always pucker up when you're wide open going splitting those poles yeah because it's like at these speeds, if it just kicks out a little, a little bit, bit and you clip one of the poles, it's going to be bad. You can you're, see you're Steven. taking a corner off the car. For sure. Sometimes Steven has, is going through them. Sometimes he's going to the right. He's being selective. There he is. He's moved over a little bit. So back to Rob real quick. Apparently yeah. he did race the um, Jimco fastball all-wheel drive at the California 300. Uh, okay. So he does have a little bit of experience in this car. Okay. But not a lot. I think this is the first time is. down in Baja. Sure. 
Um, another thing that's kind of interesting with that is that Jimco all-wheel drive, the dynamics of that are almost the reverse of how a Mason truck is built. So the way that you're driving that car, um, really, I, I think the Jimco is based off more of a, a two-wheel drive geometry. Um, so it's gonna slide more versus the Mason truck is you're gonna be driving it through the corners more. It's still all-wheel drive, mm -hmm. but there is, there are differences between the different chassis. So like a Brenthal Geyser, Mason, uh, Jimco, you know, all, all these different trucks, okay. the, your driving technique actually yeah. has to change a little bit from truck to truck. Well, actually, Wes, we have got Rob talking a little bit about exactly what you are. So why don't we roll a clip here and we'll dive into Rob's experience with the truck. 2024, you made some big moves. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, you know, the off season, uh, just, just trying to figure out what to do for 24 and kind of knew the all wheel drives were really making a statement and uh, started contemplating what am I going to do and uh, ended up, uh, obviously we all know uh, Robbie Pierce, Jimco, um, they had built a all wheel drive truck there and the Navarros took over Jimco ownership and I ran into him at Crandon and then uh, PRI show and kind of early January ended up uh, going down to see him just talk about it a little bit and uh, ended up deciding to, to, to get, jump in an all-wheel drive truck. So I'm excited about that. Um, you know, fastball racing, Jimco, and then my team, it's kind of a collaboration between all three. And I'm super excited. I, I got some big power and I got a uh, all-wheel drive now. How does, how does it feel? You got your all-wheel drive truck. How does it feel? No, it's, it's incredible. You know, I've driven them before. I raced with Luke a few times. And, uh, you know, they're, they're just amazing. You know, when you step on the gas, they just they move and two wheel drive as soon as you step on the gas starts to spin so um again every time i get a two wheel drive or excuse me every time i get an all-wheel drive i'm like man how do the two-wheel drives even keep up with this so i'm um, definitely uh excited about that and uh you know give us a chance uh you know i think a much better chance at, w at winning with it uh compared to two-wheel drive honestly i was really thinking to myself um i don't think a two-wheel drive is going to make the podium this year um and score trophy truck racing so i needed to get <clears throat> You know, I needed to get a, 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 a big gun to the knife. You know, what do they say? I don't want to bring a knife to the gunfight anymore. So now I got a gun. So it should be good. Akron, uh, those fighting words, two-wheel drive, don't stand a chance. What do you think? You know, um, you got to use a lot of technique and have a lot of experience to race the two-wheel drive and, and win this race. And, I do think that there's a lot to be said. These all-wheel drives, they just have so much grip traction. And um, on a course like this, it does give you an advantage. Yeah. So um, yeah, I think his analogy is right. Yeah, well, he's, he's saying that now he's in this all-wheel drive, and it like when you push or you do this, it moves. Whereas the two-wheel drive, it spins. Wes, you had some comments on it too? Yeah, so uh, another thing, the difference is in these trucks. So this Jimco is a front engine. So your weight bias is going to be right. different versus a, a Mason is a mid-engine. Uh, I, I think uh, Robbie's truck is a mid-engine too. He's not racing this race, but there, that's another platform that uh, is a mid-engine. But the others, um, like uh, the, I believe the Brenthal is a front engine as well too. You might be able to chime in on yeah, this. Yeah, I but... think I think Geyser Brothers, <laughs> Brenthal, I think they're all front engines. Uh, that was what I drove when I raced mm -hmm. trophy yeah. truck and trophy truck spec. Yeah, so as a driver, that, that weight difference and weight bias difference, how did that affect you yeah. with a front engine versus mid? Well, I'm kind of sad to say I haven't driven an all-wheel drive. <laughs> I might be a little jealous right now. Yeah. You can tell these guys are the having a lot of fun. The season is still young, Heidi. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to the 500. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see it. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think uh, t to me, like f from what I've been told by drivers is the the more the weight is to the back of the car, the bear is going to work through some of the rough, as well as the more balanced it's going to be. If you've got the weight centered in the vehicle, mm -hmm. um, you know, if, if you've got more weight to one end of the car or the other, mm -hmm. then now you've got to adjust your suspension for that. Oh, look, we're about three minutes away from the 16 year old. Yeah, I was going to say, star. she's a really young driver, Yeah, right? 16 years old, about to uh, launch into the San Felipe 250. This is really exciting. And so this is, that's another class, that's the uh, Pro UTV normally aspirated, mm -hmm. so basically no turbocharger. Got you. 
I love seeing women in the sport. Well, Absolutely. It, and it, it's awesome to, there's been so many women, including yourself, that have done so well. Yeah. You know, um, you know Kristen Matlock definitely stands out. Um, Sarah Price, she, she's yep. not in this race again, but you know, she does race down here sometimes. Um, Absolutely, they're both but, really good UTV racers. Yeah, right. yeah. Um, yeah, even before me, Becky Wick. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she was a formidable competitor. Like Shelby Reed. Yeah, Shelby Reed. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's there's definitely women that are out there that can throw it down. So Eva's 16. Heidi, how old were you when you started getting behind the wheel and getting into these races? I'm not telling You're you. You're not going to tell? Okay. <laughs> no. Was there a t Were you close to a 16-year-old at the time? Or did you, tr you no, know? No, I wasn't. No. But uh, what do you think's going through her mind right now um, as she's approaching the, the green light? The so, green flag. so when I my very first race, I I had so many butterflies that I thought I was going to throw up, you know. Right. Of um, course, it's natural. so yeah, I think at the start line you just have all these nerves and you're trying to focus and think of the things that you real that are really important to remember as you get started in the race. Yeah, um, you know the first you know 10, 20, 30 miles. Once you start to to get your pace and get mm -hmm. into your groove, then those nerves go away yeah. and you start to have a great time. You settle in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so she's probably just up in that moment right now at the start line, but yep. she'll get settled in soon and hopefully she has a fun day. Well, somebody that's settled in is, uh, we just saw Alan Impudia at race mile 100 blast through, probably uh, averaging back up to his 62 mile an hour, maybe faster, we don't know, but uh, wasting no time, still our race leader in the trophy truck class. We'll yes. see who's coming behind. Toby Price, any minute, I guess, is going to be coming right through there. So this area is called Saldana. That's mm -hmm. in the southern part of Laguna Salada. So that's the first big dry lake bed that they're going to hit. Uh, on the tracker, I'm showing that Impudia and Price are kind of neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And they're in that sil silt bed area around 126. Mm -hmm. It's looking to me that Impudia has already gotten through it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that was one of the areas that I had marked for us to watch to make yep. sure everyone got through there clean. Mm -hmm. The lead trucks, I, and especially the all-wheel drive trucks, I expect them to get through this no problem. Yeah, it's going to be more the trophy specs where I think we yeah. start seeing uh, <clears throat> that really play. Oh, here role. we go. Here comes Price. Yeah, absolutely. Did you have some damage on the hood there? I, he came by th so fast. You know, looking at the tracker at right now, Toby came through at 126 miles an hour. So I, I amend what I said about Ampudia before he was clipping through at least uh, triple digits at 100. So when they, when they see this flat, they're going to hammer down. Yeah, on the tracker, I'm showing him, yeah, it's 101, 126 at price right now for yep. a mile per hour. Yep. Yeah, so he is not letting up. I think they're going to have a really fast pace, um, you know, on that. This next section here. Southern, the last half of that loop. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a really fast pace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's fast. Th this whole course is, is really fast for San Felipe, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's whooped out, but the, these trucks have the suspension and horsepower to get up on top of it. Yeah. They yeah. sure do. Well, and that's where there's a big difference between the all-wheel drives and the two-wheel drives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some more. I, I think you're, you're corner Whoa. to corner. It's Chris Pulvardi coming through. So he's definitely back in. The corner to corner speed of the all wheel drives is, is their exit speed out of turns because yeah. you've got four four tires pulling you out of mm -hmm. those turns instead of your rear wheel spinning. Mm -hmm. That's where you just make up so much. Time. That's everything. Yeah. Yep. And you, that was a great op opportunity there to get that perspective that you're talking about. Back in car here with Rob Mack making his way through the course. Going back to the trophy trucks, looks like in third place, from what we can see, we got Luke McMillan and then Chris Pulvardi back into fourth, followed by Laughlin, Lofton, uh, Justin Lofton in fifth. 
one of the things I, I think when we were watching Roger Norman, you were seeing how much input he was putting into the wheel. Mm -hmm. And then you see that shot of Rob and he's just relaxed like on a, a Sunday drive. <laughs> yeah, no S kidding. Saturday drive, I guess. Yeah. But I but, think racing for Rob is second nature. It's almost a meditation for the guy, but at this point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it's, he's just sitting back. It, it's also a testament, though, to how well the trucks work. Mm. You know, because mm -hmm. he's not having to oh, give absolutely. so much input there. It's just a lot more relaxed trusting, drive. He's trusting than, it. Yeah. Than in like a buggy, you know, say a, oh, he's a, a great class 10 car or a UTV, mm -hmm. you're really fighting the wheel a lot mm -hmm. more. Absolutely. It's breaking up a bit, but there you go. You see at the top of the screen, potentially another line that other racers were using. Yes, this is heading into BFG1. Okay. Near like La Ventana. Okay. So it's real sandy right there. There's a line to the outside, but uh, your preferred line is going to be probably hugging the mountain there. I think mm -hmm. that's shorter. Mm -hmm. And and then he's not too far out of BFG1. Mm hmm which is pretty cool, all those BFG pits out there. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the most important things to have that pit support out there is that you're in a remote area, and mm -hmm. sometimes it's hard to send. You know, your logistics are so important. They're such an important part of the race, and you've got to send your crews to different spots, but having that extra support from BFG pits, yeah. you know, then you don't need to send a truck up to that remote area. And so. those BFG pits have everything. I mean, Absolutely. they've got everything you could possibly imagine, want, or need, or desire. Oh, here we go. Our 16-year-old Ava Star is off and running. See her choosing her lines. Really cool to have in-car. You can see her reactions, and then we can see where she's going all at the same time. Looks like her co-driver lifted up her visor. That's something yeah, I, gonna... I prefer not to do. <laughs> do we know who the co-driver is? We know who she's well, out there with. I I wouldn't do it without glasses on. I, I wear uh, heat wave safety glasses. Mm -hmm. And I actually, if we're in a slow area, I like to put my shield up so that way I get some air because I get hot. Oh, they actually are but conversing. The... We can we can bring it up and hear what they're talking about. 29, go. 31, 32, 33, 34. Go, you can go now, you can race. I can? Yeah, go, go, go. So that's where you get some confusion there where you have a speed zone. Mm -hmm. And that, that's something I would always make visual landmarks where I knew where they start and end in. So that way I'm not counting on my co-driver of where I need to speed up and slow down. Because um, sometimes you'll come into like a speed zone, you catch somebody <laughs> and if they're just kind of putting around, oh. <laughs> looks like they're pulling over. Someone's making a pass on them, maybe. Not sure. Oh, we froze. Let's oh. see if we can. Yep, they got dust in front of them. Okay. Let's see if we can now. listen in a little bit and yeah, turn. Right, hear what's right, going right. on. Go, get it. You can see a little bit of maybe someone with not as much experience down here mm -hmm. yeah. um, versus if you watch like Rob or like some of those lead trophy trucks, yeah. they're on point on their lines. Mm -hmm. There's no hesitation at yeah. all. Yeah. Um, but that just comes with time. For sure. A little bit of trepidation. That's yeah. to be expected. Well, and how to get experience without experience. 16 years old. 16, yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. can only begin at the beginning. And it's really important that her relationship with that co-driver mm -hmm. is cohesive because and trust. Yeah, you you just gotta feel good about it. You gotta feel so good about there, their input. There's Roger right there. Or no, that's a ten it's, car. Let's okay. see. Yeah, a ten twelve. Yep. Yeah, but if you have someone you can trust Jake Woodruff. while you're learning, it's gonna help propel you into the sport. You'll no be doubt. much better. In car with Justin Davis, and, and having a co-driver that has a lot of oh, experience they just pulled over. Down What's here. happening, guys? What do you think? I'm gonna say they they're frantic. changing a flat. I think so. Look at that. This in-car footage really gives you a sense of how frantic it can be, and, and how every sick every single second counts. Oh, and the belts are so frustrating. 
mm. because you've got your helmet and, on and your neck restraint and you're trying to belt up, you get unbelted and yeah. then belt back the, up. The neck restraint's what drives me crazy because you got your neck restraint on and you can't turn your head. Yeah. yeah. And, and then trying to get in and out of the car, it, it just makes it difficult. And then trying to get your belt lined up over it. Yeah. yeah look at this, look at this perspective. You got some people running in, trying to help out. The guy's pushing them. <laughs> Yeah. You could be in the middle of nowhere oh, and somebody will walk know. out of right. the bushes. Again, you know, years back, you never got to see this. And so it's really cool to see uh, how people from all ages, apparently, can I'm show up. Looking at, it looks like, if I'm seeing this correctly, that they shattered the glass on their uh, side mirrors on both. Because that doesn't oh, look yeah. like it's a mirror anymore to me. No, it doesn't. No. Yeah, it does look something happened yeah they look like speakers almost they do <laughs> I was, I was like are these lights coming back at them yeah does it make sense I'm thinking it's their side mirrors and they, they probably shut maybe sometimes rock come rocks yeah. come up and it shatters sure. the sure. glass yeah so that was a flat so, so the driver's gonna get in while the co-driver is putting the other tire away and, and putting tools away okay so that way he can get buckled up yep and he's ready to go so then when the other driver gets in you can kind of be rolling yeah. So where are we going to put that drill while well, he's blasting? How you it probably it? goes in a, a bag he's got on, a spot. The, um, on the co-driver's side okay. is what I would think. But do not want he'll, that he'll get buckled in, Yep. and then once the co-driver gets in, then he can hand that over to him, and then the co-driver will start putting stuff away okay. generally as you're starting to roll. The ideal scene. Yeah. We always had dirt bags like right in the center yeah. or right on the lower. Just in case. By your feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so, so he's we'll having see trouble what they getting do. his window net up right now. You can see kind of some fr frustration on his face. Can't really hear what he's saying, but you can see what he's feeling. What's tough is that, so if you just passed a couple guys, yeah, and you got and track position and clean air, and then now you lose it, yeah, then that's really, uh, really frustrating. <laughs> the difficult is to buckle in. When, yeah. Look at that. Yep. So, so see, he's putting the uh, he's putting the drill the impact away. into the door on the on the side there. Yep. But at least your driver can focus on driving, and then you know he'll get fully belted sure. back in. And, you know, get but all, all in, that was pretty away. quick, wouldn't you say? All in, considering yeah. going over, changing the tire, getting back in. Yeah. Off they go. It's a pretty fast change. I always kind of debate of the driver getting out or not. If you've got two people in the car i always just stayed in buckle mm -hmm. and then yeah. as we were coming to a stop he's unbuckled getting out as i'm literally coming to a stop sure he changes it real quick and then hops back in and we're going and yeah I, it's, I got out when we did a lot of limited truck racing and then when we started racing the faster classes oftentimes i'd stay in the driver's seat yeah it seemed yeah. faster that's yeah i think it is unless Unless you're in a situation where it's something you need two guys to be sure. yeah. working on the car. Yeah. But we've been sharing a lot of different perspectives of uh, people's experiences in Baja. But right now, we're going to go to a familiar face. We'll take a look at Cameron Steele and how he feels about Baja San Felipe 250. But what does racing in Baja mean to you? Well, it's my life, right? It's my pass down from my father. My dad started coming in, in 70 with... Uh, Parnelli Jones. I started coming in 73. I started navigating for my dad in 82, driving in 85. So it's a generational thing for me. It's more than just racing. It's history. And I've been able to share it with all uh, my guys the same way my dad shared it with me. I don't have sons. I have daughters. Uh, but having Cody and Bean and some of the other guys around, Richie, and some of the guys that I've been able to share it with has been pretty phenomenal. So for me, it's, it's more of uh, what we leave behind in the philanthropy of it, giving back more than just the racing. Like the ultimate adventure tool with right. all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. Guys, how much time do we have in this The commercial? all new Please. adventure ready Bronco Sport. Yeah. We got three minutes and then if we need to
got that right turn, we're good. So, uh, meet up at the compound group up. I have 10-4. Yeah, we're sure, dog. Good, little driver, straight on through. Rocks, sand, heat. Life off-road is tough. We wouldn't have it any other way. If Amsoil products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to Amsoil protection today and get fast free shipping from Amsoil.com. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside.
All right, folks, welcome, welcome back to King Shock San Felipe 250. Right now, we're currently looking at Christopher Polvardi trying to make his way to the front of the pack. It's a battle right now between Allen and Toby Price, but interestingly enough, we are starting to see movement from Menzi. Now, do we know if he's back in the race, or do we know if he's just getting that truck uh, to repairs, or what do you think? Yeah, no, it looks like he's back in the race. Um, I show him going 64 miles an hour at race mile 132. Okay. So, so new development? Yeah, he's not too far back there. I gotcha. mean, there's so many things to factor in and mm -hmm. there's still a lot of miles to cover. Right. You know, earlier, uh, before we went to break, we, we saw that video of, of Cameron. How does that make you feel as you, you know, he talks about the generation, we've been talking about that too, about the generational lineage, yeah. community, the family, how it all impacts. Uh, yeah, how did you, how did that land for you? Yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's sweet because it, it brings back memories of my father-in-law and mm. um, I got to go to like a lot of races with him. There were, in 2008, I think it was, I raced two series. Mm -hmm. And so I got to ride with him to the races when Cameron was going to do other broadcasting work. Right. And uh, so he used to tell me all this, those stories about his, his racing. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I loved hearing what Cameron had to say. And yeah. he brought up the um, boys that are from our neighborhood who are all out there today. And, and they were like, you know, sons to us, kind of I bet. raising them a yeah. little bit. Um, so it, it's sweet to hear him talk about it. It takes a village. It takes a village. Um, well, while we were um, in the commercial break, actually got a ping from John Griffin. And um, while this just came, well, actually he sent this to me about 20 minutes ago, but he was talking about uh, the second moto split at race mile 271. Um, adjusted times, 1X Salvatierra still in the lead. Uh, 11X, five minutes behind at that point. 13x, seven minutes behind 1x at that point, then 9x, eight minutes, and then 8x, 10 minutes behind 1x. But what we really want to find out is how did the v how did that, um, that VC VCP situation with Salvatieri, how does that impact his adjusted Correct. time? Correct, yeah, because we heard earlier that he had taken a bad line and yep. missed a VCP. Right. So if that factors in, that's going to be probably a 10 minute penalty. Mm. So, That's so if, if they're close, that could affect uh, you know who who takes the win on adjusted time. Yep, yep. Absolutely. You never know. I, I'm watching the lead trucks right now. Um, the the pace that Impudia and Price are throwing down right now is impressive. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of expected that out of the two of those guys. Yep. Yeah, they push a very hard pace. And Heidi and I were talking this during commercial break that. Yeah, what happens now is with these lead trucks, you'll have say 10 guys and they all just throw it down. Yeah. And one or two of them are gonna have a clean race. You know, most of the guys may break or have a flat or something happens, but when you have people that have a clean race out of that, you're not gonna beat them. Mm -hmm. You know, and right now that pace that Impudia and Price are going at, I don't think anyone can catch them unless they have a problem. Now, the one person that looks like they may be making a move here, though, is Polvarde, because mm -hmm. I'm showing mm -hmm. him third physical mm -hmm. on the course, mm -hmm. and we know he had a flat. So, you know, it, it's, it looks like Polvarde, Walser, and um, Tavo mm -hmm. are really, really close. Yeah. And then you've got Lofton and Kevin Thompson that aren't neck that neck far almost. off, too. Right. So, you know, we've got a race here. You know, it, it's, you've got bunches. Almost. Yeah, you got Impudia Price are out front, pretty good gap, and then you've got kind of a real tight three-way race between Tavo, mm -hmm. uh, Polvarde, and um, Walser, mm -hmm. and then not too far off them is Lofton and Thompson. And I think Menzies might be in that group back there too, or mm -hmm. if my it's, tracker's right. Yeah, it, I'm showing then then Bryce and then Luke. Well, speaking so, of pace, uh, Wes, you did a fantastic video on the pace of San Felipe. Let's take a look at that. Racing and score is grueling. And doing an event like the San Felipe 250, uh, I've talked to a lot of drivers over time that say the San Felipe 250 is tougher than the Baja 500 or Baja 1000. And the reason is, is the course is so tough down here and it's only a 250 mile race. So guys are pushing a faster pace 
and it just, it's really hard on equipment. It's hard on the driver or rider. It's tough because you want to push it, you want to go fast, but you can't tear up your equipment. So you're walking that fine line. But when you do get to an area like this, you see the mountains of San Felipe, uh, that's off in the distance. You know the town is right there. You're about five miles from the finish. You know you're relatively home free at that point. If you don't make any mistakes, do anything stupid, you're gonna get it to the finish line and to the checkered flag and hopefully taste in some champagne. San Felipe 250 may be the shortest, but it doesn't mean it's not gonna be challenging. Definitely, you know, I, I think Heidi and I were, were talking that when you run this race, it's just, it's, it's 250 miles. So it's, it's long and it's putting a lot of wear and tear in your vehicle, mm -hmm. but in desert racing, that's actually a relatively short race. Mm -hmm. So it, you're always struggling with how hard do I push it? And how much can my equipment handle? Yeah. yeah. You know, so can I go 110 miles across the whoops and do it for 250 miles? Or do I gotta go 105 miles an hour across the whoops and hope that the guy that's going 110 breaks? And yeah. hopefully too, in pre-run, you're gonna understand where you wanna push your vehicle and where you're gonna wanna kinda lean back a little bit. But you I, never know. I, I honestly, I feel like we're at a point now that there's n there is no conservative like holding it back. Gotcha. Yeah. Most of the guys, they're pushing hard. <laughs> no matter and, what. And it's just, you, you know, you, you go as hard as you can go and let the chips fall where they may. So then to that point, in pre-run, you're gonna just go hammer down the whole time so that you're ready to go and it's you're comfortable once you get there. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think you're just you're trying to find the fastest way around the course. Yeah. And w when I race quads, you know, it, it's different for a dirt bike or a quad because there it's not it's more the man versus or woman versus the machine. So you're trying to find ways to like save your energy and your body mm -hmm. um, versus like in, in a thousand plus horsepower. Right. Uh, a trophy truck. <laughs> you're, you're more trying <laughs> to find fastest from point A to point B. Sure, sure. What's interesting is they're gonna. These trophy trucks are getting to the point. I think in about ten miles where they're gonna come up on a really rocky section. Okay. And it's gonna be tight and rocky. It'll be very interesting to see how they all get through that section. Certainly in that section between Price and Ampudia, how they battle in that section too will be. That that could be yes. a make or break. If somebody hits a rock, absolutely. We don't know what can happen. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's, I think they're about 150 and that area is around 175 or so. Okay. Yeah, I heard 165, so or, somewhere oh, in there. Okay, yeah. Um, I don't, I, I know where it is. I don't know the exact mileage right there. But um, yeah, in that area, it's almost like, it's just solid rocks that are oh. all about this big around. Yeah. And it, it's like they push them to the sides. So you can't get out of the line anywhere. And if you mm -hmm. do pop out and go off course, you're, you're gonna have issues. Mm -hmm. So you, I, I, I think your top guys are gonna be smart enough to just pick their way through there. Mm -hmm. you know, you, that's an area you're not gonna win the race, but you, you might lose the race. Got you. Absolutely. Now my screen just refreshed, but I thought I saw Pulvardi in third. Is that accurate? What do you have? That's what I was showing last. Um, let me do a refresh here. Yep. So 94 yeah. truck up top of your screen, just about to hit 150. It, it, yeah, so uh, Price and Impudia, they're basically they're in still, that Saldana area. But here they're approaching that big uh, yeah, curve so, that you were talking about. Yeah, so this area right here, that's earlier where the course is real close together. Mm -hmm. That's where we saw guys coming through and a, a bunch of spectators yep. at the southern part of the lake bed. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to get into... It's a little more sandy, and and then right in this area is where it gets really rocky. Okay. So they've got, you know, I, I'm going to say 10, 15 miles before they get into the really rocky section. And then after that, it kind of opens back up again. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to our course. Got a live shot here. This is real close to BFG1. Okay. Near, like the La Ventana area. You know, earlier, uh, Heidi, we were talking about log logistics and, and pits, and we were talking about the BFG pit and having a strong chase team and all that stuff, and, and just how imperative it is that, you know, if, if, if your team isn't ahead of you to prepare, especially for these bikes that are dependent upon batteries, if you're not out in front mm -hmm. and where you need to be at the right point, it's a make or break situation. Um, but 
then you've got the BFG pit just in case something goes wrong, you know, you're, you're able to salvage what you need and, and make it through. And there's been some incredible repairs that have happened uh, in these places that uh, have helped teams stay in the, uh, in the race and make their way to the finish line. Yeah, yeah, I've had to rely on BFG support um, in the past. Um, something as simple as my, like the throttle cable breaking. Mm -hmm. And so we did a little jerry rig to make it work sure but um ultimately we had to get it repaired and yeah. and you know they were there yeah and i think they're awesome support and especially like when you're out in those remote remote areas and when you think of it you have a field of 270 racers so there's a lot of mm -hmm. racers that rely on that pit support yeah um, I, I always felt like with the bfg pit support the okay. thing that was the most important to me was the pit book that they give you so mm. they're they're right. known for the pit books that they give out so if you're part of that bfg pit program mm -hmm. you actually get a pit book that they do at a pit meeting yeah and it's like the bible for the race sure so they break it down it has all your G gps waypoints in it and then what i always thought was the most important is all your access roads for your chase trucks yeah. So mm -hmm. when you're doing setting up all your logistics for your chase crews, yep. you can give each one of those one of those books. Yep. And then they know how to access the roads. And then we would usually do our own pit for fueling, mm -hmm. but we would use them. We would pit right next to them. Yeah. So that way you had access to their welders or you know whatever right. stuff that that you might not have mm -hmm. in your chase truck that they would have. Gotcha. So it, it's a a really important resource to have yep. down here. And I think everything that BFG does is, is amazing. Got you. Well, speaking mm -hmm. of pits, we're going to have Chris Polvardi coming into a pit any second now. You see the dust. We know that somebody is coming through. This is at mile 158 now, the San Felipe 250. Yes. So this is right across, like in that Saldana area. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 hitting the brakes. There he goes. And let's see how fast these guys can do. Looks like we're putting some new tires on or changing a tire, I should say. Putting one in the hole. Mm-hmm. It's been there for about 15, so, 20 seconds. So now. generally when you're doing a pit like this, yeah. you want to change your tires and then you got like, like the guy in front of the, in the hood there. Yep. You want people putting eyeballs on the car, checking all four corners, making sure your suspension looks good. Okay. Um, you know, trying to make sure everything's good to go on the yep. car. And there off he goes. So that was less than 60 seconds. Yeah. I just timed it. That was <laughs> um, about a 35 second um, pit stop. So that, that's not bad. That's pretty solid. I think any minute too, we're going to have Tavo coming through for his pit. Yeah, and, I mean, and probably and Bryce. When they're Bryce fueling, they're, most of these guys are using there a thing is. called a pressure pro. Uh -huh. So it's a pressurized fuel tank that you, know, you can do. What does it take to do a, a full truck? Ooh. Like 10, 10 15 seconds, seconds or so? Yeah, it's maybe not. No, st <laughs> no stopping. No stopping. And this plays into pit strategy too. Sure. So depending on f fuel capacity and what your fuel mileage is in the vehicle, that's going to dictate where you need to stop. Yeah. So, you know, Pulvardi stopped right there. Was that? Tava's obviously needed to stop before that or he's going to have to stop after somewhere. There's, there's, there's a possibility that that was actually Luke McMillan that we just saw blast through and he's just not tracking. So okay. that is interesting. Let's see who we got coming into the pit area right now. Yeah, I think the fuel efficiency in Cameron's truck is less than two miles per gallon. I think it's like 1.87 or something, 1.78. It's, Got you. It's not very it's efficient. It's not much. It's yeah. not efficient. And I think all of the trophy trucks are like in between one and two mile per gallon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let's see so what we got they here definitely, the They definitely suck some fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah, Tavo. So that's Tavo. There so we that go. probably was... It might have been Luke. Luke. It might have been. It wasn't Bryce. We do have confirmation that that was Luke. He's just not tracking. So Luke McMillan is oh. still in the San Felipe 250. And Tavo with a really quick pit. 
Again, approximately 30 seconds, he's back in. So that lets us know um, if Polvardi was in third, McMillan fourth, Tavo fifth. Yeah. And Essentially, and then we got Toby and Ampudia and did battling to it out. And did Toby pull ahead of Allen, of Ampudia? It, if our tracking is right, yeah. So that could be zero minutes I, ago. Toby, Toby I, Price. I know something part. here of Cameron. I'm showing pretty high up overall right now. Cameron on, doing well? On the tracking is, let's see, one, two. So there goes Walzer in like the 89 truck. About seven, seven, seventh yeah. or eighth? Yeah. yeah. Off he goes. Yeah, that's. And, and what place did he start? He started thir er, 16th. Yeah, so, so number 16 so there, started 16th. There you uh, go. Yeah. And he's already up in seventh. Or eighth, maybe? Or eighth, seventh or eighth, somewhere in that. Yeah, world. somewhere that's, in there. That's moving for a two wheeler, too. Well, we don't have Luke in that mix because he's not yeah. tracking. So here's a slow mo McMillan. This is to confirm that it was indeed Luke McMillan coming through. Yeah, he is. may not be tracking, but he is absolutely still in this race. Wow. Yeah. So, so he's third physical. That's huge. Probably That's third adjusted, I'm going to say. I just did a check on Rob Mack, and yeah. I believe he's around 22nd overall. Okay. And, you know, so, so he's continuing to move through the pack. Keeps he's got up. some pretty good clean air, so he might be able to make a little bit of run on some guys. Okay. So it's a, a little bit of a, a dark horse back yeah. there to keep an eye on. So yeah. lots of talk about pits right now. Uh, let's do a video on the importance of pit and logistics from BFG. BF Goodrich Tires will once again provide on-site tire and race support at all score races. Their reputation as a tire manufacturer is already well established, and their pit service truly reflects their commitment to excellence. As teams navigated the challenging terrains of the SCORE International Race, it is evident that BF Goodrich's race and tire support is a seamless extension of their tire expertise. One of the most remarkable aspects of BF Goodrich's pit service is their impeccable timing. Every second counts in a race, and their pit crews demonstrated remarkable efficiency in changing tires, refueling, and addressing any mechanical issues. This not only minimized the downtime for the teams, but also showcased the meticulous planning and training that BF Goodrich invests in its pit crews. For the Baja 1000, we will see a total of nine BF Goodrich pits on the course. Their tire expertise combined with their meticulous planning, efficient execution and effective communication showcase their dedication to supporting teams in one of the most challenging and demanding off-road races. BF Goodrich's pit service is not just a pit stop. It was a pivotal part of the race experience that undoubtedly contributes to the success of the teams they support. In a race that demands precision, durability and lightning fast support, BF Goodrich's race and tire support stands out as a crucial player in the success of the competing teams at SCORE International Off-Road Racing. Well, tipping the hat to the BFG pits, they go above and beyond, and we are so grateful for their support in, uh, in all our races. Um, and, and guys, uh, coming out of, uh, you know, we see why certain people pit, certain people don't. We saw Luke just screaming, trying to make up time, still in it. You know, it's all strategy. Here we see there, more. There's okay, another so Bryce example is in of the it. pit right and now. And Bryce. He's and back And he's it. missing uh, a tire. Well, some of the body there the in the body. Right <laughs> corner. So, <laughs> Clearly. you know, what, I wonder exactly what happened with Bryce. I don't know. But he, the thing is, is he just lost track position there. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure who went by, but uh, you know now he's going to be in that truck's dust. For a minute here, for a while. Yeah. And that, that's what's frustrating sometimes. It, when you lose track position in a pit, as a driver, that just makes you nuts. Because mm. you may have spent 100 miles trying to track down a dude to set up a pass, make the pass, and then if you lose him in a pit uh, and you just hand it back to him, sure. it's, it's really frustrating. Because you have to take so many chances going through somebody's dust to make that pass yeah and then you got to do it again that makes you crazy 
making you crazy. Uh, well, going back to the bikes, uh, more updates from John Griffin. You just let me know. It says lead bike uh, near the race mile 246. It's still a five-way battle, and it's looking like on adjusted time, you've got the 1X bike, Salvatier out front, followed by 11X, 9X, 13X, and 8X. So any way you slice it, it is going to be a close call for all of those guys. So appreciate the updates from John on that. I've got Luke back up tracking. Okay. So, and Pudi's still leading with Price right on him. And they're, I think, in that 170, 175 area that is super rocky. Mm -hmm. So we need to watch those guys, see who gets through there clean. Yeah. Because if someone tries to push and you clip a rock, get a flat, that's going to probably uh, make or break this race. Right I now. wonder if we have a that camera would there. The that race. would be something. All right, so my screen's updating, and we'll. We'll see who got in front of Menzi, too. I, it, looks it looks like, like Tavo. It's Tavo, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to say that was... 83 trip. Well, no, no, no it's Tavo could be Luke. pitted, so... I'm not sure. I, I was looking at uh, Bryce's truck when mm -hmm. the other one went by, so yeah. I, I didn't even pay attention to what it was. Well, look at this. If I zoom in here, we got Impudia and Price. We know that Luke's not tracking. I, or I, he is. Oh, he's back. Yeah. He's back. Yeah, he's I've back. got him. But what about Polvardi? Where's Polvardi uh, in uh, relation to Tavo? Polvardi should be in I don't third, see, right? He should be, but I don't see him. No, I'm, he's not. Oh, wait. No. Pol I'm, my board is looking like sixth right now, which doesn't, that doesn't make, make sense. Correct. Yep, I got that too. Yeah, so that might just not be updating quick enough. Yeah, I think probably the next time we're going to be able to really get eyeballs right. on them will be coming into Borrego. Okay. And then... Uh, we got a little ticker going on down below here, too. Get an uh, idea of how fast these guys are at and our, our competitors are moving and where they are, essentially, which is super, super helpful. Oh, yeah. We'll do our best here in front of our screens as they refresh, keeping you all updated. Yeah, Pulvardi's tracker hasn't updated in 16 minutes, so that's... Really? Okay, well, that's major. So he's up there. We, we just know don't he's know there. <laughs> how far back from the two leaders, right? Sure. Just more pit coverage. You know, when we were talking about the trucks, there's some other chassis makers out there, too, like the racer chassis. So you have Tracy Graff and mm -hmm. Justin Bean Smith, they're in that racer truck. And one of the things that is cool with that is it's about a thousand pounds lighter than the other all-wheel drives. Ah. So, um, you know, th that can be an advantage. It's, it, it's tough because when you ha have suspension set up and you're doing that, sometimes a heavier truck will work good in an area because um, you go. get the inertia through the bumps. But I think a lighter truck is better in the like in and out of your corners. Sure. Which a lot of you know this race is one corner to corner. Yeah, and um, Justin Smith Bean, we call him, who was he was a builder for Tracy Graff. Um, mm -hmm. He was just from a very young age. He was one of the kids in our neighborhood. He just grew up loving off road racing and got into like the engineering and design and fabricating side. Mm -hmm. So he's done a you know. He's, He's done some nice work on that truck and well, over the years. And he's a good driver. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's got both mm -hmm. sides to it for sure. Yeah, it's interesting how that weight can either give you better grip or it's going to give you quicker acceleration just and how the driver can drive it. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so I just got word the truck that passed Bryce in the pits, that was actually Justin Lofton. Huh. And... We haven't spoken a whole lot about Lofton, but right. he's kind of creeping in there. Yeah, he's in the mix. So what do we have here? I think right now, coming through this section. Where are we at here, Wes? This is coming into BSC this one, like Mob and Tana. So this is off pace. That's going to be like a trophy spec or something. Got you. Okay. Race mile eighty. The Back the, the lead trophy specs, it looks like McNeil is leading the trophy specs, okay. and he's on Laguna Salada right now. Okay. Um, there looks like there's a, a hell of a battle. We haven't really talked about the trophy specs, but mm -hmm. you've got McNeil and then Thor Herbst followed by EJ Herbst. Oh. Uh, and that was, you know, when we were following the 1000, the two Herbst kids, they were sure. battling the whole For time. Sure. And it looks like yeah. they're back at it no again. Doubt. 
hungry, but hungry. They got to beat McNeil to, to get the win. And that is not going to be easy. It will not. <laughs> it's not. Here's some in-car with Brandon Walsh. So I'm going to say that drivers. this is around race mile, like 35 or so, okay. when you're running parallel to Highway 5. Uh -huh. There's a bunch of lines there. I always like to stay off to the right, hug real close to the highway. Okay. But when I was talking to everyone in pre-run, they said that that now everyone's going there and all the big trucks are running it. So that's actually turning into the big whoop down area. Oh, wow. And actually old race course is becoming faster. Interesting. You see the co-driver's got a cell phone out. Maybe they're communicating or getting updates or... Maybe they're taking in-car selfies for our social media. He's posting to TikTok right now. Is that what it is? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, again, we'll keep plugging it, guys. If you got in-field footage or anything that you want to participate in, send it to at score international IG. We'll bring it up if we can. Always great to hear from you. So touching base on the UTVs, let me take a look at uh, who is leading there. Mm -hmm. But I just got word from the Matlock team that Kristen just came through uh, race mile 42 mm -hmm. about 15 minutes ago. Gotcha. So Kristen's doing good. Let's see me zoom in here. It's looking like Wayne Matlock actually might be doing pretty well. So I got Brock Hager and Wayne Matlock in a battle. Okay. So it looks like your two Polaris Pro R's, that's factory are. Polaris versus factory supported. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, you've got Hager and and then Matlock right with them. And nice. that, that goes back to the uh, one shock per corner mm -hmm. with the live valve. That's what Hager's running. Mm -hmm. And then Matlock is running the coilover with a, an external bypass. Mm -hmm. So that's the... Uh, at end of the day, I think everyone's going to be going to that because yeah. you're just asking so much of one shock per corner okay. that you end up with shock fade, especially uh -huh. in a race like this. And then, um, you know, they're working their way with through the 10 cars. Let me see where our lead 10 is. Wes, earlier you were talking about just how this course can begin to shift and change and it gets manipulated by all of that traffic and stuff. And I guess it goes back to also having experience, doing your homework, free running, all these different types of things and being able to adjust in the moment, really. Yeah, for sure. Part of desert racing is you've got to kind of fly by the seat of your pants. Yeah. You know, and the best laid plans are never going to go perfect. <laughs> so no matter what you do, I, I don't think there's always some little hiccup. Mm -hmm. And it's who can overcome adversity the best. And that's where your logistics and preparation come in. Uh, I, I was talking to uh, a chassis builder the other day. And he was talking about the three pillars of racing in, in desert. And it's your um, basically like your, your vehicle, your logistics, and then your driver. Mm -hmm. And that's you got to have all... Say. You gotta have all yeah. three to win. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you yeah. have a good driver, but if if one of those three is missing, you're not you're not gonna win. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought that was a great point that he brought up. Baja becomes the great equalizer. Mother Nature does not discriminate. Yeah, yeah. It's you, you know you want to have your A plan, mm -hmm. and your B plan, and then your C and D plan <laughs> because <laughs> you, you never know exactly what's gonna happen, and, and Baja has a way of, of biting you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I went back to look to see how Rob Mack was doing, and it looks like he's moved up in position to mm -hmm. 21. So that means he's passed about 15 or 16 vehicles wow. already. Um, to your point earlier about that silt bed, it looks like that mm -hmm. might have uh, bit Greg Adler. He looks uh, like he's stuck up there with zero mile per hour right now. Wow. Back to some in car. Rob Mack, live with Rob. Dustin it, it, off the sheet. It looks to me like Rob is catching there Dallas Luttrell in the 87. And, I mean, it looks like he's in his dust right now. Yep. <laughs> he's yeah. wiping his shield. So I'm going to say he's right on Dallas Luttrell. He's probably trying to set up a pass. But what's tough in these really high speed sections is it's just so hard to make a pass. Like that area is kind of one line and there's just not a lot to separate people. Mm -hmm. you know, if you're all in a trophy truck, 
and then uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's just hard to make up time and, and push through their dust. Sure. You can see how dusty that is right there. Yeah. yeah. There is a little bit of wind blowing it off though, so that's nice. It's moving. I couldn't tell if it was dust or if he had fog underneath and he was hoping it would clear it. Uh, I, I think that was dust. I was just yeah. looking at the bushes there and those flags. There's a decent amount of wind. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, it looked like 70 was in the pit right there. We got a couple trucks in the pit. Yep. Is that uh, Gus? I'm going to say that's Let's Gus see. in the pit right Here there. Here we go. This is th 37. Yep. So that's Ricky Johnson, the, the motocross Ricky Johnson, and um, Gus Villa de Sola. So th I, they should be first place trophy legend. Mm hmm. That's Rolf. Okay. Yep, 37L. They don't That's seem Ricky to Johnson be moving, driving the car, however. They don't seem to be moving really quickly. Like Not as aggressive as some of the other yeah, drivers it, are. Looks like they have okay. something going on there. Yeah, yeah. So, Cone so, on the hood. so my bad, that's Rolf, and then that's R Ricky Johnson. And, He's driving. And yep. Rick Johnson are both in that car. Yeah. Wow. We do have an in-car camera Ricky, on Ricky, this. Ricky uh, Johnsons. We might at some point be able to get in there and see what's going on. Maybe he even hear a little bit of the banter. But uh, as long as that pylon's on top of the hood, they ain't going anywhere. So maybe something's going on. Yeah. While they're sitting in the pit, in. Yeah. I just want to give some updates on a couple other classes. Let's do it. If the oh, tracker is correct, someone's screaming I, through. Sorry. I believe <laughs> Cody Reed is in first in class one. Okay. Here we go. And it looks like he's got a decent lead. I think Kyle Quinn Ooh. is in second. And then Brad Wilson. Okay. Uh, and C Cody Reed is on Laguna Salada at race mile 110 right now. Yeah, we've got a lot of vehicles on the course. <laughs> As I pull all the way back and see everybody out there. Yeah, even the lead trophy trucks, they still have about 100, 110 miles to mm -hmm, go. Mm -hmm. But the bikes are getting close, so we should be getting really close to somebody crossing that line relatively soon. Class 10, it looks like Stan Potter is leading. Yeah, the, okay. the, the thing is, is that once they get through Borrego, I don't see a whole lot of passing happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and honestly, from where the, getting through the rocks, if you get those through the rocks clean at 175, mm -hmm. uh, unless somebody has a problem, I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of passing in this race. Yeah, it, it's dusty and it's fast, and the pace these guys are going. Yep. It, it, there's not. It's not like there's some line that you can make up 10 minutes on somebody. Right. No, I, I, those don't even. The exist only way anymore. is if there's maybe maybe somebody does a it's, wrong uh, VCP or something like that, and they you know you get a. A lucky yeah. break. Yeah. But, it's, you know, at this point, there's still lots of race to go. So with that, we are going to pause here. We'll take a break, but don't go anywhere. There's much more of the King Shock San Felipe 250 coming up. I'm, again, I don't. We've been doing a lot of driving off road. It's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but in such a slow-paced environment, it's effectively really safe and a lot of fun. It's really important that everyone that comes out here has the respect to have a lot of fun, but not do damage. We always try and leave it cleaner than we found it. The best way to leave your mark on the world is to hardly leave one at all. BF Goodrich, what are you building for? further, explore the trails less traveled, and reach your destination quicker with King's new Toyota Sequoia 2.5 OEM Performance Series Kit. 
These 100% bolt-on kits feature front ride height adjustment, superior ride quality, and external finned reservoirs with optional wide-range compression adjusters to further refine your ride quality. See why we're the choice of experienced overlanders and order your Sequoia kit today. Victoriously with Maxis. Welcome to the heart of the Southwest, the land of vibrant sunsets, cacti, and heat that can knock you right off your feet. And what better way to experience the heat of the Southwest than with ass kicking hot sauce? Authentically made with the finest peppers and spices, our hot sauce packs a punch that'll take your taste buds on a wild ride. So, whether you're a fan of spicy food or just looking to add some heat to your life, give our hot sauce a try. Ass kicking hot sauce, the perfect way to heat things up. Have an ass kicking day. to Ensenada. For those who are looking to expand their culinary horizons, a place where the adventures of the sky, valleys, and oceans come together. Ensenada, the capital of Mexican wine. It's time for the 37th Annual King Shots Score San Felipe 250. And now, exclusive SCORE merch. Don't miss your chance to experience this action-packed race. Visit the official SCORE merch booth for exclusive t-shirts, sweatshirts, jackets, hats, stickers, and more.
Just past 1904, they're out of the car. Good, good, good. All right, hey, there's a familiar name, Brandon Walsh in the 1870 truck, car I should say, <laughs> vehicle. Um, so many things to choose from here. We got a lot of stuff happening. Um, we got some great in-car from him as well as earlier we were looking at Eva Star, the 16-year-old. 
in her San Felipe 250 race. Um, but to bring you guys up to speed on the bikes. Now, I've been going back and forth with John Griffin uh, during our break, and he's giving us some real-time stuff. So approximately, we've got some adjusted time are on race mile 270. 1X leads, so that's Salvatierra, followed by 11X, who's one minute behind. We got 13X, seven minutes behind Salvatierra, and then 9X, who is seven minutes behind 1X. Now, the 11X rider, Arturo Sala, he also stopped to help a downed rider in that first section, so likely they're gonna give some time back to him in 11X. However, it's anybody's race. We are very close to having our first moto cross the line very soon, so uh, we'll keep you updated on that. And uh, Wes, you got anything else you want to add? Well, you know, to throw one last little thing at them before they get to the finish, there's yeah. a pretty gnarly silt bed on the south side of town right there. Mm -hmm. and they're right about to get into that. So I, I think in a dirt bike, you should be able to skirt the edges of it mm -hmm. and just kind of go through the bushes, do a little bushwhacking. Um, that's what I would recommend in that situation. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, there, there is one little spot that you could throw it away Look, <laughs> at the end of this. Vic, speaking of throwing something away, my God, yeah, what that, is going through E.J. Herbst's mind right now? He can barely, I mean, this is terrifying. Well, well earlier we were, had the end car and you could see the hood was lifting up. Now, now you can, they're, they're running at such a, a high speed right there. There's a lot of force against that hood and, and oh some of it God. broke away. And he, um, can't, he can't risk pulling over and ripping that thing off. They just got to keep going. Can they? Yeah, what I do mean, you think? I, I, to me, like you kind of come to a point, depending on how much is that that's obscuring his vision. Yeah. You may want to risk versus reward. Uh -huh. Just have have your co-driver ready to hop out, rip that thing off, yeah. and then get going again. Unless it, he's got somebody behind him that's really that could. But even if you're push, well, he's probably battling with Thor. Yeah. The last we had checked, they were neck they and were neck, close. and they were battling with McNeil. Yeah. But if you put it on its lid because you can't see, because you clip a bush or yep. something, then you threw the whole race away. Right. So yeah. I, I kind of feel like taking a couple minutes, get that thing off there, having clean vision, yeah. you might be able to then make up time sure. and being able to see. So yeah. Could so be. Some, some other news that I got, uh, while we were on break, mm -hmm. we saw Rob Mack was in the pit mm -hmm. in the Jimco all-wheel drive. Yep. And... At that point, I was told he was around seventh overall on adjusted time. Wow. Um, if everyone saw <clears throat> there, though, there was a pretty heated exchange going on, and they were looking under the front of the truck. So we haven't gotten an exact word on what's going on, but apparently his engine builder was talking to him. So we're not sure mm. if it might be something in the front end okay. or there might be a motor problem. Could be mechanical, yeah. But that might be an extended pit for Rob, which is gonna be disappointing because he had really worked his way through the pack. And uh, okay. you know, I, I know he has high aspirations. So you, sure. you could see the frustration for in his sure. face there. And as a racer, it's just so disappointing to work so hard mm -hmm. and then just be throwing it all away Ugh. as you're sitting in a pit like I know. that. This right yeah. here is the, this, the jump in Borrego. This is the jump in Borrego. Now this is at race mile 204. You can see people getting Cameras ready, their phones are ready, they're ready to capture something exciting. So this is where I think the trophy trucks are next to come through this area, mm. and I think that's the anticipation that you see in the, that spectator crowd mm -hmm. right there. Looks like the weather's good out there, beautiful blue yeah. skies. Yeah, according Doesn't... to the tracker, no, no, the lead trucks have come through according to the tracker. I, I've got okay. them um, across the highway in the wash gotcha. there. So they're just waiting for the next yeah. the next vehicle trucks. to come through, yeah. whoever it may be. If the yeah, like Tavo. Hopefully, we'll get like that video. Be Tavo. Oh, somebody probably just <laughs> came through. Like it, <laughs> There's seen, a helicopter it, there, though. So great might shot be of a truck. helicopter coming through. Oh wow! Wish we could go. Uh, oh no, people are getting ready. There's a Couple. group of helicopters, so you probably. So have what team? Are we, oh, there we go. That's 21. Yeah, that was Tavo. That's right Tavo coming through. So I bet before that was probably, uh, that may have been Luke or Luke Polivardi. Polivardi. Because I think those yeah. guys are all pretty close, all close together there. Yep. And I, I'm showing Toby is in front of Empudia right now. I'm just trying to refresh. Let me see. Yeah. 
okay? Oh, that looks like EJ Herbst finally got that. <laughs> I was hoping he was getting close amended. to a pit. And there we yeah. go. Looks like he was, but yeah. he just got past. Did you see that yep. truck fly Someone by on the right? Someone just blasted through. That's got to be frustrating. So what what is he whipping out here? What's what is this debris? What is he? What are these little it looks like wires a, that look to be broken or? It looks like he, branches. He branches. He hit a bush and they're trying to get branches out. Got it. <laughs> one yeah, right it, in the back sometimes, yeah. sometimes it, those are, aren't just branches, they've got thorns on them oh. or it's cactus. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I think Another, he's trying he to get got it out from under again. him. The worst is when Choya comes in. Yeah. But it's like a bulb-like cactus and there's these one inch um, thorns sticking out everywhere, the cacti. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, if our tracker is, you know, accurate, somewhat accurate, it does look that Toby Price has a commanding lead in front of Impudia. What do you have? Mine just updated. Yeah, you, I, and, I oh, no, I take it back. Impudia <clears throat> yeah, didn't update a, for five minutes, so. Yeah, I'm, false showing, alarm, them, false alarm. I'm showing them neck and neck, okay. but I am showing You're Price ahead. And I wonder at what point he got to. He and and they're starting to get into slower bikes and quads. So that's going to get. I feel sorry for those guys. Yeah. They Here need we to go. have their heads on swivels right now. Um, man, I, I feel like Impudia's tracker is yeah. a little slow. Delayed, yeah. Because now it's showing a gap there, but. Yeah, hopefully those I, lead helicopters <laughs> will alert the UTVs and bikes, mm -hmm. you know, really give them a yep. heads up that they've got these guys coming in hot mm -hmm. um, so they can be prepared to move off the course and let them by. We just saw somebody so, blast by giving you, let me look at those rocks right there. Here we go, back to 204. So there's that Bryce. 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 Yeah, Bryce through Borrego. Running the number one plate. Mm -hmm. from his excellent season so, last year. So I, I've got an update from the BFG guys. At okay. race mile 206, you had Impudia through and then Price, and they were a minute 22 seconds apart. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> but <clears throat> they, someone may have pitted out after that, so you, 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 you could have Price ahead. Because I don't know if that was before or after yeah. their Borrego pit, sure. if they were going to pit in that area. Yeah, fair to say everybody's hitting their VCPs. Okay, I just got an update on <laughs> Rob Mack. Yes. So it's a bad front left CV. The, um, oh. the boot was ripped <laughs> and it had dried out. So they're replacing it and they're getting going again. Mm. So he's going to have a little bit of downtime, but that's not, that shouldn't be a ton. You, you can do that fairly quickly. Relatively quickly. Yeah. Well, and, and Rob's the type that he knows how important it is to finish every race. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to want to, he's going to want to finish so that he has those points going into the season. Yeah, the, the way the score points work, you get start points. There he is. Finish points, and then you get points for where you finish. <laughs> yeah. And you need all three of those. You just got to cross so that line. If you don't No matter get, what. Yeah, the two big ones are your start and finish points. Yeah, so, so you he's got to get the finish. Points. He's the car. going again, right? So he wasn't down that long. No. And if there's someone that can make up time, he's one of them. Yeah, I'm showing him not that far back, honestly, on the tracker. He's had to do that twice this race. Yeah. Starting from the yep. back and then the CV repair. Starting from the bottom, now we're here. With attrition and some of the slower classes starting behind him, it might not uh, be too Here's a replay I'm of Bryce coming a, through. About 16th. In slow mo. Mm -hmm. Catching some sweet air. <laughs> there we go. And that's some uh, new livery on that truck, yeah. too. Boom. Great shot. Love the replay action. A little slow mo. You get an idea, a sense of how high these guys are going in the air. Back to Rob. Here, I'm just on that throttle. 
It's interesting the way his camera is set up in the vehicle, but does he have a co-driver? He does. Yeah, because okay. there was a co-driver earlier that was handing him a rag to, to clear that's his right, visor. That's right, that's right. But yeah, for a minute there, I thought the same thing. I'm like, is he soloing this? Yeah. In a short race, he might do that. Sure. Yeah, that and I would love, love to see out the front. Yeah. Yeah, his perspective. I want, I want to see. I wonder if he doesn't want us to see his lines. <laughs> well, here you go. <laughs> Asking your wishes. Sounds like I want to see his lines. I'm like, so okay, different. Wait, maybe that's why we are yeah. seeing out the front. <laughs> Dale Everett's in the 10 truck, 1077, blasting. That's a, a buggy, actually. A buggy. Yeah, it's a class 10. That's that's Laguna Salada. So you can see that you were just wide open going across this, and he's just off the dust as somebody. And then you've got those little kind of washouts or bumps sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it gets, a, it gets, well, he's starting to close on someone pretty quick, but it gets a little sketchy because Sometimes you'll try to get off the line to get out of dust. And like how we were talking about Tavo's near crash about 10 years ago. Yep. That's yep. what happens. You get out. Yeah, and then there, there's a crust that's on this. And from everybody running through it, you get a line. And so when he just shot out right there, yep. you break through that crust and it drags down your RPM. Okay. And you actually lose mile per <clears> hour. <throat> so you're kind of stuck in a one line. He's trying to search for it here yeah. and get out of that dust. But... It, it's really tough in this section because you, you go to you go off the course at all and then you lose all your momentum. Got it. Yeah, and you can see there. There's also some of those ruts. Lots of ruts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to get in, Stuck grab in one that of those. wheel. Sure. On a bad and, angle. And at this speed, if you get cross rutted, yeah. then Snap. yeah, like you can put it on its lid, mm -hmm. and it's going to be ugly if you're going 100 That's plus better. and start uh, barrel rolling. Absolutely. But he's looking really solid. All right, guys, breaking news. We got the first moto coming through with Rat. We're going to try to get to that as fast as we can here. Here we go. Down to Rat. Maybe not. We'll keep you on the edge of your Psych. sleep. <laughs> but uh, we do have our first moto finisher. That was fast. Yeah, it looks like 13X. 9x and then 1x is coming in yeah in physical in physical so time we'll see what adjusted looks we'll see like how that plays out yep it's still uh too close to call on adjusted time but we do have a finish this is just a, a great example of the frustration when there might be a guy that you're faster than mm -hmm. but you're in his dust and it's so hard to push through and make a pass you're right mm -hmm. and you can be held back and okay Pause right there, Wes. We're going to go down to Rat. It's a little slightly sticky, but we'll get there. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got audio, but... Unfortunately, we have technical difficulties, but uh, we'll push through and go back to Dale. Everett says he makes his way through the dust, navigates the ruts, blue skies ahead. We got these bushes kind of giving him a better line now, able to focus in. Oh, back right to Rut. All right, here we go. Take it away, Rat. To help groups stay together. Uh, I got it. I don't even know what to Three think. distinct collections. Oh, we've been working Dude. so hard for this. Uh, last year we didn't, rugged we didn't have a, Help organize we couldn't feel choices. We so really couldn't, and this exactly year, what you want. oh my god, it feels so good. Every single uh, my, I want to give it to my teammates. I was the one, uh, I started the bike to my 83 La Ventana, and then uh, Sergio got on. He rode super good. He um, he made uh, like two passes. He got the bike in, back in the lead. And um, yeah. so, then my, so my brother good. maintained the whole gnarly section in the back, all the rocks. And I got on right here the last 50 miles just to bring it in, get a, try to get a little gap in because oh, me and us and 9X were super close the whole race. And yeah, props to them too. They were on it. And 
And I just want to thank um, our sponsors, Ortiz Trucking. Um, who else? Oh, sorry. Velasquez Car Hauling, G&G Trucking, uh, SD Powerhouse. Uh, Bobby from SD Powerhouse, he got this bike running, running super good. Uh, it's, it's fast, and uh, Steve Vargas Trucking, uh, A and Sons Trucking, Big C, Beck Automotive, uh, C and E, AHM for having great suspension, and yeah, I just uh, my dad and my mom for making this possible, and this feels so good. Finally, finally, we were able to prove ourselves and show them what we got. Absolutely unreal. Yeah, we were watching the track, and you and the nine X bike, you guys were battling it out for sure. So you got on the last fifty. Uh, not last 15, just just a 15. 15. Just okay. try to get a gap in, but no, they were on it. Uh, it was super close, and we feel so good to be the first bike here, but we still got to wait for all the timing and penalties, see, see how we did. Yeah, we got to look at that. But right now, unofficially, across the finish line, first place, you got to be pretty stoked for the team. Your brother, you were, you guys were so fast, you couldn't even make it back to San Felipe for the finish. Normally, the whole team's here, but I mean that this is a super fast course this year. I know you guys were going a lot faster than normal. The the speeds, I don't know what the average was. I haven't looked at that yet, but I mean it was up well over sixty. Yeah, uh, the track was gnarly. There was a lot of rocks. Oh, First, uh, from back. Well, congratulations to our first finisher coming through. It looks like um, 11 X's can be coming through in second in just a minute, so we'll, we'll see how that plays out. Um, but uh, we will be giving you more updates as they come through, and I'm sure in just a little bit we're going to have some trucks coming through, and uh, plus plenty of so, action left <laughs> in yeah, this so, race. So I've got another update from the BFG guys in Borrego at race mile 206. So, um, tight battle between Impudia mm -hmm. and, uh, and Price. They were a minute 20 apart. And then just under 10 minutes, about nine minutes back was Tavo. Okay. And then uh, Mike Walser was, actually no, Walser was ahead of Tavo by, coming through the pits now. by 12 seconds. So they're neck and neck. Okay. Wow. So you've got a really tight battle there with there. You got four cars <clears throat> that are within like, say two minutes of each other between it's Walser, mm -hmm. Tavo You're live on your map. And then, um, yep. How about Bryce Wes? Yeah. Well, so Bryce is in this mix. So you've got Tavo wall or Walser, Tavo, Luke, Bryce, and they're, they're all right together. So that, that's going to be a, a battle with those guys. Mm -hmm. And right now they're battling for that, that last podium spot. Got you. Yep. Let's see if we can get an update on. Go back to the finish line now with Rat for some more commentary with the 1X team. The 1X team, uh, year's champion, uh, Carlos Salvatieria. Hear me. So I'm uh, asking him questions. Rider record, but who's on the bike right now? Uh, Corbin McPherson. I uh, did the last 85 miles of the race. So, so hey, thank you. Uh, they, they gave you the easy stuff, huh? Yeah. They gave me the easy stuff, but no, I, I did the whole moto only section, and uh, that, that stuff's right up my alley. I, I race a lot of the national. Uh, so, yeah, super comfortable and all that stuff, and I actually. Really enjoyed that section. I had a blast out there. So, super happy with how today went. And you got to be pumped right now, unofficially on the box right now, third across the line. Absolutely, no. I couldn't have done it without my team. Uh, I'm hoping they're somewhere close right now. But, uh, yeah, no. For uh, as far as I know, we rode a pretty smooth race and uh, our part. So, uh, it's a. It's a team effort, and each each man has to do their part to get to the finish line. And uh, yeah, we're we're here and all safe, and we all had fun. So it was a good day. But you you got a great team, uh, Chavo, running the whole program. I mean, 
you, you definitely have everything you need. That, like you said, you come out, you do your section. It's all about you and Baja at that point. Absolutely. No, Baja's a completely different animal out here. And, uh, yeah, we had a great team. Um, Chavo. Managed everything. Uh, Ryan Surratt, Shane Logan, um, Justin Carnes, he's, they're uh, all, all my teammates, and they're all great guys. Um, I wish they could be up here with me right now, but... Uh, yeah, they all did their part, and it's a lot of a lot of work going into b these Baja races. And a lot of a lot of planning and a lot of logistics. So, um, super excited to be have this opportunity and be racing with a bunch of good guys. And uh, Chavo's a great team owner, so uh, couldn't be more happy with how today went. Well, you did a hell of a job. I'm sure he's definitely proud of you. Yeah, that's how it, this year, I mean, you were. truck finishing here within the next hour sure yeah absolutely any minute more aerial coverage of different pits different people in let's see who we got pitted right now it looks like is that 262 hard to tell but might be 263 looks like they are all clear and they will get back in the race here hands up yeah and that's around 160 and that Saldana, southern part of the course area. Glitching out a bit, but okay, here we go. So score trophy truck checkpoint number two. T Price, number 46 in first, overtaking Ampudia now in second, followed by Walser in third, Bedosola fourth, Polvardi fifth, McMillan in sixth, Menzies in seventh, and Laughlin rounding out the top eight. Here we got some in-car with Thor Herbst. Herbst brothers still battling it out. But uh, interesting, so Price has now taken the lead for the TTs. And that, then, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's what I'm showing on the tracker right now yep. is that Price is, is physically in the lead. Yep. But good to see, you know, before we thought we lost McMillan, he's still in it. We thought we lost Menzies, he's still in it. Yeah. You know, so we still got a great race going and Looks like we got a Herbst truck here from outside. Definitely missing front end. Yeah, they were smart to remove that hood. Just take that whole hood <laughs> off and off they go. It's got to be a relief for him to be able to I see. I bet. It. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right, we got another pit opportunity. Let's see, the 207 truck. Looks like they're going to do a driver swap out there. Change. That's Colin. And in nice the trophy and specs, it, I'm showing McNeil in first, mm -hmm. followed by Thor Herps, and then EJ is just a, a little bit back off that. So he, he didn't really lose too much with taking that hood off. Mm -hmm. you know, it looked like he lost a little bit of track position, but... That looks like that's your, your podium positions for the trophy spec for right now. And then they do have Cody Reed is kind of closing up on them, though. Mm -hmm. Cody Reed is, I believe, that the one started behind all the trophy specs. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of trophy specs. For Reed to be sitting uh, 
Actually, no, no, no. Uh, I got Brad Wilson ahead of Reed. And Brad... <laughs> okay, this is even better. So if Brad Wilson is sitting second trophy spec right now, that means that he's come through the entire trophy spec class. That's going to be a pretty good time overall. Nice. <laughs> out of class one. Wow. It's nice to see some more class ones. I feel like class one kind of went away a little for yeah. a while there where there weren't very many. And there's a few more entries, and, and, you know, and they run strong. Now, Wilson's had a solid finish at the 1,000. They claimed a victory there. So I'm not surprised to see him sitting so well at this point in the race. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Here goes Marsal out of the pit into the course. <clears throat> and also back at the finish line, we've got uh, Beltran making his way, followed uh, Justin Morgan. At some point will be coming through. We'll see what happens once we refresh here, and hopefully we'll get you guys down to the finish line, and we'll see what Rad has to say as well. But uh, bikes are coming through. Again, more overlay this pit area. You can see the you can see the wind picking up down there when you see those flags whipping around. You see some tumbleweeds now. So lots of wind going through. Here we go, some in car with Eva Starr. Keep your momentum going. We'll be out of this shit soon, don't worry. Well, you can hear that commentary going back and forth between the uh, co-driver and Eva Starr as she's making her way through this course. And uh, it's, uh, it's just fantastic, a testament to her sticking with it, getting through it, getting the experience. Yeah, and it sounds like her, you know, her co-driver is really helping her tremendously. Mm. And that's going to help her um, just, you know, with all that extra input, you're just taking it in. Um, and I had it at the beginning of my trip trophy truck racing um, and you okay. you just take it all in gotcha. and it helps you it certainly does uh, we're gonna go down to rat real quick with our 11x finisher Arturo Salas team right here we got Carter sitting on the bike how you doing man congratulations <laughs> okay. made it in I could tell smoke you and time so you guys were on fire it. today we were watching you through tracking and you guys were on point it was a, it was a battle out there yeah, uh, race started good. Arturo went to uh, Borrego. Well, actually, we got to Chinero and uh, and Arturo came in at the pit, and the bike shut off and didn't start. So we had to bump start him. There's a video somewhere of us pushing him. So he got going. Went to Borrego, 120 bikes. 200 trucks <laughs> and then I got on and came to the finish 
How many miles you ride? 160. There you go. Oh, man, you did like half of it. Yeah, a little over half. <laughs> good deal. So no worries out there? Good, good. Just pretty much just kept it together? No problems at all? Uh, about 20 miles out from the finish. I did hit a little rock, got a little squirrely, but that'll happen. I didn't even know there was rocks out there. I had no idea. But, it, yeah, I heard that. Off section is pretty rocky. The, the rain. 160 miles on the bike. That's going to, uh, he's going to feel that. <laughs> yeah, he might want to go get a massage or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody's going to want a massage once this whole thing's concluded. Yeah. Back to some more uh, in-car here from Thor on Thor. Yeah, so I believe Thor is in second in, in spec. So he's got a good run going. He's battling with his brother, EJ. McNeil, I believe, is out front. Looking at, at a few of the other classes, the cla lead class 10s are at the northernmost point of the course. So it looks like they just got through the, the silt there. Mm -hmm. And I'm showing Bruce Yee first, Stan Potter second, and Dale Eberts, who we were just seeing his yep. in-car a little bit ago, yep. going across Laguna Salada in third. Now in the UTV class, we've got a three-way Polaris battle between Brock Hager in first, Matlock second, uh, Wayne Matlock, because there's two. Gotcha. And then uh, Brandon Sims. And th those are physical positions, but I'm gonna say that's pretty close um, on adjusted to, because they're not neck and neck. Make sure that's quick. <laughs> awesome. And... Yeah, here's the latest with the refresh. So you can see yeah, you got a tight battle right there. Uh, Bruce Yee is at 133.6 mm -hmm. and 133.1 is Stan Potter. So your top three are less than half mile apart wow. or a half mile apart. And then uh, Hager, you know, man, Hager's just been on a terror. He, he, he drives the wheels off that car. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I guess they stay on. So he just drives yeah. that car, <laughs> yeah. but um, clearly it's working. But he he's been really pushing the limit, and yeah, I think he's been he's been the hot shoe for that factory Polaris team. Uh -huh. The other guys are doing okay, um, but Hager's just been dominant. Like last yeah. year, he he was the guy to beat in the Pro UTV class. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's gonna be interesting to see. You've got you know, Hager, and then he's at 129. Well, now he's at 130.4, and Matt, Wayne Matlock's at 120.2. Gotcha. So you'll say two miles apart. Okay. They're, they're, they're close. Very good. And then Sims isn't that far back either. He's like a mile off Matlock. Gotcha. So that's a real, real close race there. Nice. Another hot shoe here. We got Brandon Walls blasting through. And back to more pit action here. Let's see. Or not. So, or pedal down, keep going. Someone else that I'm watching that is Phil Blurton in, in his Can Am. Because mm -hmm. he's he's in the Pro UTV forced induction, which is the, the turbo class. And it looks like he's in the lead there. Comes a couple couple trucks coming in. One's and, really close. Let me see. And, and Blurton has passed quite a few of the pro open UTVs. Look at so, this. So he's moving through Speaking the of this, just yes. still staying oh, aggressive. Wow. Going into a pit well, area, that yeah. much dust in front of you is a little dangerous. And you can see how that wind is just taking it right off. So you know it's windy down there, but. Which is a good thing. Yeah. When, when, in a desert race, wind's your friend. You, you, you want the wind blowing the dust yeah. off the course. How happy was that driver behind when the guy pulled to the left and pitted and was like, thank God, I'm just going to get out of that dust. Extremely happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Checked one off his list. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it's when you can get a pass like that so easy yeah. and not have to take chances. Sure. That, that's a big deal. That was a Maverick car right there. Sure nice was, little though. spot for a shot. And again, you can see those ruts getting deeper and deeper and just all rocks. Rocks, debris, 
bushes. So when we get to this point in the race, uh, Heidi, Wes, how risky do you want to be? Is it a point where you roll the dice or do you play a little conservative so you can finish? I Either think it depends you. yeah. on your class. Okay. I think in the trophy truck class, I don't think you have a choice. I think you mm -hmm. have to, you know, haul the mail and mm -hmm. do everything you can as fast as you can. Mm -hmm. But I think when you get to some of the more limited classes, your strategy is going to be a little bit different. Right. And you're going to get to a certain level of conservation as you get further in the race. Mm -hmm. Also, depending on what your vehicle is doing, you know, the sounds it's making, mm -hmm. how it's handling. Sure. Um, that's probably going to play into, you know, how f how hard you push your vehicle. Sure, of course. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I, I do feel like that at this day and age, the way that score racing is in all of the classes, you're pretty much pushing it. <laughs> like, yeah. that you're, you're top three. You're generally, there, there's not a whole lot of margin for error there. Right. So you got to throw it down if you want to win. Something that I, I, again, I'm not sure with our trackers here if this is correct, but I haven't seen Impudia move in quite a while. He's been sitting yeah. at the base of Diablo for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we were talking about that pace that Impudia and Price were running. Could they hold yeah. that pace the whole time? Exactly. Or was someone going to drop out? And I'm showing that Impudia may have dropped out. I got, Which, yeah, same thing here. At the 227 it, mile marker, this it, thing hasn't updated for 21 minutes and it's it, supposed to be refreshing every minute. Yeah, so we'll who knows? See. Maybe that's not what's happening, but you know, Toby yeah. Price, he might have a, a, a lead here that if that's what's going on, he can actually back it down a touch. He might be able and to. And just, you know, Hold a good pace, but yeah. be conservative and get it to the finish. And we, we might have a new winner we'll in San see. Felipe. That would be exciting. I don't know how many Aussies have Aussie. won a, <laughs> a, a San Felipe 250 overall. Sure. But Baja, California, Mexico. Yeah. So I just refreshed, and it's got Pulvardi in second now. And then Vidosal in third, followed by <laughs> McMillan. And then obviously the this wild card situation with Ampudia, if in fact he's sidelined. So... Maybe if anybody's in field or anybody, if you have any intel, you know, certainly let us know here in the studio. And if you're watching and you're in the field, uh, send us some, uh, some social media stuff, at Score International. Give us some updates. It's been a minute. Maybe we'll try to get some coverage from you guys out there as we take a look. Now, here's a great example of just navigating through some of this insane terrain. Surrounded. Yeah, surrounded by boulders and rocks. This would be one of the slower, more technical sections sure. here. Yep. And I think this is cutting through the mountains heading towards Borrego, coming from like the south side of Laguna Salada. What skills make a driver better in these technical areas? What are the things that they got to have? Experience, obviously, for yeah, one, but I more mean, than that. It's just car control, throttle control. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to... You don't want to be herky-jerky with the car. You want to be smooth and take care of it. And I think that's a, a lot of drivers, when they first start off, they're trying to overdrive the vehicle mm -hmm. and push it too hard. Right. And sometimes you got to go slow to go fast yeah. and then build into your speed. Smarter, so yeah, you got to come up this right here. You go over this rise, and then basically you kind of drop down into another flat area that takes you into Borrego. Gotcha but this is always kind of a cool little section in mm -hmm. here. Yeah, I think the more skilled you are at your own vehicle, yeah. the more control you have over it. Because mm -hmm. um, it requires a certain level of patience, but you also have to be on the edge. So it's yeah. a balance between those two. It, and it's the, the better you get, the closer you can get to that edge and still be yeah. in your comfort zone. So when you do get a new vehicle, and we have drivers in new vehicles and in trucks and such, how long does it take to really dial it until you feel really confident? <laughs> when in the, I'm laughing because in the beginning of my racing, every new vehicle I rolled. <laughs> the oh, very really? first race, yes. Oh, wow. And then I never rolled them, you know, yeah. then I never rolled them again. It. But um, 
yeah, it, it takes what it takes. Yeah, I, I would say whenever I get in a new vehicle, I try to build into it, mm -hmm. like build your speed. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you go out and you try to push too hard, then you're gonna end up on your head. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so it, it's better to kind of get a feel for it, learn the vehicle, and then push. I'd say, you know, I don't know. Um, it, probably you get a couple Good races race. under your belt, yeah. you know, sure. like, if you do a lot of testing two. and you get pretty comfortable in a car, like if you're an experienced driver, you can pick it up pretty quick. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think it, it literally comes down to, if you've got the seat time and experience, you can adapt to a new vehicle. Mm -hmm. So like yeah. say a Rob Mack, you yep. can throw him in something and probably in 10 miles, he's got the car pretty Dialed. well figured out. For sure. Versus if you throw a newbie into a, a truck, it, it might take them a whole season to actually right. you know, get used to it. And every race is different. Even though you can pre-run as much as you can, they've still got to adapt to all those elements too. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's, we talked about desert racing, you got to fly by the seat of your pants. Mm -hmm. And it's being able to adjust to different conditions. Mm -hmm. And you know, you, you may have pre-run and have all your lines dialed and one of your lines is blocked by a spectator. Yeah. And then the next one is blocked by a guy with a flat tire and, and you, know, you never know. How many times do you think you got to pre-run until you feel comfortable? I always felt like I like to run whatever I was going to do three times. So okay. You could do it the first time and run the course. Second time you do it looking for lines and make all your, your notes. And then the third time you try to run it at a, a faster pace mm -hmm. and hit all your notes and see if you can nail everything. Gotcha. I yeah. felt like that's, if you had the time to do it, yeah. you know, like yeah. that, that would ideal be ideal. scene, that's how it would work. Yeah. At, at yeah. a minimum. And yeah. a lot of these guys are doing it more than that now. But I think if you want to be at the top tier pace, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it takes at this point. And look, not yeah. everybody has the budget to be able to take two weeks off or can even, a, you know, eight days, seven yeah. a week, whatever it is. So well, time is of the essence. Well, and, you know, if you have a ton of experience down here, like, you know, yeah. Heidi or Cameron or, um, you know, mm -hmm. people have been racing down here a lot. I felt like a lot of these races, I could come do one pass, take notes, and I, I already knew it. Yeah. So it's, it, it, that's going to just vary from team to team. Got you. Here's an aerial shot of 247 Trek. Kevin Shields in the pit, placing a tire. Get back on the course here in a second. Yeah, I really want to know what's going on with Ampudia because my tracker has not updated. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think his tracker is not working. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Cause see. Because I, I just got an update right now. We, from what I'm hearing, it's uh, Price, Ampudia, and then you've got Tavo, Luke, <laughs> Polvarde, and hmm. Menzies. So that's your, your top six. Nice. <laughs> good, good, good. Wow. Oh. So when you're out in front, are you getting updates from your team as to who's behind you? I mean, aside from if you can see them in the rear view mirror or something like that, but how are you, how are you, strategizing as you're blasting forward so that goes back to logistics generally this day and age when you have starlinks and sat phones and all the communication options i would like to have somebody back in the u.s that's on a computer that is monitoring the trackers and they're kind of the uh your communication chief, I guess. Gotcha. You know, and so they're monitoring all that and then they're relaying to your chase trucks okay. and your chase trucks are relaying oh, yeah. back to them. So then they're calculating adjusted times yep. um, and then relaying that back to the trucks and to your driver. Gotcha. So you know, ideally when you come through a pit, they're keeping track of everybody in your class and then sending that back to whoever your communication director is. Yeah. And, they're keeping track Trying to of keep that communication times. going. Yeah, and this is really old school, but we always had our pit guys give us time splits. Once we, once we went through any pit, they gave us time splits and we got to hear who was behind us and how many seconds we were off of them. Gotcha. We just saw some really <laughs> deep silt action. Spikes and 
quads going through. Here's Travis Williams in the 277 car truck. Yeah, Not that car. that <laughs> shot of the the bike and the quad. Yeah. That's kind of where it's getting really soft and sandy and, yeah. and silty coming back into San Felipe. Yeah. Back to Brandon Walsh. Some more in-car POV. We thought weather may impact uh, the, the course today, but clearly it hasn't. Looks like we have uh, blue skies for the majority of this whole thing. It's been great. It's like a perfect day in San, San Felipe. Yep. Sitting right on the Sea of Cortez. You've got beautiful temperatures, mm -hmm. beautiful weather. Ideal racing. Wind. And, and they got a little bit of wind, a which bit of wind. that that is a big deal for these races because I've been through this section in, I want to say the 1000 two years ago, mm -hmm. and there was no wind and the, it, it was night. Oh. And the dust was just sitting there. You couldn't see Nothing it all. Nothing you can do. You literally are going <laughs> a quarter of what you, you know, it's 25% of what you normally would Sure. Doing. So I, I did get Back an update Herbs. on from the Hertz okay. on Thor and EJ. Uh -huh. or, and it sounded to me like they actually have McNeil on adjusted. Mm. Okay. So I think McNeil qualified really well. I think Thor and EJ may have been a little bit further back. So according to the tracker, we're showing McNeil first physically, but I think Thor uh, and or EJ may have him on adjusted. So McNeil started first, EJ started second, and Thor started third. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's uh, not much of a gap there. One minute splits or 30 seconds for their class? I think they're one minute. One minute, okay. Mm -hmm. Not much of a gap, but there is a gap. Yeah. A little bit of space. Yeah. And they're physically very close to each other. So, I mean, that's... <laughs> According to the tracker, EJ is a little bit further back, but Thor yeah. and McNeil are, are very close to each other. Neck and neck. That's a you tight race. It's yeah, very sure. tight. It's going to be exciting. And then uh, Bryce Swaim is, is sitting in fourth. He's a little bit off of them, but he's in striking distance. You can see in the back there, the twig that just won't go. And they got twigs up in front still. <laughs> <laughs> No matter how yeah. fast you go, those things are stuck in there. So yeah, I'm gonna say he definitely took it's a something. couple bushes up. Yep. <laughs> I think it was Ampudi. I was watching his Insta feed, and yeah. he was like tree trimming. Ah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he got a, the fastest qualifying time. Yep. Oh, here we go. Brendan, Brendan gone, gone on the toe. 162 is out of commission. That's not the in car that you want to be no, broadcasting. You don't. <laughs> you don't. I wonder what happened. Maybe we'll get an update on that. Hell, oh, there's some more branches from Travis Williams. Looks like he, uh, so, got a so souvenir. through Race Mile 206, which is Borrego, mm -hmm. Cameron was about 16 minutes off of Tavo and yeah, about to say 25 off of him. Whoa, now you got some more debris. But he started <laughs> a ways back. So yeah, Cameron's doing pretty good in the two wheel driver. He started 16th, so. 16 minutes. Mm -hmm, 16 minutes off the leader or the first position. In mm -hmm. so, yeah, so he might be nine, 10 minutes down or so through mm -hmm. Borrego on adjusted time. It's not too bad. Too shabby? No, no. I, and, uh, I mean, and at the pace that Impudia and Price have been throwing down, that's and a <laughs> two-wheel drive. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Two-wheel drive making their <laughs> their their mark. <laughs> Froze up there for a second, but we're back in it. Some cool in-car that you saw. Co-driver taking it for the team and got a souvenir branch under the arm, making sure that does not impede the driver. Those co-drivers are so valuable for mm -hmm. every reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, I mean, they're, they give you a rag to wipe your shield. 
They're calling they've out directions. Snacks. They've got snacks, water. <laughs> yeah. you know, Fixing tires, you name things. it. Yeah. yeah. Keeping you calm sometimes. Sure, talking you off the ledge. <laughs> exactly. It happens. So just waiting for some Baja action to rip through here. But again, beautiful day. I think where the co-driver comes in sometimes too is when you're you start when you close up on another competitor you start getting aggressive yeah. and so sometimes your co-driver's gotta be like hey man like calm down a little bit yeah. sure yeah. take your time the more knowledgeable you are about that particular area of the course the better because you know when you should try to make the pass or not make the pass if you've done your homework mm -hmm. i think that is the 262. 262 truck in for a quick pit, hopefully. I'm going to say they're so, part of the Tisco team. McMogger. Getting that all checked out. You can see that wind on that flag up there. It's it's blowing hard there. So he's Australian sure. as well. Another Aussie in familiar terrain. And off they go. Back in it. go. <laughs> a little POV of some fuel action. It's just a great moment to, to uh, tip our hats to, to the crew for all the teams and how hard that they work and how much they sacrifice and you know it really is a it's, its own family community out there and as you go to more ro remote locations um, having dinner with Bud Brutzman last night telling some tales about how when he would compete in the in the thousand, how he'd do anything just for a cup of coffee, right? Just a warm <laughs> cup of coffee. When you're out there and just freezing, and, and uh, how much that means to you. And and when you got those crew members that go above and beyond and run from tent to tent, or from you know, do you guys got anything? It is a, it is a close knit family out there. So um, you'd be surprised. From fuel to coffee, yeah, everything makes a difference. And. Uh, it most certainly takes a village. These guys it's so, look like they're uh, more in a finish the race mode. Okay. And, uh, oh, they're not moving. Little splash. Super fast. Yep. Quick as they can. Lots of helping hands coming in. Let's get a little bit of that fuel off. And get Brandon back out on the course. Looks like they got the all go. Oh, and there we go. Losing a line. That's a great sound. messages that say this is the best coverage that SCORE has ah. had for the race. So I think people are loving the footage and yes. that star stream. And we salute the entire yes. SCORE just, production team. He's just starting to go north here. A bit of Solana. This is that Because the lead area. TVs are coming down into the south part of it. This is that area that we are talking about earlier when we saw uh, that bug trying to avoid all the different ruts. They were, they were in the wake of a lot of dust. It, so you can see how the, yeah. his car is kind of wallowing yeah. and swapping Hitting side to side. Mm -hmm. It's because the track width of the UTV is narrower than the trucks. Mm -hmm. So you end up pinballing in the ruts. Sure. And when you're going at speeds like this, it, it gets really sketchy sometimes. I'm sure. So Wes, how fast do you go in a UTV on a dry lake bed like this? They're going to be 95 to 105 probably. Yeah, that's still pretty good. So, I mean, some of them maybe 110. Mm. Yeah. I'd say that on the harder packed Diablo lake bed, they'll be probably getting close to 110. Okay. Yeah. 
<clears throat> that was my speed in a unlimited mid-size truck. Yeah. So, and they pretty they run pretty similar in times. Actually, yeah. those UTVs have gotten so fast. Yeah, where the yeah. UTVs are fast is corner to corner in your 30 to 80 mile an hour range. They're just quick, all wheel drive, and in the technical stuff, they're really nimble. Mm -hmm. So like a, a Mike's Loop type area, you know, I, a UTV is probably one of the fastest vehicles through there. Mm. Yeah. You know, um, That's interesting. Something more wide open like this, you, you just don't have the horsepower. Mm -hmm. Great shot of some in-car with Travis William. Looking like... I see he's on Laguna Salada. Okay. Just getting word that a quad has gone through the finish line. We got Rat down there. This is our first quad, or so. do you know? Looks like it's I, 39A. I, yeah, I was following the quads a little bit because mm -hmm. there's a couple of guys that I used to race with that are really fast, and I didn't see them with the lead group. So that's uh, Sergio Jimenez. Sergio Jimenez, yep. And it, it's looking like he took first overall in the, in the quad class, and that, that's really surprising to me because – you had the 18A with Roberto Villalobos, Francisco Vera, and Adolfo Ariano. That's a pretty stacked team. Yep. I thought those guys were going to be right there. Mm -hmm. And then Javier Robles, which is a multi-time champion in the class. And he was on the 10A with uh, the uh, Aliala, mm -hmm. or Ayala. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious what happened. And then also uh, Felipe Velez who he had a good team. Mm -hmm. So uh, these guys must have had a good race. Yeah, they, apparently so. Going up against some pretty fast riders. And when I was tracking them, they were pretty high up overall too. Right. Yeah, I might say they were really for, sure, for sure uh, top 10 mm -hmm. out of the bikes and quads and uh, overall. Mm -hmm. And maybe fairly close to top five. Cool. You can tell by the smile on his face that he's having a good day. Yeah. That's so always okay, good to see. So, so this is Thor. Borrego where the jump is. So he would have just gone over the jump and he's crossing Highway 3. That's the road that goes from Ensenada to uh, San Felipe. Gotcha. So he's crossing the yeah. highway there and then uh, he's going to go into a wash. More in car. I don't know how that co driver still has got his phone in his hand. <laughs> but calm, cool, and collected, apparently. Just trying to keep the wife happy, you know, let her know how things are going from still alive. Of the course. Still alive. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Smooth so sailing. All right, back to Hearst. Yeah, so you get a lot of spectators here. So uh, people from Ensenada that want to watch the race, this is, this the, is the, the closest area for them okay. to come over. Okay, okay. Hoodless Herbst. And I laugh that everyone calls this race, like, I guess it, it is fast, but you can see how whooped out this is. Right, right. And yeah. so in, in anything other than like a trophy truck or a class one or something, you're getting beat up. Which vehicle, which <laughs> vehicle do you think is I the know. most punishing on your, on your body? And that, that, that's tough. You know, I think a lot of people would default to class 11. Yeah. Uh -huh. But you don't go as fast. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like you can only get so beat up when you're going at that speed. Yeah. So I, I don't know. What do you think, Heidi? I was thinking something like a class 9 or a fully stock truck class. Mm. You know where I think you probably get beat up is like a 1 2 1600. Yeah. Because those guys go fast and yeah. they don't have a lot of wheel travel. They're pounding. But they're bombing through stuff. And every yeah. time I see them, they're just bouncing off of everything. Yeah. So I, I think that might be what? That's probably our best guess so far. <laughs> I'm going to say a quad, a, a quad would be the worst. Yeah. yeah. A dirt bike second. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then maybe like a, a 1 2 1600. Because yeah. you're, yeah. you're fast. You're just fast enough to 
really beat yourself up. That's mm. <laughs> probably true. I just saw Justin Davis. Second to go, and now back to Thor Herbst. So here we are at race mile 283 with our leader in the trophy trucks, Toby Price. Okay. Aussie screaming through. I mean, he's almost to the finish. He's got to be. Yeah. Just I mean, this, this is the there. silt in the finish right here. I mean, we're five minutes Do from we, the finish. We think this, it's like allegedly, let's put it that way. I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves. We think this could be Toby. But I'm curious, do we have an update on Empudia? Well, I'm going to tell you in one second here. If it's a, yeah, we'll know. If it's a quad lock with big Can-Am there, that's not. Who is this? That's Empudia. That's Empudia. It is. It's the 10 truck. So, so if this wow. is our, so Empudia came back, did he overtake well, I mean, We don't know. I, we don't know from the trackers, but okay, he's through the silt. He's going through. There's kind of like a, a dump here and it's, it's sandy. And then he's in San Felipe. I mean, he's literally on the outskirts of town. I think he's about three miles from the finish. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was saying. He's, he's you know, close. less than he's 10 close. minutes from, from the finish line. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, this is the part where you start to feel the excitement. Yeah. Like you almost have to control yourself because. I was just going to say, yeah. Do you, how do you find the balance okay. in that? Okay. What is this now? Is I, this still Alan? I thought that might be Price, but I think that's in Pudia still. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's just a different shot. So if we go to our tracker, if that is Alan, do we see where is Price in relation to where Alan's at? If we can get down here a little closer. Okay. Got the 10 truck followed by. Huh. How about you? But I don't even have Price on here. Yeah, well, I was Price showing him not updated. moving. And then, but earlier we were showing him Pudia not moving. So I, I don't really. Yeah. Price hasn't updated for me in about 20 minutes. For a minute, but yeah, I mean, we, I, look, I mean look at this. Look how close I, Alan is. I think that. Alan is probably our leader okay. because the no, drone's one, focused on him. Yep. One hundred percent, just because yeah. that's these are the shots we're getting, and you so understand the location. I, I think probably Ampudia has been leading this whole thing. The question here is: Is Toby in his dust? The fact that we haven't seen a shot from the drone near the silt, yeah, showing Toby. I'm thinking maybe you know he's not, and if he's not, then Ampudia's got this thing. You know, and he got wow. second last year. <clears throat> so to go second last year and then first here, if, yeah. if he ends up getting first, that's uh, you know, he, he's on a roll down in San Felipe. Well, I have goosebumps because I'm thinking he qualified first. He started first. There's a chance that he actually hasn't seen any dust. So Correct. I'm getting an update Correct. now that Toby Price has broken down. Man, that's that's rough. Oh. At this point. This far, this far in, we don't know exactly where, but that is the word on the course right now that Toby Price might be out. And so going back to what we discussed earlier, you know, is to Alan's team letting him know, look, you know, Toby's down. So <laughs> don't risk anything right now. Just finish the yeah, race. I, You're fine. Just, you know. If, if they know that, I would for sure convey that to him because yeah. he's got a big lead. Yeah. <coughs> like, look at this. He, like he he's not gonna win the race here. The, all he could do he is lose, lose the race. Correct. So you know, correct. I'm gonna. Try it's to just finish. be smart. He get it to the finish. Here he comes. Whoa. You got everybody cheering you. It doesn't look like he's holding back. It doesn't. No. <laughs> he does not. I don't think I, Alan holds I, back. There is, that's not in the dictionary. <laughs> I also him. wonder that. He averaged the, the passenger side net was down. I wonder like if they had had huh? to hop out and do a um, a tire change or something huh. cuz yeah. or maybe the latch broke. Sheesh. Yeah. So last year in a second place finish, they averaged 61.63 .63 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. I'm very curious to know how fast how he, he is well, this year. Yeah. I can tell you here in a second. Oh, and cool. here's the crazy thing, you know, uh, we're at about one o'clock right now. I mean, these guys are blasting. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're looking at four hours. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. 
Because he was first yeah. off the line around he's 9 He's first off the line, so he left at 9. Four. It's 101 right now. Yeah. yeah so, yeah. and he's four hours. Cameron called so. it. He told me it'd be a four hour race. He, he did. He did. <laughs> yeah. Cameron it's a said 71 that. mile an hour That's average. That's nuts. That's the record. How much? 71. Oh, wow. An average? Did you? I, I, if I'm not. <laughs> did you do that? Okay, so 285. <laughs> 285 divided by four, correct? Uh huh. Two, yeah. Four hours. 71.2, so wow. 71 and a quarter wow. average miles per hour for Alan and Pudia. So that so. is nuts. That says, I, I want to make sure I'm doing my math right, but so yeah. nine, so 10, <laughs> 11, 12, one, that's four hours, right? Correct. Yeah. So 285 He's not mile across race. yet, but yeah. uh, pretty dang close. And, uh, and if, any mathematicians out there want to help us out? If that's what they just it. averaged, that's an insane. Yeah, that is insane. And, but, and to really, you know, and the truck's still intact, nothing really crazy. Maybe a tire change here and there, but yeah, I mean. But that's we're a, pretty sure that he had a completely clean air race. That's what we're saying. The entire duration. Well, you know, the oh my gosh, here we go. Oh, look. Here's yeah. Alan crossing over. Yep. First to finish. So first. You know, the Ampudia family is a that. nice family. Dang. Out of yeah, Ensenada, you're right. There's the net, nets down on that side, Wes. We're going to go down to Rat in just a moment. Wow. Flag goes across the hood. Here we go, Monster down to Rat. Energy Papa's and Beer truck, Mr. Alan Ampudia. Going to be popping some champagne here in a moment. We'll let him take his helmet off. He's quick. He's fast at anything he does. Yeah, we'll get him in here. We got his dad, Rodrigo Sr. and and Aaron over here. He's all, let's go. This is what it's all about. Felicidades, chingón. Bien Correra, numero uno, otra vez. Ah, feels good. Se siente bien volver a ganar. Este. Wow, qué día tan increíble, ningún, na, ningún problema, más que al último una, una llanta empezó a bajar y decidimos arriesgarnos y irnos así ponchados por las últimas 20 millas. Y ah, muy feliz de estar aquí, gracias a todo el equipo, se la rifaron preparando pollo, el, el trophy, todos los del taller, los de recorrido, eh, Kyle, un animal de copiloto, todas las notas, mis papás, mis hermanos, ah, todos los aficionados, muchas gracias, todos los patrocinadores, ¡vamos! Ay, güey, está, está bien. Tú, tú, campeón la baja mil es primera vez, campeón la, la 250. Está bien, tú listo. Sí, vamos a festejar ahora sí. <laughs> you want to thank any sponsors? Uh, claro que sí, Monster Energy, Toyota Tires, King Shocks, La Familia Presenta, California Fuels, everyone that backs us up, Divine Flavor, everyone, thank you so much. Y esta se queda aquí en México, cabrones. Numero uno. All right, you don't have much more to say. Well, you pretty much thanked everybody. Well, great work. I know. How was it out there? Pretty smooth running. You qualified first, so you just kept it out in front the whole way. Sí, el, el, el plan de la, de la carrera era mantenernos sin parar el carro. Este, y pues así lo hicimos, cuidando el carro en donde no teníamos que castigarlo mucho. Y, y al último sabemos que Borrego traíamos a Toby a un minuto y pues ahí sí le empezamos a pisar y, y aquí estamos. Felicidades por muy bueno correr. Muchas gracias. Okay. Congrats to him. Unbelievable. His first win down here in San Felipe. He's won the Baja 1000 before. Now it's San Felipe. He's, he's going for that championship this year. I know he's going to be ready to go. Hey, watch the TV screen, though, please. Making good use of that champagne. Who needs a drink and when you could spray the fans? Lots of fans out here. Congratulations to Alan and Pudia. 
soloed this bad boy, came through first off the line, top qualifier yesterday in the Method Wheels qualifying, and bringing it home. Another stellar finish. All smiles for the Ampudia team. Congratulations to them. You know, lots of hugs, lots of celebration. You know, and, and we were talking about the, the different trophy truck platforms. And so that's the mid engine right there. Mm -hmm. So obviously Ampudia is kind of proving that that mid engine might be the way to go. Could be, yeah. Yeah, the Ampudia family is just such a nice family. Cameron and I love them. It's mm -hmm. nice to see you know, it's nice to see their excitement. It's nice yeah. to see their win, celebrate with them a little bit. And I was surprised to see Kyle Kraft as his co-driver. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Well, okay. on the left, we may have the battle right yeah, now we, between Bolzardi and, and, and Luke. Yeah, it looks like you got two tracks of dust there. Yep. And I believe that's Luke McMillan and, and Chris. Chris Pulvarde. Yep. And I'm going to say Pulvarde is going to have him on adjusted here. So Pulvarde mm. may be putting a brand new truck <laughs> in second yeah, place. That's incredible. Because, and then Bryce is the dust in the background there. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. No footer off the having, jump. Yeah, having, <laughs> having a little fun, why not? <laughs> Bring that's us rad. back to the freestyle days. Yeah, yeah. love that. But yeah, I mean, going back to I didn't know, what? I didn't know Pastrano was racing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, going back to, you know, what an accomplishment for Chris Polvardi. Well, I mean, let's, let's make sure. Let's no, make but sure. I mean, but, but, but look, just even the fact that where he's at right now, I mean, started in fifth. Yeah. And he's potentially, you know, he's battling for second. We don't know yet, but I mean, coming in with a new truck, we I talked mean, about how, Justin How long has Impudia been sitting at the line? Yeah. Yeah. Because Impudia was been first. Minutes. It's been minutes. And if it was five, <laughs> that's five minutes. Heidi, you were saying earlier there was somewhere between a 12 to 13 minute gap. Yeah, at race mile 270, um, Luke was behind Allen. Okay. And what do we got here. And then Polvardi this is, this was behind could be Luke. Luke right here. Yeah, this is probably Luke. Look yeah. at that silk. That's Luke. All right. Okay. So, so we got Luke. So they were only a minute apart at race mile 270. Okay. They're probably really close. Okay. And I wouldn't be surprised if pulvardi has been trying to push Luke. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, you can see how dusty Jesus. it is right here. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, but look how fast it clears. Yeah, that, that wind, wind just is pushes it right out of the way. Really playing in their favor. That's a great shot. You do see though how long that that dust lingers. Mm -hmm. You know it's there. So what I want to see here is where is the other dust cloud? Sure. Because that's, that's Luke that's right there. That's going to tell us where Chris and, is. And in that the previous drone shot that we saw, it looked like there was dust fairly close. Okay, so this here is probably going to be Pulvardi right here. Yep. Yep, that's Chris. All right, 94 truck coming through. So, so, so we got time-wise between. He, he, he Chris needs to be and, within a minute. Yeah, and that's gonna be really, really close. Yeah, Chris started fifth. Luke started fourth. Yeah, I, that and, is gonna be close. Oof, I didn't time just, it, but I'm gonna. Oh, man, for adjusted time, I mean, I, I think 60 Luke, second I think intervals Luke off might the line have from them. start. Yeah. You just going know. off my gut of how long it's been just so watching knowing this. that knowing that how, how close they are it, it, you know to your point earlier when it comes to the trophy trucks there's no hold bars and we know how aggressive chris we know how aggressive luke can be they're both going for it and they have to know at this point because they're so close well and then that, bryce is right there and now there's too. bryce they, they've got to know that uh the adjusted time is going to make a ma massive difference in this outcome you can be physically but, across the line but but bryce started ahead of both these guys so i yeah. mean he's out of this um I, I think you know the the crews of both pulvardi mm -hmm. and and luke mcmillan have got to be in their ear just saying throw it down yes yes you know like you gotta you Everything guys you are got. you're neck and neck for, and this is going to be first or second mm -hmm. you got you got to make if there's anything you got left 
throw it down right it. now. <laughs> Find it. Without yeah. putting it on the lid. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do that part. Yeah. So, I mean, this Exciting. is a, a great race. Yeah. You've got, you know, Impudia, I mean, wire to wire, that's pretty badass. For sure, for sure. And then, you know, but we've got three more trucks coming in neck and neck. Mm hmm. We've really had ideal race conditions as well. And, see and, all and this is Pulvarti's, down there. This is Pulvarti's first race in this new Mason truck. Yeah. So I mean, this is the latest, greatest Mason truck that they've put out. Yeah. Um, so that's making a statement. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You, you know, know uh, for the maiden voyage in that thing, mm -hmm. that's pretty awesome to mm -hmm. go out and. Yo, I think he's he's gonna be on the podium. It's just gonna, gonna be a matter of if, is he first or second. Sure. So, so this is Luke. So I hit the timer at the bridge. Let's see if you we did. can okay. figure out yeah. the split. Okay, here we go. Heidi's I was right on about it. to do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is sick drone footage here. Loving this. It's packed down there. Look at all. I mean, yeah. giving a great show here for these spectators. Great yeah. way to kick off the 2024 season. Yeah, you get so many people that come down from the U.S. for this race, mm -hmm. and then Mexicali, and then the people yeah. that live in San Felipe. So you have a ton of spectators yeah, for this. That's event. a that's a great point. I and mean, we've got people from different countries all over there, and we really want to keep you know brought, getting as biggest audience as we can. So we want to acknowledge all those different countries that come here and compete, and we hope that uh, their loved ones and family and friends are tuning in and along for the ride, just just the same way we are. My, my uh, gut just wrenches for Toby Price. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. He had such a good run. He was doing amazing. He's just, he's had some horrible luck down here. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, yeah. and it's that's the thing with racing in Baja is that hooks you is, you know, that potential's there <laughs> and it's, yeah. so it just keeps you coming back. And I mean, absolutely. I, I, you know, he'll, he'll get one of these at some point. For he's sure. got the talent. Mm -hmm. It's just, here we go. Uh, See, we can where, get an idea. Where is the... In relation to that, who do we have coming through Okay, here? so here's the, so bridge. the bridge. So get ready to hit right, your you timer. Ready? Not quite so yet. That's, we're saying that's Pulvardi? This is... No. Yeah? I can't see. Yeah, I, so I think Luke's got this. Yeah, I think so too. That's Menzies. Yeah, that's Menzies. So, so oh. okay, so Pulvardi would have come through already. They yeah, didn't, didn't show it, so... We didn't get that, but approximately on your timer, Menzies coming through at about 140-ish. Yeah, 138. Right? 138 was when Menzies came Okay, so, so Pulvardi is going to be right there. Oh. Yeah. This is, this is going to come down on the wire. This Loving is exciting. This. Yeah. This is what's so cool about this racing. Absolutely. Bryce ain't holding back either. No. <laughs> no way. I mean, yeah, but I mean, he's, honestly, he's getting fourth no matter what. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm curious to see what happened or hear what happened to him where he dropped back. Mm -hmm. Me too. So get the story on that at some point. Yeah, hopefully we'll get to hear on the finish line. Yeah. Ooh, what was that? I don't know, but he just <laughs> majorly slowed down for a second there. <laughs> well, he's going into the speed zone, but it, it almost looked like he hit like yeah. a puddle or something. Yeah. Hit something. Yes, I mean, once you're in the speed zone, your, you your race is over basically for you. you so here's Tavo. Tavo bombing through. Yeah, he's, Almost he's home. not that far back either. Nope. So I mean, that's our top tight. five. That's tight, tight race. I wish we could time the finish line. Yeah, I had my stopwatch ready. Yeah. There, we didn't get a shot of it, so. Find out soon enough. <clears throat> and you know, again, looking at some of the other classes here, you've got um, Gus in the Trophy Legend. They're actually getting pretty close to coming into the finish here, so they're not too far out. Bike still cruising through. Yeah. Yeah, and isn't this race, didn't they have, like, the most Ironman bike riders? Yes, I'd we be... haven't really touched about on, on the Ironman aspect of this. I know. I would love to hear the results. Yep. Hopefully we'll get updates and on that and their experience. That is no small And of a feat. race that I was going to Ironman, 
I don't feel like San Felipe is the one I would want to do it. Mm -hmm. Same. You know, it, uh, uh, I, I think I would rather do a Baja 500 over a San Felipe mm -hmm. 250, <laughs> but mm. call me crazy. Yeah, I would too. You know, at least the 500, you get my aches. And it's just not so whooped out. This right. race, you're doing yeah. 285 miles of whoops. Punishing. Yeah, yeah. Punishing. All right, so starting to get a timers shot anything. of the city here, the town. Br Brock Dickerson is doing pretty well. He's top 10, I think. Mm -hmm. And again, he has a two wheel drive vehicle. So that's impressive. Um, brand new truck to him, mm -hmm. six speed Mason, two wheel drive. There's not very many of those out there. He, he might have the only one hmm. with this sequential transmission. Update on trophy spec, Thor Herps looks like he's pulling away. If, the, if this tracker is correct, mm -hmm. I'm Whoa. gonna have Thor followed by EJ Herps and then Jason McNeil. So you may have a, a Herps one too. Hmm. in trophy spec they've been really I, I feel like they're becoming dominant in the trophy spec class there with the, mm -hmm. their two kids yeah Tavo ripping through not holding back at all fish tailing <laughs> <laughs> giving the crowd something to scream about <laughs> so he's going to be fifth physical and I'm thinking fifth adjusted as well mm-hmm Yeah, I think for the fans, it's really awesome to see someone from your own country mm -hmm. dominating the sport, yeah. you know? Well, and Pudig, that's, that's, that's a win right. for Baja California. For yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. It's an uh, Ensenada boy. Yeah, absolutely. You know that... Do you want me to reset the mic on Brandon? It's in all the way. I don't have that. I don't have it in here. Cameron's through 270. Any changes? They lose the finish line feed. doing <laughs> his own POV I want to clean off the lens for social media feed So again, more in-car here with Brandon Walsh. And in a little bit, we'll be going down to the finish line and we'll be checking in with Rat, bringing you guys up close with some trophy truck finishers. <laughs> Co-driver could use a little steady cam action. Bouncing around, you do get a sense of just how physically demanding the sport can be. There we go. Oh, 
All right. All right, let's go down to Rat at the finish line. Unleashing the beast. Look at this second across the line. Senor Luke. Oh, right where he needs to be, up in the mix, unofficial right now. Second across the line. Luke, how you feeling, man? You're unleashing the beast. You did it again. Yeah, no, we're here. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we officially stay on the podium. I'm actually very, very surprised we made the podium, if we did. Um, we pushed really hard today. Well, we did and we didn't. Our miles an hour wasn't very good in sections that could have been better, but we were, we were wrestling the truck all day. I mean, it was just... Uh, I don't know what, what part of it. I think a combination of a lot of things, not just one component or one s setting or certain component on the truck took us back, but uh, we absolutely wrestled this thing around the course. It was uh, it was brutal, but we're here. I'm, I'm happy to have finished. Super fast race, high, high speed, and uh, you know, uh, super stoked on, the, on the, uh, the people that come down and support us, the sponsors, uh, Monster Energy, Beast, beast unleashed i guess is what i'm supposed to say <laughs> so uh now the beast you know they they jumped on board and they've been very supportive of us on what we want to do we want to come out here and win baja races and uh we fell short of that today but we uh we pushed as hard as we could and, and here we are hopefully on the podium but uh you know all the all the crew guys guys at the shop they work real hard and uh you know it's not easy working for me i push and push and push them um i wake up every day ready to win the next race so uh yeah you know they do a great job at the shop uh, my family, my wife, my baby for supporting me. They, they really want me to keep going doing this. <laughs> I don't know if I do. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, my, my mom, my dad, my brother, my cousin, we're all, we're all working together again. That's fun. Um, but we, you know, we pushed hard today, and, and we're here on the podium. So That's what it's all about. And right now it's unofficial. You know how that goes. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I'm sure Alan Rayton a clean race. Uh, he was just marching away from us all day. I mean, he had—he must have had a truck on point. Good for him. Congrats to Alan. Good friends with Alan. Like Alan a lot. Uh, good family. Like to see them do well. So um, that's always good. Congrats to them. And uh, you know, we'll be back. We'll be back. I'm, uh, you know, 500, 400. But really, after this race, my eyes are on the Baja 1000. I love San Felipe and I love the Baja 1000. It's all, it's all about pushing to the end of the year for sure. Yeah, I know. We always talk about that. You're like, yeah, you just you just won the Baja 500. You're like, well, it's all about the Baja 1000 for sure. So, and not, so, so what happened with the truck? Was it, it did you have to have, fix anything, or it's just some weird things going on? I have to get back to that. Uh, we were just wrestling it all day. It just wasn't quite um, holding the road, and I wasn't quite able to drive it as fast as I needed to. Um, oops, I don't know. <laughs> supposed to have a special hat on um so anyway we uh we just couldn't hold the road very good today but it's all good it's all good we'll learn from it and come back stronger well you held it good on the podium unofficially it can't beat that and i i know you think some of your sponsors anybody else you want to give a shout out to you real quick no uh, i mean all the sponsors monster energy bf good retires method race wheels uh my family my my co-writer jason duncan with sdg suspension does an amazing job Today he was just on point as a co-writer, and uh, you know I couldn't ask for a better support system behind in this. Um, like I said, I think I think after this race I just look back and I think I think mostly about my family and uh, my close friends, my very few close friends that uh, support me and and make me want to you know put me in a good mood to come out and do this. You know that they make me want to come out and do this. So uh, yeah, my family, my family and the and the new sponsors, but. Uh, big shout out to my wife, and uh, I just can't wait to see my baby and uh, head home. Yeah. Is she down here? Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping. I'm hoping she's uh, right down here. So we'll see. All right. I love it. You're just excited to see them. You're a class act, bro. You know. You know. You're like, you're you're one of the favorites for sure. I mean, in, in my book, anyhow. So good job. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a great year. Congrats on a second unofficial place finish here today. Right on. Thank you.
it, he's got the topo map of Baja on the side of this number one 2023 champ, Mr. Bryce Menzies. Right now, making it across third, man. You got to be stoked. I mean, you're on the you're on the box. Last year, you won it though, so not 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 where you want to be, but a good start to the season for sure. Yeah, uh, it started out a little rough. I, I clipped a tree early on, got us a flat, and went about two trucks back. And then 20 miles later, we pitched a serpentine belt, which we've never done. Uh, and it was super hard to get it on, so it put us all the way back, I think, to like eighth or ninth position. And then uh, I just put my head down, and uh, I knew it was going to be attrition, and we just we fought our way all the way back up to third somehow. Um, Orn was doing awesome. We were driving. felt like I was driving qualifying the whole way from race mile, like, once I got past Lofton at like 1.30 to the finish, uh, we were just on the gas. And, and uh, fun run. Course was awesome. So brutal. Uh, but overall, we had a, a, a good day for the outcome that we had. We had a, I got a tire. I earned one. And then we had a stick flat at Morelia. Uh, put us right be- behind Provorti. And that kind of just followed his dust all the way to the finish. So um, overall, awesome day. I'm glad to be back down in Baja. It's been too long. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the fans. We love you guys. We love being down here. Uh, I can't wait for the 500. Yeah, and you know, you talked about that having to drive like qualifying. Back in the day, it was like, okay, we just got to maintain it. And most other classes, it's all about just getting to the finish. You got to just take it easy, get the car there. But now in this class, I mean, driving like you guys drive, it's it's like wide open the whole time. There's no 90% anymore. It's 100% pretty much the full time. Yeah, it was was pretty wild. Uh, And I knew going that fast, everybody's running at a fast pace that I'd start seeing some people drop off. And unfortunately, I saw uh, Walzer pulled off at Borrego, and then Toby was pulled off in the last wash, and then Pavorty, like, literally a mile and a half behind. So uh, unfortunate, but that's what Baja does. Yeah, it it wasn't good to the number one today, but uh, we we made everything that we could out of it from going from uh, eighth or ninth to third. So uh, awesome run. We want to go for another championship, and uh, this is what it takes is getting the truck to the finish line. You did a hell of a job for sure. And I, I know you got a lot of people back in your whole program. I know you got some people to thank. Yeah, first off, uh, just want to thank my wife and my kids. Um, she's been at home for the last six days watching them while I've been down here pre-running and doing the homework. So uh, I love you guys. I miss you. Uh, my dad, my mom, uh, Red Bull, I couldn't do this without them. This is uh, my 14th year with them. Pretty, pretty insane to think about uh, that they've been behind me this whole time. Uh, Toyo Tires, they've been doing a ton of work behind the scenes trying to get these tires really, really good. And for this course, it was, I would say, the rockiest San Felipe course I've ever seen. And, and to only have a one stick flat was unreal. So uh, hats off to them. Fox Shocks, Amsoil. Uh, we were running the lake bed up top at 140. And uh, converter temp was going off. Engine temp was going off. And uh, once we got it cooled down, those thing ran flawless. So thanks to Stan's Oil. Everybody helps me out, man. Uh, awesome day. The fans, I love you guys. And uh, I'll see everyone at the 500. All right, looking forward to it, buddy. Good job. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Right, here is your leaderboard for the score, score trophy trucks. The finish at right now we have Alan Impudia at first, Luke McMillan second, Mr. Menzies in third, and Tavo Vidulsa just coming up here about right to now, talk with Rhett. And we'll go back to Rhett. Number 21, the first Mexican national to ever win a score trophy truck championship. Tavo, he's already got his tecate. How you doing, man? Good race out there. What a battle between you guys. Yeah. Um, it was a fun day, you know, we, we got an early flat and um, it was just battling back and forth and with Luke and Pulvorti and, uh, Br- you know, I guess Bryce kind of snuck up there in the end and, uh, you know, Toby and, and, and number 10 checked out early and, and uh, we were just kind of trying to keep pace, but, you know, it was a great battle with these guys. Unfortunately, I got a double flat at the end here about 30 miles from the finish line um, and Pulvorti, Luke and Bryce got by me and uh, just kind of threw the race away there. But it is what it is. That's racing. I made a boneheaded move um, mistake, and it sucks. But we're here. We're third, fourth, fifth, whatever. We're here. 
Um, so we're happy. Yeah, fourth. Fourth, physically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Physically, yeah. Yeah, on time. You don't know. Where do you start? You started You started pretty, you like top five too, right? I, I started sixth. So we'll see. I mean, I think Bryce might have gotten us by seconds uh, for that. Was it third place? Fourth place? I'm not sure. Yeah, I think yeah, third or fourth. Something. I don't know. Great day, though. I mean, we're here. No mechanical issues. Javi did an amazing job. The boys at the shop. Um, Tony prepped an amazing truck. I mean, it is, I couldn't ask for anything more. It's just sometimes stupidity gets in the way. Sometimes sometimes you earn those flats. Sometimes you earn them, and I got two at the same time. <laughs> two. So both rears? Uh, no, both. Uh, Javi's side, it's his fault. It's his, it was his Yeah, it was his side. It was his fault. He was, Javi, you were supposed to keep an eye on that. <laughs> rock. That's his rock on that side. Well, you had it dialed in the course notes. Yeah, you, maybe you just didn't listen. But anyhow, you, you're a hell of a driver. You, you're right there with the mix. And uh, it's going to be a long season. So wow. looking forward to a great season here and Tuttle have you down here racing. And, to the best yeah, of his ability. To right Two the double flat 30 miles out. And then you see all these guys blasting by you. <laughs> right, I mean. so, so the big story here, we saw Polvardi getting towed. Yeah. I don't. He hasn't come into the finish yet. Nope. So I'm really curious to hear what happened. I heard in the last couple miles, there was some sort of a mechanical problem mm -hmm. and hopefully he gets it across the finish line. But man, that's, that's got I mean, everybody's getting, everybody's getting punched in some so, way. Like everyone's having a phenomenal race and then Baja takes you out. Yeah. You know, it, it, oh. it's really good at doing that. And there's more where that comes from. We're going to do a quick commercial break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more San Felipe 250 right after this. The ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new adventure ready Bronco Sport. any other way. If Amsoil products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to Amsoil protection today and get fast free shipping from Amsoil.com. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside.
Welcome back to King Shock San Felipe 250. Here we are at race mile 283. <laughs> Look at that, just trying to navigate that silt. With a truck coming <laughs> just barreling coming down. down on us. <laughs> yep, never a dull moment. Oh, his legs were I flying off that think bike. You yes, just they want were. to pull over out of the way at this if point. He's aware of what's going on. I mean, oh. people are I mean, waiting to, to, that. to get yeah. out of the way. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> Look at the gap. Yeah getting smaller yeah, is that uh is that the one out no yeah yeah is it is that yeah, uh, gus? Gus, gus and gus. rj yeah. all righty well when we left you we saw tavo now we have his pop coming through okay breaking news breaking news ladies <laughs> and gentlemen so, um what you got is that uh, paul Varney, uh broken drive shaft really oh, yeah. wow. so, so i think because it looked like he was able to still limp it um, Will he probably, be able to it, finish it, though? Well, it, it's really soft and sandy there, so he probably had to get towed through it. Mm -hmm. um, maybe yeah. he lost rear wheel drive and it was only able to pull with the front, so it couldn't, you know, mm -hmm. much. Well, either right. way, I think he only had two wheel drive and so he had to get towed through, and then mm -hmm. I think he's made it to the finish now. But, you know, we were talking, he and Luke were neck and neck. Mm -hmm. And we're like, you gotta throw it down. You gotta throw it down. I just wonder if he threw it down a little too hard. Too much. Absolutely. That's a tough break for Christopher. That's a heartbreaker. That is. You know, I, I mean, I don't know which is worse, Toby or, uh, or that. I'm gonna say Toby just cause he, I don't, it looks like he might not finish. Yeah. And, and he was battling for the lead, but. Yeah. To start off your season difference. with the DNF is really rough. That is, well, that, it's hard. I mean, you're out of the championship. You're like, out of the points. You know, yep, so. exactly. You, you mm. always want to but, finish no matter you know, what. For, for Polvari. Okay, here we go. So here's our trophy truck spec at checkpoint two. Herbst in first place, followed by Beal. Then we've got the other Herbst in third, 263 truck, followed by Davis in fourth, McNeil in fifth, Swaim in sixth, Hancock seventh, Creel in eighth, Yurtez in ninth and Swanson in 10th. Those are your top 10 spec trucks for trophy at checkpoint two. And in physical, you've got Thor is, is physically way out ahead of them. But then Justin Davis, EJ, and McNeil are all pretty close. And that's where they sit yeah. uh, physically. Although it just changed now that I got, uh, no, I, I think that's where they still are. So it looks like uh, EJ is is right behind Justin Davis. And then for Beal to be sitting there on adjusted, he must have started pretty far back because he's a little ways back in about two more physical positions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we are going to head back down to the finish line as we toss down to Rat and see what's going on down there. Rad, if you can, take it away. All oh, beef, number 41, Justin Lofton. What's happening? Nothing but styles and smiles. How you doing, brother? Yeah, I'm, uh, we made it here to the finish line at San Felipe 250. Got a cold Ducati in my hand. Can't complain. I know I got steaks waiting for me back at the house. <laughs> Let the games begin, but tell me about your day out there. How'd it go? I, it was a, it was a fairly decent day. Uh, you know, we started a little farther back than I had hoped, and um, we just kind of drove around the race course and drove at a very fast pace. It was an incredibly fast race. Uh, Jack is uh, Jack Turpin, my new navigator. We had a little bit to learn together, kind of get in sync. Uh, first trophy truck race ever, so congratulations to Jack making it through. And uh, so yeah, it's a timing. We you know we pre run in, in old race trucks. We go so fast, but then you get in here and we're going 40 miles an hour faster. So absolutely incredible, um, just uh, just an incredible San Felipe 250. And, and the fastest one ever. I mean, it was crazy. The, we're, you guys were already coming in. We're like, God, that was insane. You guys were averaging like 70 miles an hour. Yeah, it's uh, when you go 20 miles across the lake bed and you kind of at 132 miles an hour, uh, time goes by real fast. So, no, it's uh, it was it was a really good layout. I was uh, you know, I kind of questioned it when we pre-ran. I was like, ah, there wasn't. You know, a lot of effort put into into the course marking, and then but it made for an amazing race, and uh, and and I do not accept the motorcycle challenge. Those guys can have it. 
they're the they're the toughest dudes out here. We might be the fastest ones, but they're the toughest ones. Uh, incredible uh, respect for those guys. That good good call on that for sure. It's a whole different animal. Well, I know this all beef truck. You got a lot of people back in this ride. You want to thank anybody? Yeah, we uh, we put together a hell of a crew uh, to come down. We we got uh, I think 19 people here. So that's a big that's a big crew for me when we race the Baja 1000 with nine. Um, but yeah, big thanks to Jack and uh, Fox, BF Goodrich, uh, Method Race Wills, of course, all beef, Danzio, Mason, uh, just everyone that helps out with the truck. And, um, you know, big, big uh, shout out to my wife and son, Liam, there in Houston. He's racing go-karts right now. So uh, it's, a, it's a little weird not being there and, and him not being here, but we look forward to the Baja 500 together. Yeah, that's what it is. Hey, you started this thing not not far from the tree for sure. So he's racing go karts today. What does he race? Yeah, we're uh, he's racing in the Texas uh, Sprint Racing Series with Alan Rudolph and jo uh, Josh Huff Motorsports. It's just a little Honda 50cc good uh, kid kart. So getting him started young. Uh, this is second race of the season. He's running fourth in points right now. So hopefully he has a good uh, today and tomorrow. And uh, look forward to seeing him on Monday. Yeah, in a few years you'll be needing to get a second truck, or maybe maybe he'll jump in with you. Uh, definitely. I definitely we got enough trucks sitting back home. We can we can put them in something. But uh, no, it, his plan is uh, definitely to take my seat at some point. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to it. And a uh, big thanks to Steve Oligas and Team Ford and Jack and Mike. We had an amazing time pre running together and uh, definitely helped out and uh, hope they're having a solid race. Uh, good deal. Great job today, man. Looking forward to a fun year with you. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we'll see everyone at the Baja 5. Looks like we lost uh, audio there for a minute there on Justin Lofton, but congratulations to him and his ho whole team. And sounds like there could be another generational opportunity for the son taking the, uh, the wheel at some point. So like yeah. father like son, you never know, but uh, good stuff. So I did get an update on Pulvarde. Oh yes. Uh, it, it was a rear drive shaft. Okay. So he was driving just with front wheel drive mm -hmm. which i think is why we saw him getting towed because it is really sandy and silty there mm -hmm. and he probably just couldn't get through it yeah so um but to that point he having... should still finish yes yeah yeah i i would think he's in line probably to go on the podium okay now. cool it looked like he was up and going and so you know he'll get finish points he'll salvage um a, a pretty good positions to still stay in the the points standings mm -hmm. and, and then you know, the to be in the hunt yep at least for a championship but it, it's still disappointing well this is unofficial oh, ladies wow. and gentlemen real quick but we have got the 16 truck cameron Steele in third now again Impunia yeah. in t in first followed by mcmillan and cameron Steele in third then we got menzies followed by tavo in fifth dan mcmillan in sixth justin lofton and chris pulvati in eighth well, well, well. I think we may have to check in with uh, McCachron at some point and see. I was just going to I'm literally looking right now to see where Rob is. Oh, yeah. We're going to go to Rat in just a minute. Rat, go ahead. The dry lake bed. That's where you, that's where you get to wipe your visor and, and take a sigh. But, man, what a day. Uh, I don't know what's real or not, but I'm, I'm hearing third overall possibly. Uh, whatever it is, I just wanted to thank God for keeping us safe. Thank Cody for a great navigating job. We've been racing uh, trophy trucks for 20 years, and it's always awesome to be in the mix uh, i want to tell my wife who's been hosting today on yeah. the score show that i love her and my babies that i love them Kay and grace it's Kay's birthday next week so we were kind of hoping to win this one so we could dedicate it to her but i uh, just want to say i love you girls and uh, i know cody wants to say he loves his boys uh, nico and luca and his wife nikki and they put up with a lot to have us out here acting like heathens all day long smashing bumps <laughs> We passed like 12 cars live on the race course, or maybe 10, but it was absolutely insane. Like, you don't get to do that very often, but San Felipe gives you all these different lines and, and just all these intersecting lines is unfreaking believable. It's so much fun. Maybe we should start, maybe we should qualify like dog crap more often. And that, <laughs> is that more fun to pass everybody? It kind of sucked at the beginning because we kind of had to wait our turn to get moving through some of the cars. But we had a steering uh, box issue at uh, qualifying, uh, which was a bummer because that's not usual for us. And it's uh, actually related to the Baja 1000. We were a little pissed off after we blew up an engine running in the front pack at the 1000. And we decided we weren't going to prep the truck. We didn't do anything but put a new engine in it and brought it back here. And we found out later that 
if you flat tow it for 20 miles and wrestle the steering wheel that you ruin the torsion in the steering thank god it went out in qualifying and not during the race yeah i heard you had an that's what it was yeah i heard you had something go down so yeah figured it out that's what it's all about yeah chris allen and jake uh from allen motorsports and pch fabrication they they worked really hard to make it all happen i want to thank mike Kraft from fidac he's our race engineer he's been amazing uh since 2017 he's been with our team he's engineered a second place a first place and i think two third places at the ball 1000 so it'd be nice if we could podium for him here today and uh just want to thank monster energy who's been with us for well it's seemingly forever we've been friends with them uh since the 90s and it's an honor to represent a brand that believes in the sports the athletes and everything so i'm super stoked to be able to you know represent for monster here Super cool. Yeah, you know, you put together one of the best programs, obviously. And your company, Baja HQ, where you can get anything built, check them out. They're in San Clemente. Yeah, Baja HQ, come on down. They're in San Juan Capistrano, actually. My partner, Brandon Pjork, was out here giving us split times. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it's the first time we raced without a safety helicopter in a long time. Because of the weather up at home, the heli didn't come down. Wimps. And... Uh, yeah, so we did it without, but we were a little extra careful, but it worked out. I also want to thank Raceline. Uh, I want to thank Fox and Eibach and uh, Baja Designs, VP Racing Fuels, Lubricants. You know, so it takes so many people to get us here, FK Rod Ends. To, you know, to come here and, you know, spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to build the truck and uh, race the truck and house the crew and have a race shop. And it does, it's not easy. And uh, we've been doing it a long time as sponsored athletes. No family money. So it's, been, it's an honor to represent these brands. And I wanted to say thank you. And I, I usually have my monster hat on, but my hat flew out of the race truck while we were racing. It was sitting next to me in the seat when I took off of the race at the start. And it's not there. So uh, sorry to the monster guys, but I, I have it here and in my heart. So uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, thanks, Matt Chapman and Mitch and Dave and rodney and mark everybody that's believed over the years to make it happen for us well congrats definitely a good day unofficially third place on the podium like i didn't hear that but you obviously got it kind of worked out so great job on that and looking forward to a stellar year i mean this is going to be a stacked year we have so many new drivers and so many fast drivers coming back new programs and uh you're always a force to be reckoned with for sure well i was stoked we didn't get beat by either the under 25 year olds so i'm glad they're back behind us but Christopher Polvardi and Jack Olegas will be great additions to our class. And it's great to have them in the trophy trucks. And, you know, banger race. Thanks, Jose G., Roger, Elise, everybody at the score team, Juan Tintos, for making an epic race. And I just pray that everybody's safe today. That's the most important thing, that everybody goes home safe to their families. And my message is uh, don't drink and drive. All the fans out there, just take it easy getting home. Well said. Thank you very much, Cam. Good job, brother. Go yeah, uh, Ampudia. Oh, Al Al Alan took it unofficial. This guy, Mark Post. You know what we're gonna do when we get home? We're gonna go to Javier's because <laughs> we love Mark and his and his place. Good Thank job, you, brother. brother. There you go. He loves you too. I know that for well, sure. Well, yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. He's not racing against you, so he yeah. likes you a little no, more no, th this no, time, no, right? You better. Yeah. All right. Love you, babe. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, All right. Good job, Cam. <laughs> How sweet is that? A force to be reckoned with indeed. How do you feel, Heidi? I, I'm feeling great, actually. I was so stoked to see him start 16. Mm -hmm. He wasn't happy with his qualifying position, right. but I you know, th thought it was pretty good considering he has a two-wheel drive. Yeah. And then to hear that there's a possibility that he could get a third place and a podium is, is just awesome. It's an extraordinary demonstration of experience, talent, and skill. And his truck, that's one of the OG geysers, yeah. right? I mean, that, yeah. it's like, which model? Like a Gen like 2 or something? Number or? 28, the build. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> wow. like you know, so to go out there in you know, a, a pretty old geyser truck, two-wheel drive, <laughs> competing against brand-new Masons and you know, all, all the different manufacturers, all right. um, that's pretty impressive. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt you, Wes, but... Cameron wasn't completely done speaking. He's got a few more things that he'd like to say. Why don't we roll the clip? How do you feel about having your wife sit here and watch you race and track and commentate on it? Well, she'll, she's my biggest probably, you know, she's probably my biggest critic, right? She, she hears and sees everything, and she knows what we're capable of. So I think she gets disappointed when we don't have a good run. But like I said, we've had a, a couple good runs lately other than the motor explosion at the bottom of 1,000. 
Um, I think it's cool to have her on the on the desk. And I think she knows, obviously, a lot about trophy truck racing and racing in general. I think she's a four-time score champion. She's won the 1,000 in Sportsman Buggy, uh, 7 SX, and in 6 7200, whatever the unlimited midsize truck is. And she finished top 10 in the Baja 1000 in trophy truck. So uh, she has a wealth of information, and she's not afraid to throw it out there. If there's anybody she's going to pick on uh, more than anyone else, it'll be me for sure. I just want to tell her I love her, and thanks for all the support. We've been married for 26 years. And she's been putting up with a lot of crap for a long time, and I still think she's hot as hell. <laughs> 26 years. How do you guys make it work on and well, off the track? It's actually 25. Okay. I hope we can make it to 26. <laughs> okay, coming up. <laughs> yeah, no, that was actually really sweet. His bigger critic might be his oldest daughter. Mm. She's been asking for a trophy for quite a while, and she's going to be very pleased if the results stack up the way they look right now. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed they do. And with that, we'll go back down to Rat and we'll see what else we got going on at the finish line. Rat, take it away. Everybody is involved. Coming in, we got to hear what happened. We know you're you're running up up front there and right in the mix, and uh, something happened. What happened? Rear drive line, I heard. Yeah, a couple miles out from the finish, uh, rear drive line let loose, so sad heartbreaker for sure. But uh, it was a day up and down all day, but uh, super proud of uh, the team, Mike Kim, for, you know, keeping us going forward all day. And then in the end there, we were, we were real close to, you know, with Luke and Tava. We were just battling it out. It was actually super fun. It was, we were driving these things to their max, and then, yeah, unfortunately, right outside of town like literally right outside of town broke a drive shaft so they, they were talking about that and we were watching on tracking yeah you guys were up in the mix back and forth i mean that's what racing's all about like then you definitely never want to break so you know where you should be and this is this your first season in the, the actual unlimited trophy truck class so you got to be stoked it's a, it's a long series no yeah i'm super happy uh it felt good to run with the guys all day, and uh, yeah, now we go back to the drawing board and uh, up with the best in the world, which is pretty trippy. <laughs> Well, that's it. We we expected that from your uh, just being, you know, not only all your racing career, but coming up in the trophy truck spec, you were always on point. I mean, top qualifier last year and so many big things, but I, I'm looking for big things from you this year. Yeah, get this thing dialed in. Go give her a bath and change out that drive line, and we'll see you back at the 500. You want to thank any of your sponsors? Yeah, I'd really like to thank Optimum Batteries, Steel It, Toyo Tires, AutoZone, VP Racing Fuels, Ford Performance, uh, Fox shocks. I mean, this course was insane. Luckily, I had my boy Mike Kim actively. Valve. I think we had some. I mean, we. Uh, I know we were leading at the top of. Do roads so it shows how good these things work. Uh, decked, boiler exhaust, um, the list goes on and on. That people get us here, uh, it's not easy, and we'll, uh, you know, we'll still have some fun. We'll make some good videos. If you don't already subscribe our YouTube videos, we we post daily, I mean weekly vlogs, and uh, a couple a week while we're down here pre-running behind the scenes of a trophy truck team. And I watch them. I, I keep up with you, man. You, you're badass, and looking forward to a great year. Great job today, and we'll see how it unfolds. And yeah, we'll see you back at the 500. Great job. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, shout out to Chris Polvardi for at least making it to the finish line and getting across it as well. But my gosh, how heartbreaking for that guy. Yeah, definitely disappointing for him. That's rough. But, uh, you know, I mean, you, you win some, you lose some. So you got to roll with the punches. That's racing. That, that's desert racing. Yep. And 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, that's still a, a, a good solid run for him. Yep. And, it, and yeah. getting it to the finish at least keeps him in the hunt for the championship. Sure does. Yeah. All right. And he's only 22. Yeah, So he's exactly. got a long still time. Still got a long race. road yeah, ahead of him. He's got to have, like, some heartbreak before he goes out and wins <laughs> one, you know? You can't just come out of the gate and get, get a, a win right yeah. away. So, yeah, like, you know, make, make him earn it a little bit. No, I'm Sorry, more Chris. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, there will be a little bit more of the King Shock San Felipe 250. We'll see you in a bit. The ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all-new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport. any other way. If AMSOIL products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to AMSOIL protection today and get fast free shipping from AMSOIL.com. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. Mark Post said, I got to come in and give him some hell over here. And Mark Post, once again, our Grand Marshal. Talk about legends. Nobody's more legendary than Mark Post. And you know what? When you come down here with the fastest racers in the world, you got to have one of the fastest racers in the world being your Grand Marshal. We got one of those. We're going to keep bringing them up. We got our next Pro Moto 20X. All right, he's back. You want to take your helmet off or are you good? I'll leave it on. Yeah, what's your name? Dylan Gazik. 
Hey, congrats. Good work, man. Made it to the finish. Long day out there. A short day, though. You guys were just on fire. It's un unbelievable how fast this course was this year. Yeah, it was pretty fast. Um, started out pretty good, and then the first rider, he ended up crashing somewhere around mile 60. Busted up the bike a little. He got busted up a little bit. Um, Mark took over, brought it down to me around mile 240 for the trucks, whatever that will be. And then I hopped on and brought it to the finish. So I did about over 120 miles. So pretty tired. First time ever down here in Baja. So the spots were good. I like all that tight technical stuff. That was easy. Just the fast stuff, a little crazy. The fast stuff, yeah, yeah. Get, getting on it. What's top speed on the spike? I don't know. <laughs> Definitely over 100. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure over 100. So, well, great job. You want to thank some sponsors? I know you guys got a, got a good program backing up this bike. Yeah, thank everybody that uh, helped Kirby come out. Um, and then a couple thanks, Sedlak Off-Road School, Edgar Coda. Thank you for all the tips. And then um, Fast House, Garnet, 100%. Thank you, guys. So, so who got off, and is he okay? Yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, some some bruises, yeah, yeah, yeah bruised ego too, I'm sure. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> All right, well, great work, congratulations. Back here at the finish line, we'll see you guys back at the 500 coming up in a couple months. Done deal. Thank you. Norman Racing 15X. We'll let him get his helmet off. Who's on the bike? Uh, Brian Whiteside here. Uh, it was a fun day. Some struggles, but we had a good time. So so what happened? Any, any issues with the bike or no get-offs or anything? Uh, no get-offs for the, the riders, but we did have an issue with the motorcycle. Had a rear moose melt and disintegrated a tire. Put us back a long ways. The, the moose melted? That's something you don't hear very often. That, you guys were just going too fast. Yeah, I think we were just trying to push the pace too hard. But it shows that we can run up there. Yeah, absolutely. So you're able to get to your pits and get it changed out? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. All right, who rode with you? Uh, Damon Woolslayer started for us. And then uh, Mason DeConzo uh, took the took a a ride up by La Ventana and then I got on at the Moto Deviation. Good job. Congrats. You want to thank any of the sponsors and uh, give a shout out for the team? Yeah, thanks to uh, Norman Racing, Husqvarna, uh, Kenda, Nitro Moose, Blood Lubricants, IMS, uh, Desert Unlimited, Takamoto, uh, the whole team. You guys did an awesome job. Hope to be back at the 500. All right, so just in a minute here, here we are. Never mind, we are inside Thor Herbst 219 truck. And he is our trophy truck, trophy truck spec leader as of right now. And you can see, got some heli coverage coming through and they are not holding back. Yeah, so he's northbound on the home stretch into San Felipe right now. Mm -hmm. He's got a pretty commanding lead for the trophy specs. He's, he's been, Predominant all day. The entire, yes. You know, I mean, yeah, it, it was race. him and EJ, McNeil, Beal, a couple guys, they were mixing it up there, but I mean, he's uh, he's definitely on the home stretch yep. right now. I'd say Thor's got this thing. Yep. More aerial footage of Thor here, ripping through. Yeah, he's even closer than I thought. He's in the silt, basically, yep. just outside of town. Yep. As often, these trucks leave looking one way and return looking another way. Look at all that silt. That's just going to keep just getting worse and worse all day, too. Yeah. Yeah, there's still lots of other vehicles out there. Look at that silt. Yep. Here we go. Seven truck coming through. Yes, yeah, so that's uh, Dallas Luttrell.
He's out of he's, Vegas in the TSA Motorsports truck. Mm-hmm. Moments away for him. Another shot of Thor down there. I think we're not too far out from Rob Mack coming in too. Okay. So that'll be interesting to see where he falls in. Sure. Because it's Once been off. you know an hour and five minutes since the leaders came in, but if Rob started 36 minutes back, mm -hmm. you know that might. I, I don't think it's going to put him on the podium or anything, but it, it'll be a respectable finish sure. for his first time in that truck, or well, first Baja race in that truck. Also, earlier we were talking about Polvarde. Um, I was saying this is the maiden voyage. In. It's a yeah. maiden voyage in Baja in that truck. Right. He actually raced it in the desert race at KOH. Got you. I don't know if my lead leaderboard's right, but I think EJ might be dropping back further unless yeah. it's just not updating. Yeah, not and sure. Some other, um, looks like Jason McNeil and some other guys are actually possibly uh, ahead of him. Okay. Yeah, I've got McNeil second physical mm -hmm. um, ahead of Justin Davis, and then a big gap back to um, Stefan Beal and then EJ. Mm -hmm. So EJ must have had a problem because he was mm -hmm. right there with Thor for a long time there. Right. But we did see, well, they both lost their heads. <laughs> yeah, they <it> did. Yeah. <laughs> I feel He's... like the Herbst trucks are kind of known for losing their body parts. <laughs> yeah. We saw them both tilt their visors down at almost the exact same time. Is that just to block dust debris coming through, or what's the strategy uh, behind that? Glare? Generally, if you're going into the sun. Going in the sun, glare. Yeah, that would okay. be the only reason I would put one down. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes guys will run visors on their shield. Sure. I, I like to do that. Um, you know, otherwise, you see guys with their hands out trying yeah. to block the sun. Right, right. And he definitely lost that hood from that tree he hit with all yeah. those branches we saw. Well, was that Thor or was that EJ, though? I thought that was oh. EJ that had the, had the, the twigs flying up. And all that stuff. So I, I feel yeah, like both right. of them are sans hood at this point. Okay. <laughs> How strong do you think the rivalry is between Thor and EJ? I would say, you know, that it's competitive. I would think they're both competitive. Very competitive. You know? <laughs> like, you know? We've got so many yeah, families involved in McMillan's to Herbs that, you know, wonder sometimes. I'm sure. Be the first to cross, right? Yeah, Get across I'm that finish line. Sure, on one hand, you're supportive, you're cheering each other on, but on the other hand, yeah, yeah. you, you want to win. First to cross. You, yeah, you, want, you, you, want, you want them to get yeah. second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love you, but. You want to finish one, too, but you, you want to be first. You want to be first. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to go to a close call replay here on Thor. Let's watch what happens. Oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at that. Whew. That's just the, inches from that red truck. That SUV popped. might need to go to a car wash. May want to rethink it. Yeah. yeah. Well, on the other side of him, there was a, there was a bush. mound, like yeah, a, big mound. a big sand, bushy mound. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to hit that and start cartwheeling either. <sighs> Tense moment. Goes by in a millisecond at that speed, though. Yeah. But still. So what I want to know is, you know, how much longer until Thor and EJ go into the trophy truck class? Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, I'm, they'll do this year, but I, I got to be thinking. At some point. You know, there's, they're going to be going up there soon. And then, so if you've got yeah. the, the two Herps kids, Pulvarde, um, August. Yep. Yeah. You got like, the new, some new blood coming through. Yeah, you're going to have some fast up and comers in there well and tim might want to pull one of them for the 500 or both of them for the thousand you never know there's probably some mm -hmm. opportunities there yeah so here we see thor entering speed zone yeah he's the so final stretch to the finish. final stretch yep just about to cross the finish line he will be our leader in the spec class while he's in the speed zone here, mm -hmm. I just, I've got some updates. C class one, it looks like Brad Wilson is uh, our physical, and I, I would believe on adjusted leader. Okay. Uh, Bruce Yee, he's been leading class 10 for most of the day. Brock Hager is 
leading the Pro UTV Open class, and he's in a pretty good battle with Wayne Matlock, and it looks like Brandon Sims right now. Mm-hmm. I've got Phil Blurton in first in the Pro UTV Force Induction, and he may be in the mix for UTV overall because um, mm-hmm. he started behind. I, I believe Brock's going to have him on adjusted, but mm-hmm. th- that's going to be kind of close Okay, because he's not that far back. And then uh, Ethan Grom in Pro UTV NA and Caden Wells in Pro Stock UTV. Good stuff. Appreciate that update, Wes. Well, there's so many classes here. You know, you want to give those guys some love because everyone's Absolutely. working hard. Absolutely. No matter what class they're in. Yep. And, you know, it, it's uh, a, a, a win's a win. Taking the overall is awesome, but mm-hmm. you know, if you come out here and you win class 11, you're still about us. Here we go. So unofficial results of the score trophy trucks. In first place, Alan Impudia, followed by Luke McMillan, then Cameron Steele, Bryce Menzies in fourth, Tavo Vidosla in fifth, Dan McMillan sixth, Justin Lofton in seventh, Christopher Pulvardi in eighth, Mikey Lawrence ninth, and rounding out the top 10, Tracy Graff. So those are your unofficial score trophy truck finishers as of right now and in a minute we'll move our way into the spec class but until then let's take a look at what we got going on here <laughs> somebody's now we got the 11 truck oh that's rob yep there he is so uh, he, he's got to be close to the finish right now mm-hmm. yeah he's right outside the finish So, I mean, that's a a respectable run for him. It's got to be disappointing, you know, having to change an axle with that torn CV boot. Mm -hmm. Right. But at the pace that everyone was running today, Mm -hmm. if you had any mechanical problem at all, you know, that was going to set you back. Yep. Yep. And to start in the back of the pack. For sure. Right. Nobody wants to start 36th. (laughs) Correct. And certainly not that guy. I think he's going to still have a very solid finish on corrected time. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I'd like to see an updated leaderboard after he crosses, see after where, he, gets where across, he ends up. See yeah. where he's at. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Still a beautiful day out there. Blue skies, some clouds, but perfect conditions for our race here. And now we are, okay, here we go. Trophy truck spec at checkpoint two. Right here, the unofficial results. In first, Thor Herbst. Second, Stephen Beal. Followed by E.J. Herbst in third, Justin Davis in fourth, Jason McNeil in fifth place, Bryce Swain in sixth, Ryan Hancock seventh, Santiago Creel in eighth, Arnaldo uh, Giertes in ninth, and uh, in tenth place, Dustin Swanson. So there's your top ten trophy truck spec. Another fantastic uh, battle within that class. Yeah, and that's at checkpoint two, but I yeah. think now it's... Um it's a lot has a changed. It's changing and, a little. Yeah, with EJ yeah. dropping a little bit back yep. and yeah. Jason bouncing forward. Cool, cool. Well, we uh, got a quick shot here of our 16-year-old star, Eva Star, <laughs> 1919 <laughs> vehicle blasting through. And I know, Wes, you wanted to check in with, with how Rob... The Cochran finishes, but it turns out that as of right now, that is going to be all for us. So we want to thank you all for an exhilarating uh, Ray San Felipe 250. The King Shocks score San Felipe uh, 250. We're going to be signing off here from the studio, but don't go anywhere. There's going to be plenty of more coverage that's coming from uh, Score International all night long. So until next time in the 500, I'm Brandon Johnson, Wes Miller, Heidi Steele, and the whole crew. Thanks for tuning in and watching. We'll see you a few months at the 500. Take care, everybody. The 99X, a sandwich. Four, three, two, one. There it is.
the ultimate adventure tool with all the storage to hold even more adventure tools. The all new Adventure Ready Bronco Sport. I got that right turn, we're good. Let's uh, meet up at the compound group up. Alright, 10-4. Oh, yeah, for sure, dog. Good, little driver, straight on through. Rocks. Sand. Heat. Life off-road is tough. We wouldn't have it any other way. If Amsoil products are designed for this kind of punishment, think about what they can do for your daily driver. Upgrade to Amsoil protection today and get fast free shipping from Amsoil.com. Finishing touches of any off-road vehicle are the things you add to make it your own. That's why we've developed a full collection of over 70 Polaris engineered accessories specifically designed for Pro-R. Polaris. Think outside. <laughs> 